Okay, I think it's working now. Um, let's see. Wonderful! It is working. Um, kind of, apparently. I uh, don't know what's happening though, it doesn't seem to be... Let me just see if I can reset a couple of things here. I don't know why I can't see my face right now. Oh, that's weird. What the hell? Okay, that's really weird. Okay, so my wolf's here, but it's not reacting. What an interesting start to the day. Um, Alright. The good thing is, I think you guys can hear me. So, I'm just going to... Uh, I will try to reset this, actually. Um... Okay, that seemed to have fixed it. <laughs> uh, just had to reset the, uh, the broadcasting setting. Okay, brilliant. Wonderful. Okay, things are working now. As expected. Good heavens. Uh, Alright, um... So, what are we doing? <laughs> After a half, almost half an hour of uh, total rigmarole... Um, yeah, um, <laughs> let's see if we can uh, make a start here. So we've got, um, we actually got some pretty exciting stuff to actually go through today. Um, so I'm hopefully going to uh, stream a bit longer than expected, but we'll see. Um, we have animation. That's what we were trying to organize yesterday. Um, and we have a number of, we have a huge amount of advice, and that's thanks to Dave H for sharing the content for this one. Um, and uh, there's going to be a, a video we'll be following to organise uh, a number of things with the uh, animations and code and things like that with this one. Um, so basically, I'm not going to be doing like a like a messy kind of, um, you know, messy kind of uh, animator layout like this. Uh, it is going to be a lot more organised. Uh, we are just going to. Uh, put everything into like lists and categories, uh, basically. So um, we're going to do that, and um, see how we go. So first of all, um, let's grab all the idle animations. We're going to put them in this. We're going to put them in a row, a row. Sorry, a column, a list. Um, so, uh, and we're going to do the same thing for walking. Uh, which is wrong now, so we'll see if we can, because I think this was mostly in the middle somewhere. Um, this is good, but we're going to put, um, something like this anyway. So, what do we got? Uh, idle down, yep, okay, so we'll go there. We're going to remove these transitions, we're not going to be using those. We're going to basically do everything in terms, you know, in, in, in code instead. Uh, instead of worrying about, you know, what's going on here, um, with all these variables and whatnot inside the editor. Um, just make it a lot easier, I think, to, um, organise, uh, what we need to do for everything. Uh, we can easily clearly see as well, because, like, even the code in After Realms is not too bad, uh, for Phaser. Um, and we should be able to utilise that. Um, so let's have a look. Uh, on each line. Okay, so I'm going to use the lines here to help guide this. Um, I may even put one in the middle there. Yeah, so I'm going to put one in the middle. So, there. Um, and then, yeah, just a little bit. So, half a square each uh, apart, basically. Um, so, pop over, pop this over here. Yep. Alright. Uh, idle left. Find it. Not in any particular order. We're really not going to worry so much about about this. I think at the moment, um, the idea is just doing everything, you know, through through the code. But it is nice to have, um, you know, a li list of all these animations in case we need to access it in this view for some reason. Uh, we can clearly see everything. 
Um, I'm not sure, yeah, that's looking pretty good there. Alright, so I think I've got all the idols. Aha, uh -huh, here's one. Uh, and just because I am a bit um, uh, crazy about everything here, I am going to down up oh, right. Okay, so this is going to be um, in a particular order. So we're going to do down. We're going to we're going to do all the like direct ones first. So all the uh, you know. All directional first, I think, from the bottom. As crazy as that sounds. Um, the left, we've got um, up right. So down, left, up, right. Um, and then everything else. Um, and I just want to make sure here we've got a missing one. No, I'm not. Okay. I want to put these also here somewhere, um, just so we can see them. Um. Okay, it's looking pretty good there. Alright, so next we've got Walk. So, uh, we've got walk, I'm just going to move all the walk ones, so the walk ones are the top one, aren't they? Yeah. The walk. Alright, okay. I'm going to put these, again, in the similar thing, uh, in the in, uh, column next door. Um, so down, left, uh, up. Down. Uh, where is walk down? Did I not move it? So I've got one, one, two, down left. Ah, oh, yeah. Here we are. Oh! Someone's bombing someone in the chat. But you're being very, uh, uh, you're being very discreet about it because you're like, you know, not even using the chat, so. Well. We don't mind being blown up every now and again. Down left, idle up left. But just remember that any of the anyone that does drop those bombs are going to end up um, probably also blowing themselves away as well.
Looking good, my man. Thanks, Dave. Welcome, welcome. Uh, what am I missing here? So I've got walk up left leg. Uh, oh, I've got, yep. Yeah. That's what I've done. Wrong, wrong kind of, okay, so we've got the, um, the last animation that we've got right now is the, uh, casting animation. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move all this, so similar way what we did before with the walk. Bring them all over. I'm gonna organize it. So I'll square apart here. So what have we got? We've got casting down. Somewhere. Casting down to down there. Okay. Very nice. Uh, casting down. Here we are. Casting left. Hello, boy. All right. Uh, ca casting up. Uh, right. Down left. Uh, up left. Down right, and then up right. Brilliant. All right, we'll save it. Save it there. There we go. Um, pretty good. All right. So, um, I need to know what to do exactly next. So this is all going to be code next, I believe. So, um, we're going to have a look at that. Uh, I believe for um, this, um, I think for him, for his tutorial, he doesn't. Apparently, we will really only be able to go. Stop. I did not ask for the video to be played. Thank you very much. Um, uh, hang on, there's a number of videos here that might just automatically start playing. Hang on. Because I restarted my computer and I'm just rec I've just recovered the, the windows. Hey. So they all start automatically, which is kind of annoying. All right. Um, so, um, what do we got? What do we got? Oh, that's collision and tile detection. We'll need that eventually. I think that's a bit down the track at this stage. How do we import character? Hello, everybody, Chris. Okay, so I'm not. Yeah, I'm not going to do what this guy's saying, so I'm going to just close that. Um, community animation hell. Okay, here we go. Uh, so I'm gonna watch this video. Uh, I'm gonna, it's gonna be on stream. Um, and I'm gonna do it as he says as much as I can. Um, but I'm gonna pop through a lot of different like little memes and stuff throughout this video, and it's like what? Um, practical sam sample code overview. Okay. So anyway, I'll just start about here. Video. Oh, there's a lot of um. No, there's a lot of. Like different parts. I think this is it. Hi, folks. Hey, Marion. There. How are you going? All right, so we've got, um... All right, so here's the video. You'll probably hear it on stream, so you don't think that you're watching something on YouTube, okay? It's gonna be just me. Uh, I'm gonna follow what this dude says. Nation states. All right, so let's now take a look at a practical real-world example of this using an actual player controller. So I've got this little sample scene here I've mocked up. I'm just gonna run it to show you guys what's going on. Hope everyone is well and having a good afternoon. Thank you, Marita. Hope you're having a good afternoon as well. Good to have you with us. So we've got Mega Man. He's moving around, he's jumping, but he's not animating. 
And if we go up into the animator window for the player, you can- Okay, so before we do any of this, I'm just gonna implement the movement first. <laughs> um, all right, so let's, um, oh, hang on. I did have Buckley's open, where is he? Uh, he's not, Brackies, sorry, not Brackies. Jesus, I'm getting people's names wrong. Uh, Brackies. Uh, here we go. Okay. So this is animation. Yeah, because he didn't, didn't make that. No. Look. no, that was another one, wasn't there? Hang on. I think, Dave, you linked a... You made a link to... Uh, Zelda here, so animation. I think it was part three that you, um, actually... Did there and Jitsbo! Hello, how are you going? Uh, thank you for the raid on 29 people, goodness me. Hello, how are you going, guys? Welcome, it's been a while, Jitspo. Uh, good to see you're still streaming there, actually. What did you work on stream today? And how was it? Tell me all about it. Yeah, been a hot minute, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> just, a, just a minute. <laughs> Working on a new side project, a retro FPS game. Ooh. Um, does that mean that you finished Fist of, Fist of the Forgotten, or are you still you're just parking it at the moment? Or um, I, I haven't been keeping up to date recently. There's been too many things on my on my plate, so I am subscribed to your uh, email. So no, still working on it. Oh yeah, I know that feeling though. If you've been working on something for a long time, um, After Realms that I'm working on here is going to be. Like my secondary project from Trump and Jiggy at the moment. Trump and Jiggy is not finished, but it's almost um, finished with the uh, graphical side of it. Um, it's just, you know, I need to do this because I'm trying to work on a um, a more permanent. You know, I'm trying to get my skills in a more permanent engine that I want to use, which is um, I've chosen Unity for that. So, yeah, um, just moving away from Construct. It's just, <laughs> it's just I don't want to be using it or oh, relying on it so looking at other other ways of doing things so that's what we're doing um by the way um just so you guys are checking out this is the game i'm i've actually made i've actually coded this this is actually a game i've coded in phases this is a playtest version of the game um and you guys can access it from the game job what i'm doing in unity is recreating that playtest um just worried that a platformer isn't going to sell well Wishlist numbers haven't been great, so I'm trying to get another project to the point of making a trailer. Okay. So you can gauge interest. Yeah. The other thing as well, um, what, I, what I'm doing, this is something I'm doing with After Realms um, 2, actually. Like, I've got a playtest version. It's not exactly, you know, full game or anything, uh, or even, even a portion of the game. A lot of it is just um, a concept at the moment. Um, so... What I'm doing with that is I'm just gonna I'm release a playtest, tell people about it. Um, if a small group of people, if I get like you know good feedback, and Game Job's really good for that, um, I'm going to you know do a more full version. Um, what I'm planning on doing with Chomp and Cheeky is because I haven't been able, I haven't been doing, I haven't been able to do a lot of marketing with it. Um, so I'm gonna probably you know there's gonna be a, f a, a focus period of time where I'm just gonna you know promote the game. And there are probably going to be some work, maybe some tweaks during that time, but the idea is just to complete the game and then, you know, spend a period of time just investing in the promotion of the game, getting getting it out there, um, and then, you know, and then doing a launch that way. Um, I mean, it sounds less multitasking. I know a lot of people say out there that you've got to really promote your, promote your game while you're making it, and that's nice if you can do it, but, like, <laughs> when you're doing a part-time job with part-time uh, game development and little time anything else um it does become difficult so i think it's okay like if you um uh if you you know make a shareware version and then just um and if you have like the game complete if you have like even a, even a small community that are interested in it, i know that you have with this little forgotten i think you do have um you know a small community that are very are very interested in it um even if you do complete the game um and then just like you know invest in promotion uh, promotion for it for like you know three to six months or something like that just to just to work on its awareness you know um and then do it and then do the launch after that um you know i think that won't be a uh, you know a bit of a way to go it's really hard when you've got you know just yourself working on everything <laughs> you know like it really is or, or you and a few others you know that are just trying to get the game actually built 
But I don't think there's any shame in that at all, to be honest. Um, you know, indie devs can't do, uh, you know, everything that the company does, you know. Um, for example, Stormgate. Uh, Stormgate is going to be like uh, one of the biggest RTS releases that we're going to be looking at in 2023. Um, you know, it's about, they're, they're roughly about mid-2023, so about a year from now we should be able to see that game coming out. Um, they are an indie, div they're a company, they've got a team of people, you know, that they've got enough people to, you know, be promoting it, working on it, on the game at the same time. Um, they have those resources, but, you know, we don't, we don't, as indie builders, we don't have that. Um, so I don't think there's any shame in, in taking a step at a time and, and doing it that way as opposed to, um, you know, uh, you know, doing everything all at once. <laughs> um, so... Either way, I think, like, you know, the idea is, I think, like, you know, even if, uh, regardless, if I think if your game's interesting and, uh, enough and, and you've got, you know, an indication of that, um, with, with people, uh, or even a small group of people or a small community, uh, I think you 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 know, there's an indication there that there's, um, that, you know, when you go to promote it to the wider world, it's, it's going to really get, um, you know, a degree of attraction. Um, so... Absolutely, but yeah, no, definitely tough. Um, game development's not easy, very time-consuming, uh, requires a lot of patience and determination. <laughs> um, but I'm glad you're still around, I'm, so, I'm glad you're still, like, you know, um, grinding away at it, man, it's great. Um, and that you got, you know, you still got your streaming going on and everything. Fantastic. I basically try to reach out to a content creator or journalist every day just to build awareness. I really need to streamline that process a bit. Yeah, and it's good that you know, especially if you've got the uh, if you've got the time and the and the and the money for that, definitely. Um, and yeah, that's uh, definitely the way to go. Um, so. Alrighty, so with this one, um, basically just so I don't confuse people that's just joined, um, I'm just going to watch a video on YouTube. Uh, it's by Brackies uh, in terms of doing, um, uh, well, it's actually, I, I, initially I was looking at 2D animation in, in, in Unity, which is what we're looking at here at the moment. But we're going we're gonna to be moving on to the scripting uh, because I want to I want to implement movement first before I do the animation. Uh, I gotta head off and eat. Have a good one. No worries, you too, Jitspo. Thanks for the raid. Really appreciate it, man. It's excellent. Wonderful. And look, what we'll do is because we've got so many people here, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna just do a battle royale because why not? It's a free battle royale for everyone. It's just so many people. Look at this. All the Yoshi's are just gonna be like, it's gonna be an absolute mess <laughs> when we do this. It's great. Hello, Tiny Tree. How are you going? Uh, already done topics, <laughs> but we have. Oh, and by the way, the reason I uh, have something else I want to mention too, while everyone's like you know going into bits and pieces, is um, Gilded, um, Gilded right here. Is um, actually introduced a new feature called um, with, with, with uh, names. They've got like um, they've got like a gradient between two colour names there, so they've got gradient colours with the roll. So, gonna start introducing that soon. Um, but I've got my community there to uh, basically with that I, I post um, content occasionally with that. It looks like we've got um. Uh, who's reading the Salvo subs or VFX? Can't tell. VFX just picked up some health. I think he will. Um, who knows? Oh, yeah, we caught up to him just before he got the health. Very nice. VFX actually gets uh, 500 Lucas. Congratulations. You can use Lucas to change the color of your Yoshi, by the way, in the uh, stream avatars. Um, but you need a thousand to, to start, so that's a good boost up for you there, VFX. Um,. <laughs> um, but yeah, also if any of you guys are working on a project yourself, feel free to let me know in the chat. I'm happy to check it out at some stage um, on stream. Otherwise, I'm also welcome to share what you're doing on my Discord as well. I've got uh, channels for that in the, in the creative section. And boom! Everyone, <laughs> this is going to be <laughs> a complete surprise. Look at this. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, we're gone everywhere. Good heavens. Raining bombs. 
<laughs> Incredible. <laughs> uh, I think some people didn't come back down, actually, after all that. It was, they literally blew up. So much. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna work on um, the movement of the uh, of the uh, of the person. Sorry, I'll just show my game here. This is the person we're gonna get. Oh, we're gonna get some movement happening. It's gonna be three, um, four, uh, eight directional. Bro, MC, how you going? Welcome to the stream. Fantastic. Alrighty, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna find the right video here, so bear with me. Um, this is not the one I want at the moment. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go Unity 2D 8 Directional Movement. Let's just do that. Okay. Uh, should be easy enough to find a... Oh, hello, he's Adam C. Eunice. Uh, another streamer, actually. Oh, that goes for like 33 minutes, though. Uh, let's see if we can get something a little bit simpler happening here. Um, I just don't want to be like like looking at it. A directional walk script. Is that 3D? Yeah, I think that's 3D. Let me just double check. I think Adam's doing a 3D um, version of this. Hang on. Hey, that's looking pretty good. G'day pals, welcome. And like this. Oh, and until next time, I got to do all of this kind of stuff. Um, Ops Collider 2D. Good, oh, good. it is 2D, good yeah. I thought so. Okay. Well, I'd like to watch his video, but it is 33 minutes long, and I'm sure it's very good in detail, but I just need to get something a little shorter. Um, that's all. There is a, there, are, there are a little shorter ones. I just want to make sure... Uh, 2D top down movement, but that doesn't say that it's directional. This one's only about 13 minutes. Maybe I'll check this one. This is from, um... Hello, and welcome to my channel. Markle Game Lab. Markle's Game Lab. Yeah. In this video, I'll be showing you how to put together an 8-directional player movement script and animations for your top-down game. As you can see, I have a blank Unity project, and I'm gonna go ahead and set it up uh, here we go. with just a Right from the beginning. Few uh, things that I like to have set beforehand. So I'll be right back. All right. So as you can see, I just added my basic folder structure that I always like to have. Okay. One thing I do need to do for this is create a folder and make the scripts folder, which I didn't do at the start. So here we are. Oh, the prefabs. Yeah. That's the other thing. I don't really want. Uh, so people. I don't. I look. There's a prefab here. I want to put prefabs in a in a folder, don't don't we? So we'll go folder. Oh. Well, I think about it. I wasn't going to forget. Okay. So, Lord, can we like? Can we put this in the prefabs folder? Cool. Excellent. Let's make it a bit easier to access things that we probably want to put into the world a bit instead of going through all the sprites and animations and things like that. Alright. I added our player art and I added a script I made beforehand for the eight directional movement. So first thing you'll want to do is create your player game object. You'll also want to go ahead and add a sprite for your player. Now I'll go into our player art. Mine happens to be 32 pixels per unit. It is multiple images and it is pixel art so I will choose filter mode point no filter and I'm going to turn the compression to none yeah, and so apply that. Down, what? Except yep. for um, this. Now, I did have this actual, this actual structure here. Um, so, like, empty object. I did do this. So, play, I'm just going to change that to sprite. So, I'll change sprite for a thing. Sprite. Okay, so I'm going to put this in here. 
um, this in here, thank you. In here, what? There. I can't select it now. Weird. Then I'll go to the sprite editor. Okay, and so I want some the, animation to, them to yeah, have the pivot there. at the bottom of the sprite. Automatic's fine for me. So I'll go ahead and slice up my images and click apply. So, okay, so I'm just going to delete, I'm going to delete this. Um, you can't do delete. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, and what we want to do, create a prefab here. That's better. Now, if I do this, can I drag that in there? No, I can't. What? I'm so confused. Now I can go to my sprite and choose one of my player I'll that in a minute. images. Now we can go over to our player game object and I am going to add my player top down script for movement in eight directions. And I'll go ahead and open this and we can go over it. I'll Okay, this is a little weird. Um... All right, this script is not very long. So if you wanted to freeze the video right now, you could take a look at the whole script and make sure you understand it. And if you wanted to copy it, go right ahead. Thank you, but um... hmm. let me just check something here for a second. In eight directions. And I'll go ahead and open this and we can go over it. Directions. All right, so for this one, I'm gonna create a script here. There's something I'm definitely doing wrong here. Like, I can't click on this anymore. Oh, that's because I'm not in the scene, hang on. We'll be able to click on it now, right? Yeah, I can click on that. Okay, that was me being a noob. Um, <laughs> um, I was in the game tab, and you can't click on anything in the game tab. You can you basically just play it. But uh, okay, this is a lot better now. I'm gonna fix up this script here, and we'll open it up, and we'll probably do some scripting. Be nice. Get some movement happening, and then I wanna and um, after I get the movement happening, I then should be able to implement the animation system that we're going to be learning on doing here so basically um I, i'm not i'm not going to be using the um the uh so the sprites animation so if we go to the um if we go to the scenes automation editor for example i think this is... let me just bring it up here for a second i did have it opened in now oh hang on animation oh no that's just for that where is it animator yeah so i'm not going to be using any of this to be managing the animations. I've just simply put all of these in a neat column sort of sense. So if we do need to come here for some reason, we can just, you know, easily see the different types of animation. So I've just simply categorized them into a, you know, kind of like a bit of a spreadsheet format, really, um, which is like, um, you know, column, you know, one column for idle, one column for walk, one column for casting. Um, and then I've got the, you know, I've just got entry here and just defaulted it to the, to the down because when the player first starts the game, they're going to be seeing their character facing down, basically. Uh, effectively looking at the camera as well, that way, I guess. Uh, and then we're going to leave these to any state and exit there. Um, and then we're not going to really touch any of this. Uh, we're going to be doing all of these things in scripts um, and then going from there. Uh, so that's basically what you know, the whole idea of organizing all this was. Um, and that's what I'm about to do here. For this, I'm going to just simply create a player script. I'm not going to do different like scripts for different functionality. Um, I'm just going to have one script for the player uh, and that's it. But for, the, for the moment anyway. Um, later on if I you know want to separate um, you know each like mechanical feature into different um, you know scripts uh, files um, and then associate them accordingly uh, with all the uh, all the objects. Um, later on, we'll certainly look at doing that. Uh, but for the moment, we'll just have the one player script um, because again, we're we're trying to reproduce our um, playtest release, right? 
that's what we're trying to reproduce here, that one. So, um, yeah. And it's basically basing it off the same kind of system there. So, fantastic. All right, so let's, um, we'll proceed here. So I've got the player script. I'm gonna open that up in Visual Studio Code, and we're gonna have a look at this guy's code and see what we can do. Uh, we're gonna check it out. I have done some movement with uh, some of the tutorials, but I just, you know, just need to refine it better with, um, you know, implementing it for my project uh, and going from there. Yes, yes, yes. I, I trust. Blah 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 blah. Um, and there's something else is gonna pop up here, which happens every time. So we'll just let it do that. Let it do its thing. Okay. Um, fantastic. All right. So has it come up yet? Nope. Not doing it yet. All right. We'll just it might just take a while. Um. All right. We'll just have a look here. And I'll go ahead and open this, and we can go over it. All right. Oh, that's right. I've got to associate the script, and so um, I'm pretty sure he just does it with the top one, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Yeah, open this, and we can... that one. So let's just drag player into that one. Make it a component. Uh, because the script cannot, uh, class cannot be found. Oh, hang on, let me just... <laughs> um, I'll just let Unity update here the script ass assemblies. Um, just to make sure it knows that this script exists. Because uh, I did change the name to it. Um, and it's, it is there, it is there. Okay, so let's just... Okay, can't... A component of the script can't, class cannot be found. Are you kidding? A component bit slow on this, so it hasn't actually, um, why hasn't it updated? Okay, refresh. Okay, let me do this then, because I know if I do this, it will definitely update the, um, assemblies of scripts. Compiling C-sharp shifts, reload script assemblies. Brilliant, that's exactly what we want. I just got rid of the uh, starting and the update functions in the uh, in the script. Typically for a lot of the um, code, you don't necessarily need those um, to start off with for everything, but if we do need them, we can always add them back. It's simple enough. Um, can't add script component because play of the script cannot be found. What the hell? Why? Why is this? It's right there, it's looking at it. Uh, compiler errors. Okay, let me just check the console. Um, I want to bring console over here. Do we have any? We have no. We have no errors. The problem. Okay, let me save it. Um, play mono import settings. No mono behavior script in scripts in this file, or their names don't match the file name. Oh, really? Um, okay. Ah, yes, okay, hang on. Player. I don't know why that didn't update, that's a bit weird. Usually that, usually uh, Unity updates that when I make some changes. Because I literally um, created the file, renamed it, should have done a, uh, an update there. Now, is it going to complain or not? So look. Okay, no, it's locking it very much. Excellent, alright. So, let's check this out. We can go over it. All right, this script is not very long, so if you wanted to freeze the video right now, you could take a look at the whole script and make sure you understand it, and if you wanted to copy it, go right ahead. Um, but I'll, I'll go over it, you understand it, and if- Okay, I'm just gonna, f I'm just gonna check this out. So basically, what's he got? Okay, so we're not adding anything else with the uh, with the using. That's fantastic, so we can continue on. Play top down menu, okay. Um, what I want to do though, is I do want to put in, and we're gonna go variables. So the one thing I like to do um, is variables. I do like to categorize a lot of things. This is what I did with um, phaser three. I, I categorized with comments uh, all my code, so it was easier to see um, or find things. Um, you know, inside that file. So we're gonna do that, um, and we're gonna do private, if I can spell things correctly, rigid body, 2D, 
Um, just making sure it's all correct, because I know C Sharp does have uh, a higher standard of coding in comparison to JavaScript. It's not quite as lenient. You know, with JavaScript, you can you don't have to have um, semicolons, for example, for everything. But what you do with uh, with C Sharp. Um, movement speed. Oh my god. Move. <laughs> Can I spell today? Uh, movement speed. Float. Private vector 2. And we're going to let our friend here, uh, Michael, to explain um, the, the whole thing for us just so we can learn something. And, uh, you know, just un understand it better. Um, but this is simply just getting all the, uh, uh, getting all the stuff there. Now we have a, we have some private stuff. Uh, what I like to do, uh, is I like to separate, um, private and public. Typically speaking, um, I like to have, um, anything that's public, uh, or actually I might, I might do it the other way around here just for, uh, organizational sake, but anything that's, uh, private's going to be first, anything that's public's going to be, um, second on the list, and we're going to have a little gap between them, um, just to keep it. Uh, keep those um, things separate, and we're even going to put a comment here saying private variables. So private variables are just stuff that we're not going to be seeing in the inspector. So when we go to click on the player in the component on, in the Unity section, so this part, this is going to do a little refresh here, but this part here, um, it's not going to list those variables and make it accessible via the inspector. When we have a public, um, when we have public, we can access the variables and even change them. Uh, from the inspector, which makes things very, uh, can make things very easy um, to change certain things instead of having to go all the way into the code and then changing those values here um, in order to, um, you know, make whatever we're making here. So that's a really nice touch, I think, with Unity. Um, all right, so let's have a look. So we've got uh, after this, we've got some functions. Um, so first, I'm just going to detail. These are public variables. I'm going to say just in brackets here. Uh, accessible by the inspector Unity's inspector um, uh, not listed in, the ins in Unity's inspector okay um, so now uh, we're gonna do uh, so I'm gonna do functions um, and for this we are going to, before we do functions actually, we're going to do movement first. So we're going to do um, movement functions. And then later on we're going to do animation management. Okay. Uh, now, depending on how we go with this, I think with the uh, with the guide we might be doing a bit of both actually with this. But um, the, way I like, the way I kind of like to do it is try to keep these separate, okay? Because they are different parts of the game. So moving the actual character is one thing. Animating it is another, so um, we're gonna keep them as separate as we can here. Um, despite what we do learn in the in the tutorials, I know that sounds a little bit of contradictory. I'm following a tutorial and then listening to it, but the thing is, um, we're trying to organise things uh, almost as almost as organised as I have it with After Arms, uh, because in After Arms in the uh, Phase of Three project in, in JavaScript, I actually you know did organise it in a similar way, um, and it was very easy to. You know, just just uh, you know, ignore certain parts of the code that we don't necessarily need. So we'll see how we go with this. Um, in any case, so let's have a look. Um, so movement. What have we got? Um, so we've got private void awake. So I think we're still just setting up some things here. So we've got uh, awake. And I don't know. Okay, this is. <laughs> This is, I don't know why this happens. Um, this must have something to do with an extension that I have. Uh, but I, I literally put that down and that, and for some reason, it just wants to guess what I'm trying to do. So I'm gonna try and work out why it's gonna do that. Um, I might have to remove some extensions that I've got for. So I, I added a, f a few extensions to help with um, the, so, you know, supporting C Sharp in, in Visual Studio Code. Um, and I think I've done a bit more than that, actually. <laughs> I've gone and it's I've, it's gone and it's auto there's auto completions and things like that. I might be able to turn them off in settings. So if it does get annoying, I will stop and do that because to be honest, it has during my um uh, lessons uh during during the courses it has actually annoyed me a bit. So um 
We'll keep a bit of an eye on that. Uh, 2D. Uh, because basically it just gets it wrong, you know. Uh, so we've got get component animator. Okay, so we've got a bit of both happening here. I think with this tutorial it's a bit um, the same. We're going to have um, movement anim animator. Okay, so we've got uh, rigid body and animation. Okay, I think he's got a bit of collision he's doing as well, but I'll have a look. Um, all right, so we do have we do have the update function here. So that enter. Now that shouldn't happen. That that's that's terrible. I need to work out what's doing that. Um, I might just check my um, settings here. Preferences, settings. I'm gonna find out where autocomplete is. I'm gonna I'm gonna basically autocomplete. I want to turn it off. Whatever it is. Enable disable autocomplete suggestions. Let's do that. Oh, that's in JavaScript. Interesting. We don't have this in C sharp. Anyway, it might be it might be conflicting if it's an extension. Yeah. C sharp. Let's have a look. Oops. Just loading. Uh, default view called requires restart. Enable different formatter. Okay, I'm not sure exactly what that is. It could be fine. Format is fine. I think formatting is fine. It's just in terms of the colors and all that kind of stuff. There shouldn't be a any kind of specified whether only show it to be a code. Okay. Defense options are controllable options. Okay. Um. Activate on enter. Activate a command. No, we have that off. Syntax, comments over single line. So three slashes. What? What do you mean comments that start with two slashes? Oh. Um, we'll leave that alone. I'm going to search the word complete. I wonder if it's... Enable to start with to complete JS docs comments. Possibly. I've got two of those. Oh, that's for... One's for TypeScript. Okay. Uh, include completion with snippet text. TS server requires using. Okay, we'll do that. Complete property with. This is CSS. Um. No, that's okay. Shouldn't really. I think I'm. Hopefully. Tab completion enables. Tab completion. That's, that's off. Okay. Include symbols. Right yeah. Let me just see how it goes from here. I did turn off a couple of things. Um. We'll just. Go back here. All right, so I'm going back here, and what have we got? All right, private void update. Let me just delete this. I'm going to see if it's going to hassle me here. So void private void update. No, it's still doing it. Okay, hang on. Maybe update. So if I start, so if I go private, void, update, see it does that, what the hell? Update, uh, hang on, I think I might know, if I can just determine exactly what it is, update, does it tell me what is, what this, ex this is the extension here, um, this has got to be something to do with C Sharp. Uh, let me just check my extension, C sharp. Okay, I mean to press three there. Let's try again. Okay. 
Um, deprecated. Install, install. I just want to check what I've, what I own. But can we filter that down to uh, installed? DFB93, welcome to the chat. What's cracking, bro? Um, just doing some scripting with movement uh, for my character here. So basically, just to give you a bit of a bit of a nutshell explanation, um, my game here, After Arms. Um, I've coded that in Phaser Three using JavaScript. Um, just due to the complexity of the of the design of the game, I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna, I will continue to create more features for the game there, but in order to simplify it, I'm just I'm gonna be doing it all in Unity. So at the moment, um, I'm just my main goal is to recreate what you see with that game, um, and then uh, in Unity basically. So uh, at the moment, we've got our we've got our environment. We're gonna have, you know dude in here. Uh, we're going to be, um, and our animations are in the, are, have been installed, so we're just doing some scripting in terms of getting the uh, movement animations in. Um, just at the moment, I am having some issues with the, um, with VS Code. It wants to auto complete, so at the moment, I'm just trying to remove whatever's. So if I go private void, for example, and I go, I'm going to go update. So I'll go update. If I was to auto complete by pressing tab, it does this, where it's got it twice, and that's just not right. Um, otherwise, if I just type it and ignore it and then press enter, it does the same thing. So, <laughs> I'm trying to remove, um, I'm trying to remove, there's an extension that's doing this. I know that, I know it's an extension or some kind of setting that's doing this from, um, because with VS Code, I've, I've, I've had to install some extensions to help support for, you know, uh, C Sharp formatting. Um, but I think I've actually got something else that I've, do, I've actually installed, which is causing this to happen. Um, so I might, I'm going to try and find out exactly ex what, what, you know, what's causing this. It seems like in the settings, it doesn't, I've turned off all auto completions, so it doesn't seem like there's any auto completions, um, that are, that are, you know, setting wise that are causing it. Um, I'm just trying to find, so I want to use the method update, but not the unity extension. Well, I just wanted to stop like trying to interrupt what I'm typing so for, for example like if I go private void update here uh, and I do my my you know parentheses there um, I should be allowed to go to the next line by pressing enter without it doing this so now it's got it twice because I press enter because of the um, it's trying to guess what I want and it's getting it wrong basically um, so I've got to come back and then do it that then and then do it that it has to have to do it every time I go to make a function which is really annoying um, so private void update that you know even if i hold shift and do it it still does it so i'm trying to trying to remove this guessing business that c sharp's got um <laughs> so i'm looking at the extensions for this um bracket pair colorizer i don't know why that's depre deprecated because that's a really good feature i'm upset with that um So I'm trying to have a look. So I've got C sharp. Okay, C sharp essentials. What's this? Um, let's just. Can we disable this? So what's this do? This extension pack contains useful extensions for C sharp, but especially the you know, core development. Okay, maybe it's not that one. C sharp XML documentation. C sharp for Visual Studio powered by Omni sharp now. Um, oh, is this the one? Is this the one that's guessing? Now officially supports the documentation comments from blah. You can use officially by turning on the editor for my own type. Uh, the extension will be deprecated in the future thanks to the users who have supported me so far. Uh, I'll use a pretty limited uh, analogs with no issues with autocomplete. Yeah, I think I've accidentally installed too many ex too many extensions. <laughs> I think this one's the um, I think this one's the main one for formatting and and just for support generally. Um, I think it's either the essentials or the documentations that that it's doing this in. Um, yeah, I think this is the one that guesses everything. Um, let me just, I'm going to just disable this. Can't disable alone, see so essentials depends on this. Do you want to disable all of these extensions? Okay. Um, we'll disable them all. 
which means that these two are disabled. Is this disabled? No, good. Um, features are uh, lightweight, blah, 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 great and editing, including syntax, final references, IntelliSense. Okay, so this is good. So IntelliSense, I'm not going to lose my IntelliSense because this is still enabled. Uh, support project, okay. So, do I need to restart? I might need to restart the editor. Let me just try. I mean, C Sharp has autocomplete by default, but I find it really smart. Yeah, I think it might be just um, some of these other things that I've got. Um, oh, hang on. I misspelt that and then it, it guessed the wrong thing. That was my bad. No, it's still doing it. It is still doing it. What the hell? Why doesn't it, why does it not let me? I might give it a restart after I disabled them. Private, sorry, update. Yeah, see, it's doing it. It's, that's what it's doing to me. Um, all right, let me just give this a restart. I'm just gonna close this. All right, reopen up, reopen. So I'm gonna let this happen. I wonder if I've checked the settings everywhere. Um, I just can't. I can't. Co I can't continue coding until I get this resolved. It's got to be. Uh, I, I, it's just gonna keep doing it to me. <laughs> and I put up with it, I put up with it for a long time during uh, while well, learning. So let me just have a look. Let me try. Let me try again. Okay, this thing's gonna like guess stuff. It's gonna do like it's gonna pop up with something in a minute. Private update. Private void update. No, it's still doing it. What is doing that? I just want the I just want the guessing to stop. Um Yeah, I don't think I need those documentations. Um come to connect to Discord, why not? Reconnect. Uh welcome to setting sync, no thanks. Um alright. I just checked mine, it certainly doesn't work like that. Yeah, it's definitely on my end, man. Um, but what extensions do you have for um, for VS Code uh, with C Sharp? Is it just the, um, is it just the normal, um, is it just the Microsoft one? Um, do you have any, do you have anything else? Auto rename tag. Auto close tag, what we add, blah, 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 blah. No, that's HTML and XML, so that's not an issue. Um, code runner. Okay, what's this? I don't understand this. Um, C sharp. Okay, this affects C sharp. What is it? Run code snippets or code file for multiple languages. Um, oh, do we have a video? Okay. Oh, it's just a run code thing. Right. Does it do anything else? No. Hmm. Uh, maybe not. Uh, Colorbot extension. Oh, that was for something else. No, that's a theme. Or no, that's fine. Um. Well, that's a JavaScript thing. Run switcher, get history, guides, hackers. My God. No, that's a theme. <laughs> it's all right. Um. Uh, da -da 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 -da. everything to do with what about um C sharp? Everything to do with C sharp? Can I get everything to do with C sharp? Please stand up. These are disabled. Hmm. What if I?
It's the .NET and Unity workload? What do you mean? Um, can you get... Uh, oh, this one? So you just have Essentials on? Is it C-Sharp Essentials? Or is it just the, um, you don't have this. Sure you guess. Okay. Um, doesn't sound too determined on that. Let me just check the sharp. Is it powered by OmniSharp? Is it this one? Or do you have a different one? What if I disable this? Oh, you don't use code. Okay. Ah. Uh, Alright, let me just check something. I've disabled all that. I just want to see if it's got something to do. Uh, it, it does. It's got to be some kind of setting, right? Um, or it could be something else entirely. Private void update. Oop, update. Yeah, see, it's doing it even though it's disabled. Um, oh, it's a reload required. Hang on, let me just reload that. If I reload then... Um, Visual Studio is an interface of a C-sharp. So can uh, Visual, Visual Studio Code, because it's lightweight. Um, I've just got a setting on, and it's not, <laughs> okay, it's um, it's doing a thing. Okay, so now this is, let me just look at my install. Um, I wish I could filter out themes. It's, yeah, it's really annoying. Auto rename tag. Auto close tag. Automatically add. I wonder if these are interfering with it. I'm going to disable these. I don't want rename. Okay, I want to reload for those. So that's no problem. Is there anything else that might be causing this? I don't think uh, code run is the idea. To be honest. I think that's something separate. Start a workspace. Um. Uh, just lean into. Uh. Da -da 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 -da. AMT version control. Okay, that wouldn't be uh, related so much. CFG support. Provide support for Kerbal Space Program. Configuration files. Thing. Um, line note. Oh, okay. Um, could be useful. Live server, log file highlighter. I don't think so. Um, what the hell is Lucy? Oh, that's a that's a theme. Okay. Um. Mark down. Uh, NPM support, no. No. What's this? Mark down. Majid underscore N, thanks for following. Appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Uh, da -da -da. SQL, supply, no, 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 no. Syntax. Oh no, that's a theme. Okay, syntax. Um, Unity code snippets. What's this? Oh, you know what? I think I just found it. Yeah, okay, I just found it. It's Unity Code Snippets. Okay. 
Um, I appreciate it, but I'm going to disable it. Okay. Now. Yeah, found it. Uh, but I do want to probably re-enable some of the other support here. So I've got... Um, I just want to... I'm going to first test it, I think. Yeah, let's let's test it. Um, so we'll go player, see if it, see if this happens. Update. Yeah, nice. Okay, so this is, but the only thing about this is, um, it doesn't, sh it doesn't explain, it doesn't explain the functions, which is what I like about it, actually. Um, but I might be able to, I might be able, I might actually be able to switch it off in some way. Um, let's have a look. Um, let's put in install. Uh, we want C sharp. Let's re-enable these. Oh, that was already enabled. Okay. Um, and I don't know which one it is. Unity. Okay. Unity code snippets. Mono behavior. Correct glasses. Found a 40 second YouTube that shows how to disable C sharp auto complete if that will help. Um, I think it's the code snippets. I think it's honestly this, um, because this is it's got to do with this extension, I think. Um, but if you like, you can share it. I'll have a look at it. But I just think um, I, it's it's a, there's an example here which is exact is is demonstrating exactly what's happening to me. Um, I might be able to switch it off in the settings. Let me just, um, let me just check the settings, see if I can find settings on this. Corresponding snippets. Some useful code snippets. Um, okay. Let me just search my preferences. Well, they've found the actual thing. Thank you very much, DFB. Take that in a moment if this doesn't work. Auto closing brackets trigger characters. I think I have I have switched off a lot of the auto completion, but I'll double check the settings file to make sure they're both false. Hmm. All right. Um. Unity code snippets. What do we have? Got to have it somewhere. What really? There are none. God. Okay. What about anything unity related? Anything unity related at all? Okay. IntelliSense. Interface control. Okay, uh, let's try private void update. This update with a capital U. Hmm. Hmm.
See, it's really handy with the information that it comes up with. That's the thing. That's what I liked about it. But if it's going to do that to me, I'm just not going to use it. <laughs> and then it like... I can see where, how it could be useful, but... Like, it's not doing what's, what it's demonstrating. Like, it, it's not... Like, it, it's okay if it, if it guesses it, but it doesn't add on to what you've already typed, you know? Um... That'd be nice. Feature contributions... Hmm. I mean, I know you can report issues with it, but... I think we'll just... Do it this way. Um... Without needing to worry about it so much. Got enough, I think, support with it. Um inside uh, all right so let's have a look if you wanted to copy it go right all right so we're, we're making this file so let's continue with that oh good um update Uh, I shouldn't have any issues with auto completion now, so good. Okay. This one. Update. Okay, so we've got two functions in here. Move. What? Are you kidding me? follow your tutorial link at DFB. Um, tutorial you're leaking, that is. Prevent all the collection of Visual, Visual Studio Code. That'd be nice! Okay. So we need to create a new file. Um, editor. the language right, JSON. Um, editor also closing brackets what are closing brackets doesn't bother me it's the suggestion on trigger characters I think it does Yeah, it's the um, it's the suggestion on characters. Yeah, so suggest uh, on trigger characters. Files. Right. Oh, hang on. This is not. End of file expected. Oh. Um. Settings. Face on. Crushed game. Hello. Welcome to the the stream. Thanks for five. Hang on, the video is going too fast for me. Jason, launch, edit in settings.js. Yep, okay. Markdown. Markdown on here? No. Okay, hang on a minute. I think I just have to put it at the end. Where you from, bro? Oz, yeah, man. Um, from Australia. What about you? Ah, oh, thanks for the follow, DFB93. Appreciate it. 
Thanks so much, guys. Wonderful. Good to have you on board. Ah, yes, I did need a uh, colon here. False. Yeah, that's all I want. Um, I need a colon. A colon there, there we are. Okay, so I've done that. Auto closing brackets again, it's fine. This. Controls by the suggestion should automatically show up when typing triggers to characters. Okay, that should do it. That should definitely do it. I'm so sorry it's taking so long to do stuff on this uh, script, guys. I'm just trying to sort out my um, Visual Studio code um, so it doesn't do random shit on me. <laughs> um, like, autocomplete. Like, that's just crap. Uh, I can't code like that. It's just nuts. It just only it doesn't do it in my JavaScript files, but it does it in my C sharp files at the moment. So I'm just trying to fix it. Yeah, boring. <laughs> it is boring, unfortunately. It's just stuff I should have uh, probably worked out before I stream. But anyway, um, I, it should be right now. Okay, it should be right. Let's get on. Let's get on with it. <laughs> um, let's get on with it. Uh, so we've got. All right. So let's try it. Let's try this again. All right. Let's try this again. We got move. It's still doing it. What the hell? Move. Like, what the heck? Um, why? Do I have to restart it? Do I have to refresh it? Do I have to update it? Check for updates. There are none. Okay, great. Let's just close it and open it again. It's complaining because the script's wrong. This is fine. I don't know why the script's wrong. It's because my, my coding edit is wrong. My coding edit is wrong, and uh, it's doing wrong things. It keeps wanting to guess the wrong things, and then force me to change it. Move. Oh, okay. Look, it's letting me type it. Fantastic. Let's try it again. Ready? Hang on. I'm gonna wait for everything to load first before this, otherwise it won't. Oh, I know what this is. You've reached level 10 in visual. This is the first boss. Oh, it probably is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a boss every 10 levels. You've got to deal with it. <laughs> See, this is this is, this is is actually correct here. It's just being silly right now. I'm going to wait for all the dependencies and stuff to come, come along. Does not exist in the current context. What? Are you kidding? Why? Why is this red? Excuse me, Visual Studio Code. This is this is correct, okay? Just move. No, it's still doing it. Why? Why is it still doing it? I don't want to. I don't want to auto complete. The heck! Uh, let me disable my goddamn. Let me disable. It's, it's got to be the C sharp well, business. Essentials containing what? What does this one do? Clay. That doesn't make any sense to me. None of this. Um. What about documentation? Is it documentation? Generate C sharp XML documentation. Good luck. I've got to pick up my kids. You'll be around in half. Yeah, I'll still be on. I'll still be on. Uh, I'm gonna go for a bit longer this afternoon. Um. I, I want to get this stuff done. <laughs> So, a little bit of annoyance with this, and no problem. Alright, I'll see you soon, DFB. Um, is it auto-completing, like guessing? Auto... Or add auto-complete name for class. Ah! I don't want this. How do you turn this off? Um, can we enable support at the following viewer? 
suggestions. If you still need Unity, I'll do it in front of you. Oh, I don't really talk about it. Okay, this is overriding the, uh, it's overriding the autocomplete name for class. That needs to be, that needs to stop. Let's um let's have a look at this. Oh, I've got a lot of what's this what's this issue say? Are people complaining about this? Let's have a look. Um Oh pfft. yeah, thanks! That's great, yeah, great suggestion. So far it's made me annoyed. Um alright, so uh there's gotta be a way of switching this off somehow. Uh, extension settings, can we open that up? Okay. Uh, auto... Auto something, auto complete. Auto closing delete. Control whether the editor should remove adjacent closing quotes. Uh, auto closing over type control whether the editor should type over closing quotes or brackets Auto insert auto save Auto create quotes uh, Auto import file enable disable auto import suggestions That's for JavaScript um, TypeScript no Let me just click that. I want to open up the settings again. So, extension settings. Ah, here we are. Enable disable C sharp formatter. Uh, requires restart. Hmm. I do need that. Display intent. Show intent. Show hints. Show hints. Show hints. So press hints. Um. Uh, reference code, so they press build a asset, suppress.net hidden auto start, only run analyze. Where is it? Gotta be somewhere here. Enable editor config support. Is auto complete an option here? Um Max projects, all spawn a path. Path, project load timeout, SDK include releases, SDK, test run settings, use editor formatter, uh, use modern net, wait for debugger, razor, oh, disable. Um, wow, they don't have an option. They've got all these settings, but they don't have an option for autocomplete. Pretty sure I did not see an option here for autocomplete. Got to be here somewhere. Display hints, inlay hints, tops enabled. Um, inlay, inlay parameters. Yeah, it's not here. There's no. Okay, look. Um, going back to this, I'm gonna go back to autocomplete. Is there a way
Extension was spelled wrong. Wow. I just let, I just asked a question. Hopefully, I don't get too annoyed with me uh, asking that question. But hey, it's a question. No, close that. I don't want that open. Close. I don't want to add anything. That happens. Okay. Update comment. All right. Um. Now. Let me see if I can disable this and hopefully. Oh, really? I'm gonna have to put up with it for now. I can't try. I can't turn off the uh, auto complete. Um, this also seems to. Overriding any um, settings where we have auto complete turned off. Um, Alright. It does a lot of good though. That's the thing with this extension, it does a lot of good. I don't like, um... Omnisharp, oh wait a minute, let me just check something. Um, so Jason... Settings, oh. Omnisharp... No, nah, there's nothing in it. Put it on there, hmm. Weird. Alright, um... Ah, uh, don't save that, that's fine. Okay, we'll go back to the player. We'll just have to put up with it for the moment. Um, until I can work out later on how to get that fixed. Um... So, let's have a look. Where is it? Is that what can like do? Um Okay, here we go. Do we want a move function? So movement input, this is what I need to go back for. No, I want move. Like I don't want you to guess it, I just want you to do it. Thank you. God heavens. This this the name of, of course it doesn't exist. I haven't made it yet. Wait a minute. Let me do this in a different way. Okay, so move. Again, it's doing it. So annoying. Okay, uh, move. This is the private. Oh, I wonder. Private void. Uh, move. Ah, ignored it then. Okay. Private void animate. So move. Okay. Okay. Probably my bad. I'm going to withdraw that comment. Uh, actually, no, I'm not because it is interfering with the autocomplete settings. <laughs> <laughs> so never mind, um, but yeah, I, I can see what I can see the work around there. Okay, now that I've got my code sorted out, oh my god! All right, um, let's just continue. There isn't much code here, uh, which is nice. That's what I like about all this. It's uh, you don't have to code too much. Um, it does do some things itself. Float horizontal. It's input get access raw. Horizontal. Vertical. Input. Get access. Input. Get access. Raw. Vertical. Okay. Hmm. 
Hmm. Um, so float float, uh, we've got if horizontal equals equals zero and and which is the next condition vertical equals equals zero. So if they're both just not working, I don't want to open up the menu right now. Thank you, file. Thank you for your input file, but we don't we don't want your input right at this stage. Okay. RB velocity equals new vector. Um two two, yes, two would be nice. We want two, add this. So we're gonna stop it. Return um, and what? I'm confused. What's going on here? Oh, the code's done a bit weirdly. Okay, so he hasn't got. He's got brackets done a bit weird, so I'm like, what's going on? You. Oh, that needs to be a space. Of course, that needs to be a space like that. There we go. There we go. It's picking it up now. Wonderful. I don't know if I like this stuff happening in the middle of my code. I might actually get rid of that. I don't know what's actually causing that at the moment. Um, it might be another extension. Let me just check this. I think it might be this one. Documentation comments. Okay. Deprecated announcement, new to our poor. Okay, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna uninst I'm just gonna disable this. Uh depends on this. Do you want to disable it? Oh really? Okay, I might. Yeah, I'll I'll do it. Disable all. Reload required. Okay, we'll reload. Ugh. Gotta get myself sorted out, so. All right, so it should let me. It shouldn't have that. Those comments now. Oh, it doesn't. Um, cool. Okay, it might still be loading a couple of things. So just give it a moment. Need to give it a moment. Then we'll be able to, okay. Yep. Excellent, all right, so. Um, that is working. Uh, as intended, excellent. Constructs a new vector with given X or Y, that's awesome. Okay, we've still got comments, uh, and we're not being interfered every five minutes, which is nice. Um, all right, so if horizontal, so we've got uh, movement input. So movement input equals new vector to uh, horizontal vertical, vertical, vertical. Oh, it's still, it's still doing this business. What the heck? Doesn't have pictures on here. I'm pretty sure it's this extension. Okay, um, never mind. Um, yeah, that. Actually, it could be a setting. Could be a setting. Mm-hmm. All right. Um. Anyway. RB velocity equals movement input times movement speed times fixed delta time. Oh, 
movement x, movement input x, and that's that. And we copy that line. Uh, I don't know what the indentations like here. Um, and movement x, this will be movement y, input y. Okay, so um, let's have a look. Uh, moving, uh, so we've got horizontal and vertical movement. Um, cool. Let's allow him to explain. Right ahead, um, but I'll go over it here in a second. All right, so the first uh, component we have here is a rigid body 2D. Second one is an animator, a float for our movement speed, of an, and a vector 2 for our movement input. In our wake function, we're going to be grabbing the rigid body component as well as the animator component for the mm -hmm. game object this script is attached to. In our update function, we have a move function and an animate function. For the move function, I store the horizontal and vertical inputs from get axis raw. And I do a check to see if they are both equal to zero and then I stop the player movement and I return to the update function. And the reason I do a new vector two here for zero, zero is one to stop the movement, but then also make sure that movement input does not get changed. So then later on our animations don't change. Um, but if these inputs are not zero, then we would change our input to whatever they are. So a new vector two with the horizontal and vertical positions or horizontal and vertical inputs. Our rigid body velocity will then be set to our movement input multiplied by our movement speed multiplied by time dot fix delta time. And this makes sure that the animations and movement speed and everything runs at the proper time on all devices. Uh, and our final function here is animate. So for our animator, we're gonna have to set floats for our movement X and movement Y inputs. So uh. we're just setting the movement input dot X and movement input dot Y for movement X and movement Y. And with that all said, let's go back unity and make sure we can set everything up so it works with this script okay um what was interrupting I I one do a new vector two here for zero zero higher no. movement speed multiple um, but if these inputs are not zero then we would change our input to whatever they are. So a new vector two with the horizontal and vertical positions or horizontal and vertical inputs. Our rigid body velocity will then be set to our movement input multiplied by our movement speed multiplied by time dot fix delta time. And this makes sure that the animations and movement speed and everything runs at the proper time on all devices uh, and our final function here is animate so for our animator we're gonna have to set floats for our movement X and movement Y inputs so we're just setting the movement input dot X and movement input dot Y for movement X and movement Y and with that all said Let's go back to Unity and make sure we can set everything up so it works with this script. 
So first thing we need is a rigid body 2D. I'm gonna turn off gravity, set collision detection to continuous. Okay, I'm just gonna wait for my end to stop loading. That'd be nice. Well, actually, I just realized how low I am here. What the hell? Um, there we are. All right. Okay, so back a bit. First thing we need is a rigid body 2D. I'm gonna turn off gravity, set collision detection to continuous, freeze the Z rotation so if we bump into- Turn off gravity. How does one turn off gravity? To any action to continuous. Gravity scale, I oh, am yeah. zero. Freeze the Z rotation, so if we bump into anything, we're not rotating our player. And I want to set our movement speed to something like 150. Now I just need an animator. And I'll right click over here, add the animation tab. And I'm gonna go ahead and create our first animation, which I will call player up, click the record button, go to the sprite. Oh, just a moment. All right, dogs are saying hello. And choose our player looking up sprite. And now our player looks up whenever this animation is played. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing, but for all of the other animations we need. So the seven other. All right, and now I have all eight of our player animations. So I'm going to go ahead and open the animator window. Let's see if we can this is all about animation at the moment, and we're not using this, his method of animation, so um, we can do... Oh, yeah, brilliant. This is actually really quite good. Um, what's going on here? Oh, it's a, it's a... Yeah, it's all right. It's all good. It's all good. We've got errors because the animations are not... Um, <laughs> they're not they're not impl imported yet. This is fine. Okay, great. Uh, so, we'll go to... Um, since we're not really going to be using that level of animation, uh, we might um, go back to the other video, see if we can implement those principles there. Um, fun. You can see here, I this is uh, Lost Relic Games, the tutorial on escaping Unity Animation Hell. I've got a hell. series of animations nicely laid out to represent the different animations that Mega Man might have. We've got idle, run, jump, player attack, and player air attack. And I'm going to give this project for you guys down below so you can grab it, you can follow along with me, and you can work out how we integrate these animations. So this isn't one of those tutorials where you have to follow along with the code writing it yourself. You can kind of sit back and watch it as more of a lecture format. But if you wanted to challenge yourself and actually write the code with me, then you're more than welcome to follow along with the supplied files I've linked below. So let's take a look at the script file. Let's find Mega Man. Let's pop this open. So this is a script that I'll make available for you guys and I'll just quickly, very quickly run you through it. I don't want to make this into like a player controller tutorial video because it's just going to get too long. I want this to be very specific to the animation methodology that I'm trying to um, okay, so we yeah. convey here. Okay, so we've got the animator, very importantly. We've got a bunch of um, stuff here just for kind of moving around and ground checks and jump force and things like that um, a lot of input stuff so here okay so I've made a bunch of constants to represent the animations in the game um, so if we go to the animator tab see the names here idle run jump attack all that 
they are just here as constants. This saves us writing out each name over and over and it saves us having typos and things like that. And you can most certainly put these into like an enum. I know a lot of people like to do that. Enums are ways that you can hold different parameters into in like one encapsulated object. Um, but because it's a very beginner friendly tutorial, I don't want to get too much into enums right now. Okay. Yeah, you can hold back, different is into two, like Renova and he saves us two, having typos. What do you suggest there? I think I'll just add animation states. Um, I'm going to go. Um, uh, what if we. Oh, maybe not that one, but we'll go animation states. Uh, technically variables, I guess. So animation states, uh, const string. Uh, what we, what do we have this way? Um, Window, animation, animator. Okay. So many animations. Uh, what's this? Air attack. Okay. Um, he's doing a platformer, so it's a bit different. Let me, uh, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a lot. This is gonna be a lot, but in any case. Um, we'll be all right. So I'll go idle down. So uh, what's he got? He's got uh Okay, so a similar thing. Uh idle down equals idle to score down. Uh then we have a similar thing for the rest of them. Do the idle downs for the start. Of this, the uh, idle animation. So, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, four, eight. We have uh, um, idle up is the next one. Right, down, left. left um maybe I'll put it smack down up right down left no, out from under there. Hell. Out. Oi. No, out. Hey. Don't be like that. Out. Out. Come on. What are you being under there for? That's weird. That's some weird stuff. Hang on, I just need to swap my dog out.
Alrighty, all sorted. Um, hopefully, we have no other, nothing else going on here. Uh, Alright. Let's see. Alright, so we've got uh, Idle Down. Okay, so we're just sorting this out. Alright, let's do that. Um, Alright, so. That one. Got, oh god, there's everywhere here. Uh, not that one. Where is it? This one. Okay, now I want these issues to be associated with that window. Yep, good, okay. Now, um... Okay, so, I'll down. So we're just doing all of the idols. Okay. So Unity... No, that's not it. This one. Um... No, up left. Go up left. Um... Um, down left, up left, down right. Um, up right. Is that it? Uh, I missed one. Left. Okay. Uh, this one needs to go further up though, so like, here, yeah, down, r up, right, left. Left, right. There we go, okay, so now we just simply make sure that this is following the same principle here, so, uh, down is good, up is up, left is left, right is right, down, left is down, left, oh, down, left is down, uh, down, uh, this is up left, uh, down right, uh, up right, um, okay, looks good, um, alright, so the next lot of, uh, Less a lot of animations. Okay, so I'll do this. Oh, what the hell? Too many. Too many. Um it's gonna be walk and then the next lot is gonna be casting ah oh, did it again damn Same sort of thing here, I think. Uh, so instead, we're gonna go Alt and do this. Walk. Um, what? Oh, hang on. I've done it wrong because I've copied the wrong amount. Okay. Walk. Walkle. Walkle. And we've got casting. And that should be all of them. Yeah, that's got all directions. Good. Okay, now it should be right. So if we go Alt and click appropriately for each string.
Oh, hang on. Let me do the uh, let me do the walk first. Otherwise, I'm going to be changing them all at the same time. And I don't need to interrupt the casting ones. Okay, here we go. Ready? Walk. Boom. Very nice. Casting. Oh, missed that one. Casting. So double checking. Uh, so idle. It's looking good. Walk down. Walk up. Left. Left. Walk right. Down. Left. Walk up. Left. Walk down. Right. Walk up. Right. Yep. Casting down. Up. Left. Right. Down left, down, uh, up left, down right, up right, okay. Looking good. Um, alrighty, so. Oh. What's he got next? Things like that. And you can most so suddenly put these into like an enum. I know a lot of people like to do that. Enums are ways that you can hold different parameters into it in like one encapsulated object um, but because it's a very beginner friendly tutorial I don't want to get too much into enums right now okay so it's got a um, rigid body we mapping an animator we've got a ground mask that we're using for a ground check okay so stop a um, rigid body we we're mapping an anim okay so I've got a rigid body animator that's an awake interesting we could actually put that in a start let's do that Start. Animator, we've got a ground mask that we're using for a ground check. And in the update loop, very lightweight, we're just checking the left axes, so left and right buttons on the joystick and A and D on the keyboard. Uh, my game is already, I just want to check ASD keys actually. to make sure um, so ASD WASD and unity please hurry up and update the script so I can like move it over yeah cool all right so game uh, I've got this waiting 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 okay it is working with WASD keys, which is something we didn't have with the playtest, so that's a bonus. Okay, now, stop that, and I want to check, uh, we just want to check the, and we're going to import the animations here, let's have a look. Um, we have a um, spacebar check, we have a right control keyboard check, which is flagging the attack. And down in. Oh, we don't need to. Uh, we might need to worry about that with the casting, but we'll need to be the mouse instead. But we'll work on that a bit later on. We'll probably get the movement animations. The fixed update, as you guys know, update is for like input checks. Fixed update is for actually executing um, physics and movement and things like that. In the fixed update. Update, we are just checking for the ground and we are using. Um, on the ground. is grounded we are flagging that to true or false depending on if you can find the ground beneath the player and then we are just creating a velocity holder and we are checking if that x-axis that we mapped in the update is either is pressed left middle or right and then update is either is pressed left middle or right and axis that we mapped in the update uh, check update movement based on input. And that's something I might not be doing here. Click the two. Um. It's done a bit differently, isn't it? Uh, we do have horizontal and vertical movements. Okay, we could put in um, 
probably a check at the end of this uh, in terms of this. He's either he's pressed left, middle or right. And axes that we mapped in the update. Is I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need to, yeah, I'm gonna need them up over here for a moment. Y axis and X axis. Hmm. I'm going to keep watching actually. Then move the player. And if we're not, then velocity is zero. So here would be a good place to start for the idle. We will say change animation state. Player, oh, instead our constants are here. Player idle, nice and convenient. Okay. So this we could, we could actually put it in here for our code. Um, so not only do we do that, although I think what we could do is because we want to keep it separate, uh, we're going to do um, uh, move is constantly uh, done. So we've got animate. Animate should be under. Let me just disable this for a sec. I'm pretty sure this does not need to run for our system. Um, how do I disable again? KC, that's right. Good heavens. Uh, all right, so. All right, we're gonna wait for Unity to behave itself and then we're gonna check this out. I'm pretty sure this is mainly for the, uh... oh, hang on, yes, animate, hang on just a moment. It's not being called. Okay, so I'm just gonna disable that. And then we'll try again. All right. Um, here we go. is still working yes all right so I don't think we need to do it this way um, to be honest set float so that's just accessing the animation the animator uh, we're not gonna be accessing the animator I don't think for this except for perhaps changing the animation not the not setting the values in the animator because we're not using the values in the animator we're using code values Variables. And if left or right is being pressed, so we can change animation state. Um, then here, change, uh, pressing this in here, we don't want the attack to be overriding itself. So let's look at adding these animation play references. Okay, so if we are pressing left, if we are pressing right, then move the player. And if we're not, then velocity is zero. So here would be a good place to start for the idle. We will say change animation state. Play our, oh, instead our constants are here. Play idle. Change animation state, okay. So, uh, I'll just backspace this part here. We're gonna animate. Um, what we're gonna do though is, um, whoop. we're gonna check if horizontal equals equal zero um it does not equal zero i should say um we need to be more specific i think uh we need to be so if it equals like it's greater than zero um, and that's just horizontal, like that. Um, horizontal float. Oh yeah, but it's declared in there, I can't access it. Ooh. I'll make it a public float then. Horizontal. Um. Float. Vertical. Um, 
or even not necessarily public. It just needs to be um, it just needs to be it just needs to be global. Uh, so let's just uh, fix that up real quick because I don't want I don't want to have like a million useless options in, in Unity, and I'm not typing properly. One private, private, damn it! Come on, keyboard, work. Fingers. All right. So horizontal float and that. Um, we do want. This is probably a little repetitious, I think. But we do need to constantly be checking this for animation to work. So. Um, okay. Now. Now I can access it. Uh, I, don't, I don't need to. Um, I need to re. Let me just. I don't need that there. I don't think. Did I have. Horizontal? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, all good. So, horizontal is greater than zero. Uh, and, and vertical. Uh, vertical, vertical, thank you. Vertical is equal to zero. Um, then that basically means we're going right, doesn't it? All nice and convenient. And if left or right is being pressed, then play a run, and you can put them here like that, but we don't like to repeat ourselves in codes. Um, okay, I'm getting a bit of a head of myself here actually, so this is going to be um, uh, grabbing the value of the horizontal and vertical movement uh, values. So we're grabbing the uh, horizontal and vertical uh, movement values, and then we're going to be using them to set the animation accordingly. So for this, we're going to use um, the first one we're going to use. Is, this is actually going to be the second one. If I actually do this right. So we're going to be using uh, this is the a different if statement. This is going to be a different if statement. So it's going to be a lot of little if statements here, just confirming what is what. Um, for each of them, and uh, so if horizontal is equal to zero and the vertical is also equal to zero, then the animation that we want to play is going to be change animation state. Uh, am I typing that correctly? Something like that. Okay. Um, it's going to be um, uh, idle. Um, down. We'll just we'll just put idle down for the moment. Um, that's going to be idle down like that. Yeah. Cool. Change animation state does not exist. Are you kidding? Change animation state. Uh, what am I missing then? Is change animation state going? Oh, it's a function. That's why. Um, so what we might do, we're going to say if um, x. I'm going to check to see what his actual animation says. X axes is not equal to zero, which means it's being pressed either left or right. Then um, change animation state to run. And what we can do, we can just maybe we we'll just put make an else and move the idle here. That's a little bit neater. You'll notice that I'm putting this change animation state logic within the player script. You don't have to put it there. I'm doing it just for convenience for this video. If you wanted to, you could make like an, a separate script called animation manager or something like that. Then you could talk between the player script and the animation manager and tell it what to do. But I don't want to be jumping between too many tabs and windows right now so people don't get confused. But yeah, you can do it like that if you wanted to.
All right, so if I was to quickly run that as a test, cool, and he blinks, boom. Okay, well, he didn't really explain what I thought he would. Let me just have a look at his code overview again. I don't think he showed us the function for change animation state. I am pretty sure that is something that we need to create here. For you guys, and I'll just quickly, very quickly run you through it. I don't want to make this into a, like a player controller. So what's he got here? He's got current animation, current animation. Um, right, that's something we don't have here. So let's have, what do we actually have? Private string, uh, current animation. Yep. Uh, what else? Nothing else. Okay. Um. I'm going to change these names to move X and move Y. These don't need to be flood again. Uh, same here. Okay. Tutorial video, because it's just going to get too long. I want this to be very specific to the animation methodology that I'm trying to um, convey here. Okay, so we've got the animator, very importantly. We've got a bunch of um, stuff here just for kind of moving around and ground checks and jump force and things like that. Um, a lot of input stuff. So here, okay, so I've made a bunch of constants f to represent the bar, and he saves us having typos and things like that that we're using for a ground check. And hmm. I've made a bunch of constants f to represent the animations in the game. Um, so if we go to the animated tab, see the names here, idle run, jump attack, all that. They are just here as constants. This saves us writing out each name over and over, and he saves us having typos and things like that. And you can most certainly put these into like an enum. I know a lot of people like to do that. Enums are ways that you can hold different parameters into in like one encapsulated object. Um, but because it's a very beginner friendly tutorial, I don't want to get too much into enums right now. Okay. So we've got a uh, rigid body, we're mapping an animator, we've got a ground mask that we're using for a ground check. And in the update loop, very lightweight, we're just checking the left axes, so left and right buttons on the joystick and A and D on the keyboard. Um, we have a um, spacebar check, we have a right control keyboard check, which is flagging the attack. And down in the fixed update, as you guys know, update is for like input checks, fixed updates for actually executing um, physics and movement and things like that. In the fixed update, we're just checking for the ground and we are using um, is grounded, we are flagging that to true or false, depending on if we can find the ground beneath the player. Mm. And then we are just creating a velocity holder and we... I don't think he explains this. We are checking if that X axis that we mapped in the update is either is pressed left, middle or right. And then we have is jumped, we're adding the force to the jump, and then we're mapping the velocity. And okay, so here we are checking if the attack is pressed, we have a check to make sure that is attacking is false before it's true. And we're doing that because we don't, when we do eventually write this animation code in here, we don't want the attack to be overriding itself. So let's look at adding these animation play references. Okay, so if we are pressing left, if we are pressing right, then move the player. So let's look at adding these animation play references. Okay, so if we are pressing left, if we don't want the attack to be overriding itself. So let's look at adding these animation play references. Okay, so mm -hmm. if we are pressing left, if we are pressing right, then move the player. And if we're not, then velocity is zero. So here we'll give a place to start to the idle. We will say change animation state. Player, we set our constants are here. Player idle, nice and convenient. And if left or right is being pressed, then player run. And you can put them here like that. But we don't like to repeat ourselves in code. So what we might do, we're going to say if you might explain um, later, I'm thinking, x axis is, is not equal to zero, which means it's being pressed either left or right. Through that then, um, first. Change animation state to run. And what we can do is maybe we can just make an else and move the idle. Because it's here. clearly a function so he's got in there, and I just want to see You'll notice I'm putting is. this change animation state logic within the play script. You don't have to put it there. I'm doing it just for convenience for this video. If you wanted to, you could make like a separate script called animation manager or something like that. Then you could talk between the play script and the animation manager and tell it what to do. But I don't want to be jumping between too many tabs in the windows right now, so people don't get confused. But yeah, you can hmm. do that if you want to. All right, so if I was to quickly run that as a test. Cool, any links? Boom, all right, so that's working fine. Oh, and by the way, you might be aware that right now there's a huge sale going on on the Unity Asset Store, and one of my own assets, the Ultimate 2D Card Game, is part of that sale. So if you've ever been interested in making card games, I don't care for you guys to make games with and hopefully make money with two through the App Store or Steam. So now we just need to do the jump. So here we are checking the for the jump, jump press, we're adding uh, force. So we just say change. Oh, 
change animation states to player jump. Okay, that no, let the player jump. Let's have a look at what's he got. Change animation state. To... Player script change animation state. Bring your animation. So it is a um, it is a function he's made. To player jump. Okay, that'll let the player jump. But what we need to do, we want to make sure that the idle is not overriding the jump. So we need to write uh, a condition over here for that. And I'll explain to you just why very quickly. I'll run that to show you what the problem will be. So jump, oh, yep, you see that? He tries to jump. You see his arms raised and the idle takes over. So what we'll do, we can wrap this whole thing here. We'll say if is grounded, and I'll just move this closing bracket over here. So only if they're on the ground, and then if the joystick is moving or not, will it respond to those animations. Otherwise, it's just going to jump. Oh, look at that. Yo! I'm digging that. So at this point, we've got three animations without any uh, fancy spyware networks or any parameters being sent to the animator or you know, set floats at bull. So we'll wrap this up with the um, attack. All right, so in this condition block here, so if the input is being pressed to attack, then we want to um, change animation state to player attack. And you see, we have two attacks, with air attack and normal attack. So we now need to choose which, between which of those we want to do. And we'll do it by simply checking from the ground or not. So if is grounded, so if uh, is grounded is true, then play the normal ground attack. Else, let's copy and paste this. And we're going to say player air attack. Cool, that makes sense, right? So if we're on the ground, play normal attack. If we're not on the ground, play the air attack. So you can see here we have this attack complete that I've just set up. And all it's doing is uh, setting attack back to false. And what that means is because we have this condition here that doesn't actually allow the attack to play more than once until this um, Boolean flag is set back to false. So the attack will only play if the attacking is not already attacking, basically. Um, then after a period of time, we want to um, call this attack complete. So to do that, for the purpose of just this tutorial, I'm going to use invoke. And all this does is it calls another function after a period of time. So all you do is pass in a string name, which in this case is uh, attack complete. And then you pass in a time. After how long should this um, function call? And as I mentioned, you can just kind of hard code in value, like um, 0.3. But I've actually created a uh, attack delay variable at the top here, which I've set to 0.3. And I've serialized that, so you can kind of play with it through the inspector to kind of get the best outcome you want. Um, I'll just go back down to there. All right, so what this is going to do is, this is just going to, after 0.3 of a second, it's going to allow us to shoot again. So I might just, um, so we just want to also make sure that um, before the play goes back to an idle state, he's also not shooting. Much like we do with the grounded. Is attacking. So if he's grounded and is attacking, is false. So we don't want the play to be attacking uh, when we make a decision to go back to idle or to run. So one problem I have here is um, I didn't include the Mega Man run shoot animation. If you've ever played Mega Man, you'll know that he can run and shoot at the same time. I don't have that. So he's kind of going to go back to an idle, but the point will be made anyway, I think. Um, all right, so what if you wanted to map this attack delay to the length of one of these specific animations? Depending on the kind of game you're making, if you're making like a fighting game that has like animation attacks state or function. Then typically you might want to wait for that animation to completely finish playing so that's before a fundamental then you um, floor tell it you can do something else. But what you can do is um, you can say um, attack delay equals animator dot get that? current animator state info. Uh, I kind of get it though. Then open and close brackets and put in passing a zero, and that's an index value. So that's returning the current animation that's playing, the animator's current animation. And then we simply ask for the length. So this attack now delay will return in seconds as a float. Um, how long either of these uh, animations are, which is really cool because if the attack ground animation and the air animation are different, if one was longer than the other, then you could wait till they have completely finished to do it like that. But in this case, we'll just leave it um, as this attack value, which is like 0 0.3 if I'm not mistaken. Okay, well, that should be it. So let's, let's check this out now and see what happens. Pretty excited, actually. So we got the running, got the jumping, and now we've got yeah, the- Stop. Okay, he hasn't mentioned that, of course, anyway. Um, but... Let's just simply... Ah, uh, so to change animation. Oh my god, I was so confused when I got back. Ah, uh, that was because I was playing a video in Fast Forward. Um. And... Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> my bad there. Um. I'm trying to work out. So he's got this function, right? He, he goes through all this. Um, and he's got this function called change animation state. And he's putting animations in there, but he doesn't explain exactly how to do that actual function. He just completely skips through it, the entire thing. So his tutorial is helpful to a point, and that's it. Uh, how do I change the animation sprite in Unity? I don't want to do it in the animator. I want to do it by code. Through script. Okay, here we are. So I just need to work this out, and this should be good. Changing sprite animation through script. I'm trying to build uh, multiple skins for the hero character in my, to my game. I can't really figure out exactly how to do it. Basically, the move animation is the same as all of them. So each sprite is a, uh, is a sprite sheet with three pictures in it. Exactly the same setup for each. So you want to do it by code. Don't like the Unity interface? No, I don't want to use the Unity interface for this. Um, 
uh, so a card can create a generic animation. I'm going to simply go through the next sprite and reuse it. So I've created the animation um, in the in like using the anim uh, not the animator but like the animation itself in Unity. Um, so I've got all the animations in there. It's just a, it's just a matter of setting the animation of the sprite accordingly. So I want to just basically change the animation to whatever animation I want, but I want to do it through the code. So I don't want to do it on the um, on the animator. Um, Like his tutorial says, use this function, but he hasn't gone through how to make this function. He's completely forgotten to explain that. Everything else was fine with it. Uh, also, how do I set sprites from script? Uh, oh, hang on. Uh, first of all, don't be using resources load. Hmm. What the heck? Can I see the entire thing? Animator. Over, override controller. Yes, okay, moving. Let's... I mean, you're going to illustrate the API real quick. Yeah, I'm just checking um, a Q&A at the moment. Okay, I don't want to... Set skin animations. Override controller. So animator override controller. I think he's done it a bit backwards actually. The override controller is actually not supposed to be there. Um hmm. Animation clips. So there is a so weird. I think I can understand it, even though he's done it actually a little bit wrong. Um, Okay, so we've got animator already because we've got animator at the top as anim. So I'm going to go anim dot animation clips. I think animation clips. No, it's it's not liking it. What? I have animation animator override controller. Apparently I've got to I've got to override it. So like animation animator override controller Override controller. I think. Um, so Override controller dot animation clips. Okay, now I have access to it. Um, animation. Equals. Oh, he's got, this guy's got a couple of things. I just want to access the animations. Like why do people have to complicate it by throwing in skins? Um, changing sprites and animation. That's all I want to do. 
Well, it's so hard to find out the answer. Um, do, 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 do. the following Walker code for the. Uh, public object. Okay. The following worked in Unity script has, has since stopped running over. When I ported it to my game, I have prefer bigger bones. Yep. Nine characters. I created three animations for each class. Run single version. So I don't want to backseat. You can backseat as much as you like, by the way. I don't care. This is fine. Um, I'll just decide what's what's good and what's not. <laughs> if you want to give advice, don't don't worry. Just trying to get an idea of why you're trying to change the state instead of creating a new one. Uh, making a transition in reference to the transition state. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, all I'm actually just trying to do is just um, is just uh, um. Uh, I'm doing it here, so I'm doing the transition here. Basically, okay. Uh, so we're just doing a we're just doing movement. So we've got eight we've got eight directions. Um, so we're we're tracking the move. We're tracking the axis and movement on move x and move y. Uh, if if these are, let's say for example, if they're zero, then we just want to change the animation to, um, idle down, for example, or whatever it is. Um. There's going to be other other things going on here that we're going to be tracking direction and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, so in this particular case, I'll probably set another variable which determines the direction. Um, but I just basically am trying to, you know, if they stop moving, I just want to change the animation of this uh, of this player, um, and I want to call a function for that, which is change animation state um, or something, and then change it from there um but that's not as simple as i thought it might have been um apparently <laughs> um see so it's got sprite get component um right okay so there's a few Because I'm trying to find a simple example of this. Um, use script change animation. Animated controller scripting. There is a tutorial on this. I don't want to have to play another video on stream though. That's the only thing. Scripting API animation Unity manual. Oh hello. This might give me something. Um, okay, well, that's what transitions do. Make a variable, a boolean, to change state from script. Okay. Well, I kind of have that. So I've got the animation stored here. Um, I've got a current animation. Um, which I'm not using. Um, so it's there. Two, two, you, Jake. Thank you very much for following. Appreciate it. Um, so I've got this, but I just don't know how to put it together. So the other thing is, I could check what, uh, what current animation. Oh, I see it. Current animation would be whatever we set it to, right? Um. So, but I don't know what the code would be to set the current animation. Animation. So, at, uh, Anim needs to get current component animation. Okay. Um. Weird. So, just make a state for each one to from... Uh, one, two, four, many, seven, reference from string. Okay. This is fine. Uh, that's what I'm kind of doing here. So, like, basically, change the animation state. Okay. So, but the thing is, how do I change the sprite animation? This is the one line I need right now. Um, 
which would be what? So what I have to do, do I have to go get component? So like, do I have to set the uh, animator anim? So if I just go anim get get component. Uh, animation see this is where I'm confused it doesn't make a lot of sense to me I don't feel like this is correct it could be the animation component is used to play back animations no you have an you have animator what yeah well anim is animator I've got it up here see so anim, animator is anim so I'm just referencing this is what I'm doing here accessing animator we get the component and then we set it to whatever the animation is that we call. Um, trouble is, still doesn't like. Cannot convert from string. Oh, because I got converted from string, don't I? <sighs> okay, hang on, let me just bring it up here. on something I did to make notes on this Maybe. okay open with code I'm just gonna open some notes with code here Convert to uh, what? String. Oh no, that's when we said the score we converted to string. Okay, well that doesn't make sense to me. Well, um, where's the other one? Huh? I'm confused. What happened to... Oh, never mind. Okay, it's opened up in the one one. Okay. Um... Okay, what am I doing then? So this is a... Uh... Oh, damn. Hmm. It doesn't like anything that I'm doing here at all. Uh, can't convert from string to Unity Engine animation. Oh, okay. We could simply use. Um, well, that's not going to work either. No. Uh. Um. This is so complicated. Wait, and I'm... It doesn't like it because it's a string. So what's the point of making it a string then? In the first video. What the hell? All this is wrong. I don't understand. Welcome back, by the way. Um, this this tutorial's wrong. It's wrong. I don't know how it's working for him. He doesn't explain what change animate how to set up change animation, change animation state. So I don't know how to make this function. Um, and now I've got, I can't put strings in parameters now apparently. Um. Like what? The animation, the animator doesn't take strings in. 
Unless... Unless I do this. Can I convert it to... Um, so... Animation equals... Animation... Um... Uh, I don't know. I'm getting myself into a confusing lump of mess. Uh, okay. The manual's not very helpful at the moment for me. I don't understand what it's talking about. Animation can be uh, can be used to change the layer of animation. I can direct control. Okay. I still don't understand what it's talking about. The Unity manual talks in gibberish. How do I how do I trigger animations with script? Uh, I need a proper example here. Oh my god, don't tell me that Okay, so this person starts with a description saying, um, how do I trigger animations through script? And then he says, Oh the the terminology in my title might be a bit off. I'm talking about something completely different. What am I trying to do? Uh, is make a coin that plays uh, one animation when the game starts. Okay, well this is might still be relevant. I have no problem with the, this part. Uh, and when I collect the coin, I play a little animation. Okay, so we have like collision. Give us. Ah, here we go. Um, game object. I've got to access the game object. Oh, let me see if I can find it. Because this guy had a problem with his code and wasn't working. Um, game object. Okay. So we have um. Okay. Alrighty, this might work. Kind of. Okay. Game object. Uh, animator will go play. Animation. No, it doesn't like. It doesn't like how I'm doing this. So you've set up the animation controller, or yeah, look, see, uh, animator anim. That's all set up there. Um. But. It doesn't like a string here for some weird reason. What if we did game object? No, I'm just stupid now. No, like it. It doesn't like a string in here. I can't put. So I can't enter it in like that. This is this is this part here is where JavaScript is much more simple. <laughs> um. So. I don't know what it's complaining about here, except for maybe... Oh, hang on. No. Uh, it's, um... Animator. Or oh, anim. I think because I had an anim as a uh, thing, you know. Nope. You, the way you do it is through the inspector and then reference what I set up on the script. I'm so confused. Um, are you talking about you use the animator itself, like the actual like animator, and you put 
transitions through that, because that's what I'm not wanting to do. I want to do it all in code. Uh, according to this, it's possible. It's possible to do that. Um, game object, get component animator. Okay. Animator atoms, get animator. Okay, well, can we... We'll go back to this, animator. Yeah. Uh, play. Animation is the total. It's not complete. What the hell? Um, yeah, but I don't. I want to. I want to reference that. Like. Animation. I don't know. I'm repeating myself here now. I can't put... Oh, what if I did this? Animation... Uh... No, it has to be... Can't put it in there. Well, there's an animation controller that the animation reference, um... Oh, hang on. Uh, there is an animation um, controller that the animation refer animator reference, as far as I know, the animator itself only tells the game object who is who is the controller. I don't understand that. <sighs> um, I don't know why it's so difficult. What's this video talk about? It goes for six minutes. For animator component. So on here we can add private Animator. Animator. Change the animation. You need to tell the control not to, not the animator. But I could be wrong. Oh, you mean like here? Ah, uh, maybe that code is wrong. But see, I can't even like this. I can't even do this. Like, I can't send in a string through a parameter. Which is really weird. I don't know why I can't send in a stream through a parameter. Like, that's just crazy. Uh, unless I'm doing it wrong for C sharp, but I probably am. <laughs> um, Once again, this is the variable name, and this is the object itself. And then in our awake function, we can add in animator. We can add in an animator equals get component animator. So this will get the animator component from our object. And oh, hang then on. animator. So this will get. <sighs> oh wait, I'm already doing that. Yeah, I'm already doing that. Anim. Is idle down itself a string or a reference to one? It's a reference to one. See? Idle down is a string. It's holding a string in that value. For some reason it just... I can't put strings in, in parameters apparently. I don't know why. It doesn't like it. I can't convert from a string to Unity Animation like... I'm so confused. Uh, 
Um, anyway, I'm gonna watch this little video here. Get the animator component from our object. And then in our movement, we want it to be able to change to that running animation wherever, whenever we're moving. So let's to be a little bit neater, let's make a new function called move. So private void move. And in there, all we're gonna do is copy that code we have from our update, and then we're gonna paste it in our move. And then all we have to do is in our update is called that move function. <sighs> so we're just moving around the code. <laughs> Get it? Move. Uh, I thought it was funny. But anyways, here is our code now. All we're doing is calling that code and making it neater. And so now in our move function, we can activate our animation. So let's put a comment here, animation. And now if our movement input does not equal zero, then we run. So if movement input does not equal zero, then that means we're moving. Then we set animator dot set bool. And then we pass in the name of our boolean, which in this case it's called run comma, and then we pass in the value true. So we're setting the boolean run that we set before in our animator to true. And vice versa, else, which happens when this condition isn't met, we set the animator dot set bool and run animation to false. So that will work now with our animation, changing it to run. And then to set our trigger for the jump, we go to our jump function. And if it's in this if condition, so if it's grounded and we press the jump, then it's gonna jump. As you can see here, we add the force to jump. So right under that, we can set the trigger for the jump animation. So we go to animator.setTrigger. And then we pass in that jump name. And if you're new to coding, this is just a string. So we're passing in a string. Oops. We're passing in a string to our set trigger, and the string is basically the name of our of the thing we want to trigger. So now if we control S or save it, we can minimize it, and now we can play the game and it will change animation states whenever we run or jump. Okay, so we press play, and now we're running. Hmm, okay. She's doing it your way? What do you mean? So we're. And now, if. Code we have. Well, she's. I mean, all she's showed me so far is the code. States via our. Today, I'm going to show you how to implement your animator into your player controller. So basically, in our last video, we set up our animations in our animator attached to our player, and then we are going to activate those states via our player controller script. So if you haven't seen the last video and you're kind of lost on this one, then I recommend watching the last video and let's get coding. So let's go to our script. So under assets, we can go to our scripts and then we can double click our player controller. And now we need a reference to our animator component. So under the Collider 2D, we can add private animator animator. So once again, this is... Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, okay, let me search something else. Let me go... Um, uh, Fully coding animation. Uh, Cogitus18, thank you for following. Appreciate it. Um, well, I don't understand though. Like, uh,
Uh-huh. Okay. Just a moment. You did say... Did, uh, I just want to go back to the video I initially watched. Um, and he does provide uh, files for the... for the example, so I'm just going to get it. Uh, Congutus, uh, you didn't name the variable in the parameter, bro. Oh. If you don't use the Unity Animator, you'd have to make an... an eye enumerator or something to solve through the sprites. Oh. Oh, true. Okay, sorry, that's my JavaScript coming out of me. Um, actually. Yeah. Okay. But it still doesn't like the string here. Hang on, I'm gonna go find out exactly how this other dude set it up, because he didn't explain it in his video. A core fundamental change, like... Uh, set up and he can do it. Um, do we have a sense? I want to open up the player script. Because he did everything in the player script, I think. Yes, always open up the DC files with that. Yes. Second animation still capitalized. Uh, just give me a sec. This is his code. All right, so we've got this change animation state business. What the hell? Change animation state. String new animation. Ah. Okay. It would be nice if he showed us this on on the video. <laughs> um. Okay. Let me try setting this up here. Um, close, I'm gonna close a few things. Um, here. Um, alright, but how is he calling it? Um... Is still capital, yeah, it should be lowercase. Oh, okay, yep. Lowercase, okay. Just a sec. Um, so I've, got to, I've got to reference it as a string, right here. Um, uh, everything still looks like you're referencing the animator. Uh, Cog, actually, I think he might know. <laughs> um, private void. Uh. Oh, okay. Just a moment. Current animation does not exist. Okay. Um. Did I put that in the wrong place? Okay, so what's current animation? What scopes that? Current animation is a private string. Okay. What do I have? I've got... I've got it as a private string. What the hell? Okay. So 
that's not a problem. Um, State from the animator. I'll, I'll go from the top, okay? Let's go from the top. And I'm just gonna check everything <laughs> from the top. Alrighty, so... Um, we have... Uh, private stream current animator, and... We have the private animator at the top as well, so... Um... Animator, anim, yep. Uh, animator, animator, okay. I'll just have it the same as he's, otherwise I'm gonna get confused. So, animator, animator. Yeah. Um, private string, current animation. So, private string, current animation. Yep. Yep. And then, from there, he has a serialized field. I don't know, I don't actually understand that. I'm not sure what that means, um, but I'm gonna put it in anyway. So a game object has an animator with a controller. Yes. It's got a controller object. Yes. Uh, then he's got all the animations, like so, and I've got a similar th sort of thing for my animations. So, yeah. This is, this is nice. So then, any start animator dot equals get component animator, okay. So, okay. Yeah, that's what we had to we had to fix that up there. Serialized fields are displayed in the inspector. Oh, okay. I'll soon find out exactly how it's going to be displayed for me. I think that's um, <laughs> um, I think that's the private float, if I'm correct. So he is using some part of the animation. I mean, I have set it up in, uh, I have set up the animator in the inspector. I mean, I've got the animations in the in the animator in the inspector. I'm just not like. Um, you think this guy's bad? Well, if Dave H could explain a little bit more because he seems to use it, he's not here moment. Dave, Dave H yesterday um, said that he's doing all this for his game which is so much better but and it seems to be working for him so I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what's going on there. Um, but uh, let me just see if I can fix it up because if I can if I can do it the same way that this guy's got it then we should be able we should be able to use it. Um, okay so we've got all this other stuff. So fixed update. Okay, so fixed update for animation changes. Uh, I can walk you through the normal way, mostly code. Like you can make all of this work like you have. Just need to set up the states in the animator. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Sounds, sounds good, DFB, if you wish. Yeah, of course, because this doesn't seem like it's working for me. Um, the dude that, I mean, I, I, he's made a fundamental mistake in his tutorial. He did not actually explain how, he, how, this, how this function was to work. He didn't. He didn't explain anything about that. He just started. He just created this function in this manner. 
Um, this is telling me that the current animation doesn't exist. When it does, let me just check that. How is he? How is he actually? So he's calling this the current new animation, change animation state. In that's in fixed update. String new animation. Uh, so if current animation equals new animation, he thinks the current animation doesn't. Exist. That's so confusing. Why this doesn't actually work? Unless it's current animation equals new animation. Yeah, get it working first and then make it fancy. Yeah. Mm. Do you want to pop into a call with me, DFP? It might be easier than typing it all out for me. Or, yeah, in the chat. I might be able to understand it better too. But yeah, this is this is so confusing. I don't even know why it's. It doesn't. It, they're saying that the current animation doesn't exist, but it does, according to. Oh no, it doesn't. What the hell? Uh. Oh wait, current private string current animation. Okay, just a moment. Have I misspelled this? I hope not. I've got it exactly... Okay, now it's not complaining. Okay. Um... Pop into... Moon Howling for me and I'll, I'll move you over. The voice chat. Um, I'm just gonna... S this, I think... I, I must have misspelt it. I, I've got... I mean, we saw it, didn't we? Yeah, I did. I left, I left an eye out. Oh my god. <laughs> um, but yeah, pop in here. I'll uh, move you over. Hello. Uh, hello, my dude. Can hey. you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hey, I just... <laughs> I just... Yeah, I'm not sure how much of that you got on stream, but I just... um, I, I literally missed the eye. <laughs> Ah, oh, I know. I've done it so many times. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean it doesn't exist? I mean, I, yeah. should, I should know that. I should know that. It's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> okay, so he's got this set up. Um, let me see if this works. Um, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, the code makes sense. Now that I can see all of it, that is. Um, you know, I've got the animator. We're accessing, we, you know, we access the animator here. Yeah. Uh, we play, we've got this, this This is the line that I'm after, animator.play animation. Um, for some reason though, uh, for, he's, um, uh, I think I want to give some points out here. So first of all, I want to give some, I want to give a point to, um, uh, the reason why I'm giving a point to Kogutus? Uh, is because um, he told me that this was wrong. I didn't have string in here. So, um, and that's true, I didn't. I just had the animation name. Um, so. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I, I was doing the JavaScript version of coding. <laughs> that's fine, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I've got another mate that hates C Sharp because of all the little nitsy bitsies. Yeah, it's a bit nitsy bitsy, all right. That's for sure. And then, for some reason, some of my extensions want to add this sort of stuff in, my, like comments, but in the in there for some reason, it's not it's not a bad idea. I just don't. Um, yeah, I've um, I have not seen that before. Uh, it must be one of your extensions just going haywire. Oh, not really haywire. It's just I think it's this actually. It's the seat. It's this this uh, Visual Studio Code Omni Sharp. It's got all these little things in it. Um, for I, I guess it's nice just to but visualize what you're doing. But I guess it just there's more words to read. <laughs> it is um, a lot more words to read. Yeah. Um, but anyway. you should kind of know what you're passing in. But yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, let me just see. Okay, so I'm gonna put something in here. I'm gonna go. So we're gonna go idle down. So if he's not moving, 
Well, we need to change him from that, actually, don't we? Uh, so currently he's not moving. Um. Oh well, he wasn't moving before, was he? Uh, let me just see if he's going to actually move as an idle state. So if he's not moving, he should be playing the idle down state. Um. And I might just actually. My Unity takes forever to upload its, <laughs> reload the assemblies. Um, Have you uh, broken your scripts down into, uh, what do you call them? Um, let me fucking think of the name. <laughs> Components. Something very useful with uh, like Unity. Mechanics? Because it... Um, it's got a it's got a feature in it where you can make it run a bit faster because it compiles this all the scripts like every single script you have it will compile them all again. Um, oh, okay. You need to break up your scripts into folders that have uh, definition reference. I think that's assembly. Yeah, assembly references. No oh. assemblies. That's what I'm <laughs> thinking of. So you need to. Um, make assemblies and then it'll complain like hell because you'll be missing references to things and then you've got to give it some references and then it'll only load or compile what scripts it needs to when the scripts get remade oh. it's a nuance of in a uh unity i'll have to look into that i haven't got i've only yes, got like one it... script <laughs> Really? Yeah, I've only got one script. And it's script. taking that long. It's taking that long, yeah. Usually it's when you're up to about 100 scripts um, with a decent amount of code in them. Yeah. That it'll start to slow down. This is this game, the, the way this this is at the moment, it's very infant stages. Like, I'm, I've am i put, I've created the environment, I've put in a dude, a sprite. I've, yeah. I've cut, I've, I've added all the animations and, and whatnot in for, in for the dude, and now we're just trying to animate it. Um... So what's your like rigs details? Are you got a decent amount of RAM and everything? That Uh well my uh, my RAM's like thirty gigabytes. It should be absolutely fine then. Yeah. Um, what about your processor? Uh, processor is I can't remember exactly. A, a recent gen or at least an i five or what? What is it? A AMD or Intel? Uh, I think it's an Intel. I just can't um remember what it is. Let me just That's right. deep story. You, you can check your thing from just my computer properties. <laughs> uh, right, I'm doing it the old way. Showing my age here. That's all right. <laughs> I, I know exactly what you mean. Um, it's also the the techie way to do it. It's not the layman's way. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. Um, Intel Core. Let's have a look. Twelve CPUs. 3.2 uh, gigahertz. Bigger so I can see. Um, it's an i7 390. An i7 at 3.2, even though it's a really old generation. Um, that should be still kicking ass. Okay. Um, that's that shouldn't be a problem. It might might be showing its age, but I doubt it. Hmm. Um, it shouldn't be fine. Alrighty. Um. Yeah. Okay. I might look into why that's why that's happening. It might be a setting or a configuration um, yeah, I'm that's not causing sure. this. You, you, uh, what about uh, how many... If you go into window and go into package manager, how many packages have you got in your uh, scene? Package. You might have a lot of just Debug garbage packages. Debuggable package manager? No? Uh, uh, in, in Unity itself. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm getting a bit up. carried away here. Uh, <laughs> Uh, let me have a look. Yeah, I'm a more of a, a Unity buff. I don't know Windows all that well. So in Window, um, under Window, Window tab. Oh, yeah. There should be a uh, package manager. Okay, yep. Yeah, I've got... Oh, yeah, packages. And I've then, got a few packages going and on And then here. you should be able to see the uh, packages in Project. Yeah, all right. Um, you've got really limited stuff in there already. I mean, there's a couple of things like visual scripting you don't need because I've obviously seen that you... You won't do all that sort of shit. But, um... Don't worry about it, just leave it all. None, none of that's going to slow you down. I thought maybe you brought in some packages that were slowing it down. Um... Hmm. Nah, it's fine. 
I have no idea why yours is being so slow. Yeah, no worries. I'll, I'll work it out. Um, I'll just have to put up with it for now. <laughs> for now. Uh, um, have you got it on a solid state hard drive? Uh, no. It's actually running from an external one. hard drive. Yeah, that'll be doing it then. Uh, okay. Maybe I should put So, it yeah. Ah, oh, that's a point. Unity, that's a point. Unity's pretty hungry. Yeah. Okay. I'll it's put it not up. a lightweight. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. Um, if you want a lightweight engine like Godot or something is a lot more lightweight. Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not doing, not doing that. I've got nothing against Godot, but I've just spent so much time learning Unity. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, Unity has a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get over it, it's got some really powerful features. Yeah. I'm feeling it already to a point. <laughs> um, People love Godot though because there are good reasons to like it. Mm. Yeah, they're, they're they're really competing against Unity that way. I reckon. Um, yes, they are. Yeah, um, they're really coming through. It's all co also all community based, whereas Unity is more corporate owned. I think. Yeah, but there's still a really good community around. Um... Yeah. It just has different. It has a different flavor to it though. Um, okay, so. It's now saying, uh, okay, this is fine. So, all right, what I want to do here actually is just to make sure I can see the changes. I just want to change it. So, alrighty, so if we move up, uh, uh, equals zero. Okay, um, I wanted to change it to idle up if it was moving. So, um, if this doesn't match, which is what should be happening here, um see I'm doing this twice as well, so this is this is a, this might be an issue. Um, um I, I want to separate the animation from the movement, if that makes sense, because they're separate mechanics. You know? Yeah, yeah, well obviously. Yeah. Um you, you do you move, how do you move your character by transform, or will you be moving it by, uh, uh, what do you call it, physics, or...? It, um, I think it's just through transform, according to how this yeah. is set up here. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's just WASD keys, it's just automatically... It's through the rigid body, basically, through the rigid body RB. Um, so maybe, oh, hang on, rigid body is physics, isn't it? Um, uh, yes, but if you're doing any ray casting or anything like that, it's going to be necessary. It's not going to be... I'm not going to be doing any ray casting. It's top down. Um, at least at the moment, anyway. What about... Um, uh, do you need triggers or anything like that? So, like, box colliders or anything like that? Because you'll need it then. Uh, yeah, there will be box colliders, but we're not adding that yes. just yet. So, yeah, a yeah. rigid body is... Still needed. Um, but... Is that... I know, I hate... I hate it. You have to do so much extra scripting and make your own physics system <laughs> if you want to get rid of it. Um, well, I don't really necessarily want to get rid of it. Um, the only thing I'm, I'm just trying to work out at the moment is why the... Um, so the move X and Y. See, at the moment, so in move, we're getting move X and Y, so we're getting the input axis raw um, on horizontal and vertical. And we're doing the same thing again for the animation state. So there's two different functions here that are running. So every, every, every time it ticks... So move runs and then animate runs. So um, for each of these, we're also, we're checking, well, I'm getting the input raw for both of them. Um, and I'm then checking it uh, for the animation. I'm checking it for the for the move. I'm actually checking it to move the character. This seems to be working fine. Um, but this is not necessarily working as expected. So, um, even though move X and move Y may not necessarily be meeting here, the else is not working. The idle up is not working. Um, so... That's sorry, if you, if you can hear my kids, just let me know. I should be muted most of the time, though. No, that's right. Um, <laughs> so basically, you just want it to... When, when rotation is uh, in the Z axis up, uh, you want it like zero. Because you got X and Y. Um, yeah, so X and Y, I'm basing it off X and Y. Um, are you doing a little bit of math to get your um, uh, degrees out of that? Or are you just kind of feeding it straight into it? Well, I'm trying to... Well, not necessarily degrees, but... Um, it's still complaining about which animator there. 
It is, but uh, let me just check. It's wanting to access. Um, so what's it saying here? Pause. Oh, whoops. Oh, one. This way. Okay, so missing component exception. There is no animator attached to the player game object, but a script is trying to access it. Yeah, uh, see, um, okay. so, so jump on your, your game object for your player, and we'll um, go through that. Oh, okay, it, yep, yep, um, okay, that's, that's, um, uh, <laughs> okay. So your player's there, and then the animator's in the child, yeah. So you'll need to, when you're referencing it, you'll have to say, get it from the child. Oh, well, I just added it to the, um, player. Oh, is that bad? Yeah, it's because it's because your script was on the player, and then the animator was on the child of the object. So they're two different game objects. Mm. So just because it's a child doesn't mean it's the same game object. It so treats them differently. Does the sprite need the animator or not? The sprite will need the animator, yes. But normally you'd put it all on like the one game object if you're doing it that way. But it doesn't matter. You totally can do it this way. Okay, so. This is the this is what I am a bit confused about because I have when the way I've initially learnt it was to do like a um, an empty game object for the player and then have every every other object that's relevant to the player inside as a child kind of thing. Yeah, which is a completely relevant way to do it. It um, depends on how messy you want to make it. Um, but that's well, not messy. It's just different work workloads. So right? if I just have it as one object instead, it's not going to matter necessarily. No, no, not at all. It's just that you'll be scrolling up and down in your inspector a lot. Um, it sounds like a new I like to do it. Yeah, I like to do it all in one object, uh, just for clutter reasons. I hate clutter in my um, left hand inspector. I don't really care about it. The hierarchy, right hand yeah. <laughs> yes, the yeah. hierarchy. That, okay. um, it all comes down to personal preference, really. There is very limited times that it will cause a problem. Say, for instance, that you have a sprite renderer and a canvas renderer or something, I think, on the same one. I'm not sure. That might cause a problem. Or or an image and text. I know they are incompatible if they're on the same thing because the same renderer will try to do both. Um, okay. I might I might just keep it simple and just yeah. put it as one object. It's completely... Um, I mean, yeah, either way. Just All reference right. a child or... The problem um, when you're referencing child is it'll always reference like the first thing as well which is kind of annoying yeah. so you want to merge those two yeah it'll um i do how do you is there a way to merge it <laughs> yeah so go to that go over to your uh on on the right hand side inspector so go to your sprite uh yep and then on the right hand side of the inspector you see the three little dots on the right hand side of the part like the animator or the sprite renderer uh whatever part you want to con uh copy mm -hmm. um so down there so yeah then say copy component and then you can go over to your player and paste component so you can do that oh okay um okay um also, oh my god, I think the only difference here is if I just do this, it's gonna be a real, this is gonna be a little weird. <laughs> but uh, if I just add the rigid body component to this one on 2D and then uh -huh. um, move this up, can I do that? Can I move it up? No. Wow, well, can't. Oh yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Rigid body, sprite renderer. Oh, well. I want sprite renderer up, actually. There, but then animator. Okay, literally, that's literally how I had it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, God, it's a bit of a merry-go-round experience with me. Hang on. Uh, it's alright, once you do it the first time, you'll easy next time. It's Yeah, I'm still trying to get used to how everything goes together. <laughs> Weird. Um, okay, so I want the player script associated here. Yep. Um, yep. And that's a material. Um, so I think what we'll do is, and we'll just leave that as it is. That's pretty pretty much everything here is what I, what I had 
uh, in player anyway, because player was just a, all I did with player was just add the player script and the rigid body. So I can just, I can uh, theoretically just delete this. Yeah, so as long as yeah, you've got the animator and, and then, the rigid body, player script, you could yeah. change this to player. And now, um, oddly, because I've been making all these crazy changes, um, this is technically, I'm just going to delete this prefab. Yeah, prefabs are funny. Sometimes I like to just delete prefabs and uh, chuck the new one in because yeah, yeah. they can they can lick themselves up pretty funnily. <laughs> yeah, so if I, yeah, I, that was the old way of, that, that prefab that I had in there before was the old prefab way of doing it, which was with the uh, object, parent object, child object kind of business. Um, but now it's which just is one a good object. way to do it. This, is, just... this is now, this is the second time I've gone back to just having the one object because... <laughs> <laughs> there's so many people like you watch a video and they're sort of like oh um do it this way you know parent child and it's then, up to you though like the person goes oh just do it this way add, add one object and that's like <laughs> it's up to you like it's yeah. a viable way no matter what you do um as long as it works it works man i'm not a stifler for like unless you're in a team of people i mm. don't generally follow rules <laughs> uh, yeah i mean if this does not really until it just becomes a problem i'll just keep it this way and i think it's going to be easier to do it this way anyway honestly it won't become a problem um, um much like yeah because you, you can close those tabs on the right as well so it just cleans it up um on the right oh like here so the little the little arrows on the on like the rigid body and stuff like that just to to drop oh, them down yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, do we need to it, access it again clean it, yeah clean that up nice. yeah now it should um now it should be referencing your animator just fine okay um nice all right so now um if we just refresh this i'm just gonna clear the console here and go okay well the play i don't know if the play should be above the uh main camera <laughs> um we'll get back to that okay so i'm now <laughs> Oh, I know, I know what's going on. I know what's going on. Okay. Um, we need to remove gravity. <laughs> Always, we're, we're sliding down forever. <laughs> um, you can change change the rigid body to kinematic if you're not going to be using um, like uh, gravity and stuff. Because you can still change everything from script in kinematic. Oh. Um, so that's a body type. Oh, sorry. What, what, what's the difference here? So in kinematic, um, mm -hmm. you're using a lot less uh, computational power, sort of thing. You know, let you're not actually making physical uh, contact with anything. You can still read contacts. So um, right. if there's a collision box, you just got to say, uh, if you hit a collision box, uh, you know, stop moving. <laughs> um, otherwise, it'll just be doing a lot of of its own physics calculations constantly. Oh, okay. So, um, so if I go dynamic, it automatically calculates that if something else is a solid, it will run into it. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. right. Just have to put, just make your um, gravity zero. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that might actually be useful for me because we're going to have a lot of in this game when we get to it. It's going to have to, we're going to have people coming out of buildings, um, which means that we're going to spawn a person like inside the building and then walk them out. Yeah. Uh, those buildings yeah, are effectively going to have a collision box, so. Uh, while they're yeah. spawning, we can tell it just to ignore the collision exactly. um, until it's out of that state of like spawning, in a sense. Um, yeah, so it'd be really easy doing that. You could basically say on trigger exit, uh, yeah. then do it because there is there's even a call for that that'll okay. only happen. So, so you don't have to even check it on, on yeah. update or anything. Yeah, just, so uh, and on... there's going to be a lot of characters going in and out of buildings as well. So I'm going to be getting them yeah. to walk into the building, and they're effectively going to be overlapping that collision box. Um, yeah. So, whereas my player, for example, may not necessarily be able to go into certain buildings. Um, yeah, which is definitely something you want to be doing with kinematic. Yeah. If you want to bounce a ball around a room, then dynamic. But yeah, if you want to be dynamically going through things and making them triggers, and yeah, definitely kinematic. It also is way better on performance. <laughs> yeah, that, which is good, because um, otherwise it's going to be checking for collision all the time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, something in again my, like this can be. Yeah. <laughs> in my in my game at the moment, I have um, about a thousand uh, unique AI agents that are doing fucking crazy. Sorry, <laughs> doing lots of um, mm. 
calculations constantly. I, I managed to get it to a thousand. Um, but yeah, with, with dynamic on, it's like 50. <laughs> yeah, right. Neat. Jeez, okay. Um, so, all right, well, I'm going to keep Z as it is because we don't want the player rotating in this particular case. Um, uh, for the freezes of the rotation here. Um, I'm going to save it as it is because I'm going to forget and you must exit. Oh, whoops. <laughs> um, save, okay. So, uh, okay, so this is actually really good. So, so I'll just demonstrate um, what's happening here at the moment. So, um, yeah, that's good. I have, since I fixed those up, I'm just going to rerun the game. Um, oh, you know what? I had the game running while it was while I was making all those changes, so it just re it just reset everything. So I'm just going to change that all back to that. Uh, compression. Oh no, there is no compression. What the hell? Uh, there's nothing else I need to change. Okay, so we'll just um we'll just do just do that, and then we'll just rerun that. We'll just kind of check that. I think when I was testing it before with the uh, physics options a bit out of whack there it was actually working um, so it is picking up okay so all right so the only issue here is okay so the animations are working so it's changing the animation this is really good uh, but we're not moving so why aren't we moving let's have a look um, and we in moving oh and movement speed zero that might be a that might be why let me make it a hundred what's your constraints like what, what's your size here that's gonna be a lot won't it what a uh, hundred what well, like what are we talking hundred units 100 uh, pixels, time I like, think uh, Delta time or uh, Delta time, yeah. So I'll bring up the code again. Um, so we've uh, got, yeah. Um, so rigid body velocity equals movement input multiplied by movement speed, um, which will be divided by the delta time. So apparently that makes things move every pixel, if I'm correct there. So what we're looking at there is pixels, I think. Um, did I say divided by? Multiplied by. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'd be... So rigid body velocity, so the velocity of the rigid body, um, is going to be equal to the movement input. Um, so the movement input will be the new vector, whether that's, um, you know, minus one or plus one on y, x and y. Um, uh, depending on the direction. And then we multiply by delta time. I think that's every pixel per second, if I'm correct. Yeah, so uh, um, like, like I had before, when you were using transform or, or, or uh, physics, you're using physics. Because um, you're using oh, okay. the- Oh, I am using physics, yeah. okay. Um, that's all right. Yeah, Alrighty. So effectively, if I want to double the speed, I can just- So what's it measuring then? It's, it is pixels then? Um, because you're using the physics thing, I'm not sure. Normally, you'd, you'd have to check out the the scale. Uh, would it be oh, the based on scale? zero. Yeah, okay. Mm. Um, we'll come back to that, I guess. But um, I mean, it's working as intended. I, th I think yes. that's. If it's working as intended, don't change it until you need to. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But the animations are working. I just need to fix up all the animations. So let's do that. So we've got all of our animations are going to be going to be here. And anim animation management. Um, so this is similar to how I've coded it in Phaser as well. Um, so I've got. Um, I'm sure if you saw my game on After Realms with the um, playtest release, have you checked that out? No, I might have to have a look. Oh, okay. I'll I'll link it in the chat again for everyone else. Yeah, yeah, I'll have a look. Um, so this is the um this is the after. So basically, what I'm doing is um I'm I've got so that that's what you see on that on that on that game job page there, uh, which uh -huh. is playable. That's a play test for the game. So I coded all of that in uh, JavaScript using the Phaser three framework. Yeah. Um, and that's all pure code. Um, which is why I was so heavy on trying to do everything in code. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So um, I know the feeling, and I didn't want to go into um, animator hell either. So <laughs> um, with with how people can do it with um, because there's going to be a lot of animations for different things and left and right and all that kind of stuff. So um, basically, uh, yeah, that's all pure code. Now the thing is uh, with that is because um, of the complexity of the game design, right? Um, the, the plan that we have for this game is uh, it's going to be a lot more complicated. It's not going to be something that's going to be a small game. It is going to be quite a complicated game. We're talking about, you know, civilization management, um, you know, massing armies. There's going to be different systems oh, really? for different things. There's two different... Uh, there's actually three different... Uh, well, I think there will be end up three different races, three different, um, to, you know, to, to play with this. Um, so you'll have the light, the dark, the clan version of that. So it's going to Getting be... Getting me all excited. I like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, there's going to be a number of units. And the, um, so there's going to be, like, you know, worker units, like peasants. Um, oh, there's building and everything. They're going to be doing a whole stack. Yeah, they're going, to, they're, they're going to have a whole stack of functions. So it's going to be like oh. a civilization you rule over yourself. Basically, yeah. people that are just created from your own magic. Um, effectively, as well, you've also got spells that you can fire yourself. Um, you know, you'll be able to, in terms of the peasants, you've got to keep them happy so they, they don't, you know, betray you and everything. And someone's just doing a burnout up my street rude i reckon uh <laughs> it wasn't that loud i don't know if anyone's heard that why won't you die spider <laughs> <laughs> um, the spider not die <laughs> he just revved the car up the street he was going oh. sl really slow actually but anyway Poor fella. oh there we go i finally killed the spider oh you fi you're actually <laughs> yeah <laughs> i just realized what you were doing um yeah, so there's going to be a number of things there. Um, there's going to be shops. There's going to be a, a, like a little economy business going on there where people will visit shops to, you know, grab, you know, resources and goods for themselves for home and then yeah. they go home with it. So there's um, there's going to be a day cycle as well. So throughout the day, you know, business will occur. Um, there's going to be a tax collector on the next day from, from the previous day to go and collect the earnings so that, you know, you can make money from, um, yeah. you know, what they earn as well. You can set That's the tax. Cool. There's also going to be um, gold mines where you can set workers to mine from a gold mine and get gold that way, and then get um, you know wood. For, uh, you can also cut down trees and get wood from them. So a little bit like Warcraft there, um, yeah. Where you can do that, uh, and they're going to be used for you know for peasants to um, do buildings. You can zone out to you know shops and houses and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> So it's so, going to be um, a little complicated. <laughs> your, your little um, dude, you, you made this sprite, but the spiders, they look, they're a different, uh, different sprite from someone else or? Uh, yeah. So basically the, the, the way that I've done everything with After Realms here, and I'm just going to bring it up on screen so people can see what I'm talking about. Um, yeah. so basically, um, the spiders are going to be, uh, they're basically just a different class. So I, I based it off the player class. So the player class is like the model for the spiders. The only difference is, is that, of course, they run, they're kind of run by the AI. So I just, I, I was simply just, everything's, they're, they're on timers. So certain timers uh, will determine which direction they go in for X amount of time. There's also, um, you can't really see it, but there's a line of sight uh, in front of the spider that is checking for enemies. Um, and what do you use for your line of sight? Some sort of collision box or? a? Um, it's actually a geometry object. It's a line. Yeah, so is, uh, basically what you call it in Unity is a raycast, is as far as I... Oh, I don't know yet. <laughs> I yeah. suppose it would be raycast, because raycast seems to be the thing that you want to um, use to um, detect if there's anything in front of an object or below an object or something like that. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah. Yeah, so are you drawing a cone or are you just doing a single line? Well, because I didn't know, I didn't know exactly how to do a cone in the uh, geometry... Physics, oh, physics. Yep. Sorry, the geometry object with phaser. I simply have one line that's constantly scanning in front of it. Um, yeah. So does the line move degrees, or does it? it? It yeah. So the end. Oh, it does look left and right, or yeah, does so it only look forward? It looks left and right, and it's really quick. Very so, good. Very very good. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So it does that, and it's and it's checking constantly for colli collisions with um the player or something that it can attack effectively. Um, yeah. And um, the, the, the trees as well. So the, the, the spiders can't actually see through a tree. So if you're on the opposite side so, and the, with a tree, the, the, yeah, and it, it won't be able to see the, the player or something like that. It's got, you know, those sorts of things. Um, but um, 
Uh, yeah, so it's it, that's actually quite a complex <laughs> uh, bit of uh, mechanic I've actually added to to the spider there. It took me a long time to get that done. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, Ray, Ray, just chuck it in a Raycast, yeah, we'll, we'll pretty much help with that. Yeah, um, so Unity. I think that's, yeah, pretty, that should be fairly easy to do with, um, with Unity there. Um, we've got some, so if you go... Um, you, you may have realized there's you know, these three spells there. Um, I think you just you worked out how uh -huh. to shoot them with a the, with a fireball. So we got. Some... I was trying to figure out how to attack, and then I was like, "What's this down here?" <laughs> oh, okay, so um, pretty intuitive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, clicking on the spells will will basically put them into the slot, so you can use them with the mouse. Basically, you aim aim with the mouse and shoot with the with the mouse clicks. Um, yeah. And um, with that, uh, so there's going to be some bullets there. So um, I think that should be pretty straightforward, to be honest. Um, but um, then we've got. Uh, a castle which is a little bit more complicated so basically the castle is a spell uh, but you've also got a blueprint because you basically it's a building so you'll you'll have your yeah able I, to, I chucked one of those down yeah you can use a um, build a castle so there's a, there's a few different things going on there um, simply the uh, I've, <laughs> I've got a number of things there's a box that's actually waiting for the spell to land where the, exactly where the castle needs to go so once that once it collides with that then it initiates that it, then it basically disables the bullet um, it puts it into the um, <clears throat> excuse me it puts it into the uh, to the object pool and um, and then it starts the, the the construction process which is just basically a stack of particles for the dust and then we have a mask that um, so we have the, the castle actually effectively will start about here. Um, if yeah. you're looking at my stream there, we'll start about here, we'll actually appear here, but I've got a mask over like this area here. So the for the for the um for the castle it can't be seen until it goes like Right, that's actually pretty smart. So I like that got idea. This, yeah, it's coming out of the ground kind of effect. Um and then it, that's why that's how it kind of pops out. Um, so effectively we've just got this mask there. So the castle can't be seen unless it's within this mask area. Um so that's that. Um and then you know it's just simply it's just simply that, which I think is pretty cool. I don't know how exactly I'm going to achieve that with Unity. I'm hoping that's going yeah, to be well, easy. No, that's a really good idea because I need to implement the exact same thing into my game at the moment. Mm. Um, you might actually like my style of game as well because I'm doing a very similar uh, view as yours. Um, and I've got an mm. egg and it needs to hatch a warrior or something or other. Oh. Um, and I would like it to do exactly what you've done where. It would kind of emerge out of the egg and not just show up behind the egg. <laughs> oh, okay, interesting. Yep. So masking is going to be something I should look into as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are things you can do with animation as well. So, like, I could get my graphics design to probably whip up something that does all this for me. You know. Oh um, yeah, I know what you mean. But, but that's animation it's... takes a lot of time. When yeah. if you could just chuck a mask in, that's going to be a lot quicker. Oh yeah, if you could chuck a mask I... in, and you, 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 the graphics design doesn't have to do anything else apart from just design the. The um the, yeah. uh, the the building or whatever it is the egg yeah um so I don't want to have to do that so <laughs> <laughs> I know a graphic designer wouldn't yeah see exactly. I do all my own I, I've got a decent sized team of uh, people that just hobby workers um mm. but um I'm pretty much done all the stuff myself yeah got got one dude Dan he's really good at art though oh neat well yeah Jalal Gusta he uh, when he had better internet he'd probably be here watching this actually so. Kind of feel sorry for him in that regard at the moment. Um, but um, yeah, he designed all the graphics for After Arms at the moment, um, and he, we've got some pretty good re um, we've got some pretty good responses from the community based on the graphics so far. So uh, we'll probably continue to run it uh, with this with this kind of line. Um, but yeah, it's um, that that's just a few things, and of course, like there's just concepts where you die and you know you can respawn your castle, and there's a few other things there. So, effectively speaking, that yeah, this game is going to be you know pretty complicated, um, and so you know I need a easier way to design it because this took um, this play test uh, took six months for me to actually complete. Um, you know the uh just in terms of being out just having like, it took me six months because you know i haven't been able to work on it full time if i worked on it full time maybe three months yeah yeah um just just considering as well that you know a lot of the, a lot of the features and stuff that i that i've put in here the, the more complicated ones that have taken me some time to do um have uh you know about 50 percent of my time has been researching um yes that's what's going to happen when you're um starting off yeah um uh, that's for sure. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's the sort of thing. Um, I feel I may have, I mean, I've got to learn some things about Unity. There's certainly things that I'm 
still learning like today or watching videos and whatnot but the um you know once i once i get it, it should be good um so we ended up figuring out <laughs> how to do animation state um very good yes it is very good so the, the video was great <laughs> except for the fact that the the core function that we needed to know how to actually do was right here um <laughs> We can't just put in a, a, a function and pretend that it automatically exists. Um, but yeah, it, it's good that he provided the files because otherwise we would have um, we would have definitely been more stuck here. Um, so in this particular case, uh, so move X and move Y. At the moment, if we have a look, we are only getting the um, up and down movement happening here, which is fine. So all I need to do. Um, it's got down, this is cool. Um, I've also got, there's a couple of things that uh, animation management actually needs here. We need to track the direction of where the player is facing. Um, so I'm probably gonna check, uh, just trying to think. <laughs> how did I, how I did that with uh, with Phaser? I'll probably end up going back to that code on stream here and having a look at that. Um, it's not we talking just like, uh, what rotation you're looking change the animation state to that well yeah basically like, like if he's facing if he's moving down we've got and and you stop moving he just we just want to keep the dude facing down um yeah so we need to check what direction he's kind of going in um and then just change him to the idle state of that of that walk or whatever it is um, so I've got idle now, so pretty much all the all the animations are here. So I've got idle, walk, and the casting. So walk, uh, if we change to a walk animation, then we should easily just change to an idle animation because they're all they're all named the same um, after the underscore. Um, it's before the underscore that's different. Um, so I need to work out how to do that again, I guess. Um, maybe not all over again. Um, but let me just see what we can actually, we'll get the direction, we'll get the walking direction happening. So if we've got, um, we'll do idle there, this is fine. So else, blah, okay, so we need an if statement here. Um, so we'll go move, if it's uh, one, on the Y, on the X rather, um, and it's move y equals zero. So that's if he's um, going, if I'm right, that's right. Um, so this would be walk right. I just want to check to see if that's right because <laughs> look, now it looks right to me. Positive should be to your right when you're doing a top-down perspective, and then negative to be to your left. You'll be left, yeah. And if I keep the white zero, then it should simply be, yep. Yeah. Well, there we go. So he's walking. He's walking yep. right. So fantastic. Okay, he's walking backwards now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so. Alrighty, so that, that that's good. Um, so else if hmm. just in your opinion too, like I mean, it probably doesn't matter again so much because it's only a small amount of yeah. memory. But um, else if and if I think for um, for J my JavaScript project, I just put if in there. I don't think it really matters. It's just that it would just simply have to check all of these before it gets to one of them. If I'm right. Yeah. So what you could do. Let me let me think about it if you really wanted to make it more efficient, but this is this is one player that you're doing it on, so. Yeah. yeah it's not like you're running this script for like 200 agents. I could this be, is gonna be, that's the trouble. So like if, um, uh, yeah. But, it, so you're gonna be using these type of controls for, right, I see what you're saying. Well, well, it, like for the AI, I'm assuming that we would move them in a similar fashion. Um, so we just trigger you, this you differently, could, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, you could break it down like this. You could have um, if your uh, you could have two if statements for starters, uh, both of them saying say 
One is if your Y is positive, go into this one. If your Y is negative, go into the other one. And then you have another if statement saying if your X is negative, go into that one, go into this one. So you've only got two if statements that it has to check each time before it starts going down the right rabbit hole. Right. Um, if Do you know what I mean? Uh, I... Otherwise, I'll write it in chat. <laughs> Uh, I'd have to see so, it. I think I'd understand this. Um, if I'll make it like real layman, if up. Ah, oh, fuck! It didn't. I'm, I'm so used to being able to press enter. <laughs> um, you could try. Ah! <laughs> if up. You know what? No, I'm going to write this in my freaking script, and then I'm sorry if I, I'm. <laughs> Probably not to make any sort of bad words. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> I, I do a bit of streaming myself, but <laughs> I think um, I mean we're probably going a bit beyond the player at this point. Um, it's good to think of uh, scripts that will be multi-purpose. Mm. Like, it would be multi-purpose, effectively. It'd just be a, bit, a little bit long. Basically, all we're doing is um, we're checking to see which direction they're going into. Um, yeah. Now, I did actually have an efficient way of doing this in JavaScript. I'm wondering if we can do it in C Sharp, actually. I'm just trying to find it. Um, that would be in my original folder of After Arms. So I'm just double checking it. Here it is. Let's just... Um, uh, let's open it this up. Is, this would be the... Hopefully it opens in a separate window because I really don't want to open it. <laughs> oh, here it is. Um. So, player? Um. Oh, hang on. Yeah, we did do great timer. I just need to find out which, which function it was. This is the original code for After Arms. Um, so that would um, break it up into a t only two checks per per time, but um, right. You could also make uh, an event callback or something. Um, I thought about a switch, but I don't know if switches actually... Switches uh, are in C Sharp too, aren't they? A switch? Like a like a boolean or...? Switch statement. Um, like, is it, is it a, like a, a 1 or a 0? Is that kind of the same thing? I mean, that'd just be a boolean. Um, it's more like a... Uh, I don't know. It's here. So, like, switch slot... You know, case one, case two, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but probably not. <laughs> um, just checking where is this? Is this in somewhere? Plan to. Um, I think it's in my um, monster code actually, which is a bit different. Yeah. Yeah, monster because it's all that's we're talking. I think a bit more AI here. Um, but uh, direction. That's regeneration. I mean. Direction for your AI, AI, just can't you change the animation directly in its movement script? So then if it decides to move down, just tell it to change its animation state to moving down as well. Effectively. Um, but like, it There's does no have its to... own management system. But yeah, effectively, yeah, yeah. Like it would call a function that does that. Um, so this is current direction. Oh, that's, that's um, delay. Uh, a bit weird. Oh yeah, I created a delay, didn't I? Oh, that was because of diagonal movement. I created a diagonal movement um thing. <laughs> so basically, this is it here. So up and down, I had this code for. So basically, I had all these, I had all these um uh, booleans I put together. So uh, if you're moving down, moving left, moving up. Um, and how we work that out is if the cursor is down and the velocity is, you know, X amount of value, uh, we set it, we set a boolean, same sort of thing, you know, for the way back. Um, 
and there's just switches from there in terms of animation management. So we move the character like so. Um, but C sharp, we've done this a little differently, which is fine. Um, so animation management, we just check which direction switches are on, and then we simply change the animation uh, based on the switches that are on. Um, or that are off um, as well. So uh, left and right, diagonal down, all that kind of stuff. Um, so for uh, C sharp though, we can do a similar thing. So we don't have to actually do boolean switches for that. I believe we can just do and just check to see if the um, you know what direction you're going for between the move and move X and move Y part. Uh, your example could be interesting as well, DFB. Um, that's the that's what I'm using. I'm I'm being, I'm being pretty cheeky. I'm only using one animation in mine at the moment. Uh, but I'm just yeah. I'm just flipping the scale. <laughs> I, I kind of like your if if plus Y if plus X kind of system. Yeah, so you just embed them in each other. Yeah. So. It'll check if your y if your y is positive, then it's it'll go into iterating its x. Um, but if it's not positive, don't even check. Just go straight to negative y. Um, I guess it doesn't actually matter, but it, that's like if you're trying to be super pedantic about performance, though. Um, A lot of, yeah, programming. How, how, how many um. How many agents did you want in your armies? Like you, you, you wanted around 100, 200? Oh, it's, there's no specific set value at this point. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, cause I started wanting like a thousand, 2000 agents, um, in my, like, cause I'm, I'm doing a bug game, like an evolution bug game. Yeah. Um, but as development has been progressing, I've set a population limit of 200, um, oh just because performance because i want enemies and stuff as well I, you know mm. um yeah it's it, it's really handy to have that scope yeah it's um yeah i, I think oh we could create it as we go along i i don't have a, a limit but i don't want it to impact performance either so if yes, I find performance that, is i have yeah, to do big. some testing but basically um if i find that the game is getting slow because you know, one person's got like a hundred units and the other one's only got 50 or whatever. So we're doing multiplayer or? Possibly. Yeah, well this, this game's planned for, uh, it's planned to have a multiplayer. Uh, we're planning to do like a multiplayer version of the game, I should say. Um, so yeah, you'll definitely have to start from scratch if you want to do multiplayer because I'm currently, <laughs> multiplayer works yeah, I'm currently making very single player. I'm doing single player first. Yeah. And then yeah. I'm going to come back and yeah, gonna start again for multiplayer, basically. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, it's very different. Because basically you got to tell a server, like, to do everything. And yeah. the player's end is more or less just telling the server that you want to do things. Yeah. So there's um, going to be a lot of, there's going to be a lot of structural differences. I'm not going to be converting or trying to convert a single player game into a multiplayer game. I'm simply, like, when I get to doing yeah. multiplayer, it's, it is just going to be... Okay, we'll start again with all the assets. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, that's exactly what I wanted to as well. Well, yeah, yeah, that's probably the best way to, to do that. Um, but I want to get the single player out first because I know it's easier to make a single player game. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> yeah. It is a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. Multiplayer so, games suck. <laughs> yeah. Um, fuck to make. They're great to play. Great play. Great. great uh, well, they're great way to better to play, but yeah. they suck <laughs> yeah. to make. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm thinking if I just do, um, uh, so in your example there, Twitch is terrible in terms of formatting the uh, code here, but I think I can get it. I can get it. So if, uh, if I, um, oh, okay. What if we did just do it? What if we did it? Mm, if I continue doing it this way, it'd be okay. Um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, I need to see the formatting of this. It's actually really annoying. Uh, um, if... The plus Y... Yeah, that's that's um, very shorthand, so you'd have to write it out. Probably. Yeah, <laughs> it's just Twitch not, not allowing for 
very formatting. Um, don't expect them to do that necessarily, but they might. <laughs> um, yeah, so. So you're saying like two, like basically we'll, we'll check to see if like X is moving, whether X is moving or not, and go on to the first one kind of thing. Um, yeah, yeah. So you could get just rid yeah. of uh, the and parameter and nest that yeah. inside. Oh, nest inside. Yeah, right. So we just do it there's, like there's, this. Yeah, there's no point in checking both if the first one's going to be false because you want them both true. So. Yeah, okay. Hang on. Um, so if the first one's not true, well then there's no point in following. This is this is this can stay where it is because this is just um, draw idle, um, not moving whatsoever. Then we go moving, um, and we can go. Uh, and um, if you really want to be pedantic about performance, uh, chuck a return in um, each of these as well. Because how how often do you call this function? I guess it would be fairly regular, um, you know. There's, um, yeah, if, if, if you don't chuck a return in each of these um, if statements, it'll go through all the if statements, um, even if oh, they're not true. Okay, yeah, as, I get it. As soon as, you hit, yeah, as soon as you hit the correct if statement, you want to return out of the function because you've already found and done what you want to do. Okay, so you mean like have it like this? Yep. So that that way, if if you're idle, it'll do the idle animation, and it knows it's done it right. So it'll return out of the um, thing, and it won't even bother continuing doing that. It only returns out of like this, doesn't it? Uh huh. Only, only that method. Right. Um, even though I've got nothing else after it. Um, so yep. that's that's checking for other code at this point. If I didn't have return there. So if if returns not there, it'll move down to the next if statement. Oh. Okay. Yep. So if, if it gets into that if statement, so so if movement is zero and zero, it'll change the animation to idle, and then it'll be like, we're good, we can no, we don't have to go down inside this method any further. Right. But if movement wasn't zero zero, it wouldn't even go into that if statement, and it wouldn't see that return statement either. So it would just keep going. So at this point, would I put would I put else if for the rest? Um, not necessarily. Okay, so if this is idle, then it won't check for the rest of here. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Because, okay. Uh, see, this only worked within scope with JavaScript. So return here um, wouldn't necessarily, would, wouldn't, would basically just mean the scope of this it will just return out to, but it will still check this. You know It'll I mean? still, still check the, the zero and zero, because well, I mean, if you if zero and zero is true, there's no point in checking one. Yeah. Um, it's up to you. You don't have to put it there. It's just if you really want to be pedantic about it. I just want to make sure I'm not returning it. So if it is a, if this is, um, if this is true. Um, so if, if idle is true, it, it will doesn't return. go here. Idle is false. <laughs> yeah, if, yeah. If idle is false, it will continue. Mm. It'll continue um, checking. It'll continue checking. Yeah, that's what I was trying to get at. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, because it wouldn't even read this. Um, yeah, if, if idle is true, then it will. It won't bother reading the rest. Yeah, victory 2017 quadra nine. Thank you very much for following. <laughs> <laughs> I like that quadra nine. Yeah, you handled that well. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, appreciate your following. Welcome to the stream. Um, so basically, okay. So for the rest of these, then we could probably just go based on the um, x or y state. X or y state. So in this case, we've got move x equals one, um, and then if the y is zero, then we walk right. Um, and then you could just have an else, and then you don't even have to do an else if it could just be an else, because you know if it's not zero, well then it's going to be one, because you've already checked the idle state, so you're not yeah. idling. How do I format this? Sorry. Um, <laughs> so I, I just go, I just do this. Is that a thing? It's not complaining about it, but. <laughs> you, you can do that, but it'll only do the if for that ex that one line. It'll it'll go, all right, you've, you've already made your statement, then you can move on. But I, I like to put my uh, curly brackets, brackets around things. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, fair enough. 
So this is, this might actually be uh, better for what I'm doing anyway, I think. Um, what am I doing? I've got to fix the uh, indentation with this, this editor. I've changed it and somehow everything's like doing it wrong. See that? It should have pasted yeah. all the same indentation, but it didn't. Um, I'll work that out later. I've, I've literally messed, messed around with my editor enough today. <laughs> <laughs> today so yeah um, <laughs> uh so else okay so if, if movement is y uh if sorry if move y is is one uh well i want to check that don't i i want to go um you need to yeah is one um then we can change at this point if move y was one uh, that would mean that it would be going diagonally right, if I'm correct with that. All right, because you you want to do yeah uh, nine, so eight, eight down eight right would be the animation here for that one. Yeah. Yeah. God, I gotta really think about this. <laughs> I know, right? What do the numbers mean? What's the direction? Oh, upright. Sorry, upright. Because uh, positive and positive. Yep. Is Y positive in the Y is is up in the two D world? Wait a so minute. it'd be upright. How's the canvas red? Is it from the? Is it? From, is does zero zero start from the top left corner? No. Uh, sorry, bottom left. Canvas bottom starts left. from the bottom left. Oh, okay. Really? God, that's weird. Yeah. That's not how. Okay, that's a bit <laughs> backwards to phaser. Oh god, and and even construct in that regard. Um, <laughs> Construct and, and phaser go from the top. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. The top, yeah, the top left corner is the is zero zero, not the bottom left corner. Um, wow. Okay. Okay, I've just got to picture that every single time I think of it. I know. It's, <laughs> it's hard when you come from different places. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. Um, okay, so that that does it for that one. Uh, so then I can go. Can I just get rid of? The, you know, I don't like I don't like a hassle in me like these. Uh, so if move x is minus one, um, then we have a similar situation again. Uh, we we'll copy and paste. Convenience that. Oh, boom. Um, so move y is zero. Uh, hang on, hang on, let me think for a second. Would, would move Y be zero, or would it be you're checking if Y is is negative, or do you not check negatives? Uh, yeah, we need to check negatives, just ignoring this for a moment. Um, <laughs> uh, so we actually forgot to check to see if Y was minus one. Because uh, that would be down, that would be down right, if I'm correct. So if move y equals equals minus one now i know i could probably just put an else in here but i wanted to visually see that we're checking move y yeah 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 which is which is absolutely fine yeah um the worst thing about coding is that if you don't understand what you're coding uh later on <laughs> you're in hell <laughs> so i just don't I always do things like I'm, I'm. If I have to come back to it, I'm going to understand what it's talking about. Damn right. So, if uh, if if move X is going, so we're we're going right. Then um, if we move Y, if we're not moving Y at all, then we're walking right. Fantastic. Um, so you could probably get rid of the first if statement of um, checking zero, if you wanted to, um, because. Oh yeah, true. And we just, could just simply and chuck and just chuck um, change animation state below the both of the else's. So just yeah, chuck that out. Make the first one an if instead of an else if. I mean, it's up to you again. Like it's just being real nitpicky about performance. <laughs> okay, so if I um, were well, you saying I should put an else down here and make it? I mean... No, no, no. Just no, no, no more ifs or else's. Just um, just unnecessary, really. Because you, you know that if if you've already checked one and negative one, and they're both not true, then you know that it is zero. So there's no there's no point in checking if it is zero or not because you know it is. So you just get rid of the F statement. Is that what you're saying? Pretty much. Oh, okay. Because yeah. So effectively, this would override 
the animation. If it is, if one of these are true, then it will just override the animation anyway. Yeah, and then you could go a step further, put return in any of those if statements, um, and put it below, put the change animation state, walk right below those two. But that's up to you again as well. Yeah. Um, because um, at the moment, what it's going to do is it's going to change it to looking right, mm -hmm. and then it's going to change it to looking up or down if one of those is true. What's its problem here? Change animation state. Because you've got else change. if instead of um, just if. Oh, whoops, 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 whoops. Okay. Now it's all right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Funny how it's, oh, I'm complaining about this line. It's actually the problem's here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's real bad, especially when you're debugging. And yeah. it'll be like, this is the line that's the problem. And you're like, no, it is in a different script that the problem is. <laughs> it's the one that's before or, or, or after it. Yeah, it's... What? Don't worry, I've had that problem. Uh. I was... I, I made a queen in my game and it broke everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, so, I had to go to completely different scripts to make the changes. Is this, um, so is this what you mean? Like, if this, and then we just simply change it to this, and then if it's, um... So I wouldn't, I wouldn't put the return at the bottom, I'd put change animation state to walk right at the bottom. Oh, okay. Right. Right. But, um, wouldn't that override the, um, the, these other two? No, because it's returned out of that statement already. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, 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 I get it. Because we've got return there now. Yep. Um. So it would it would really matter if it was at the top or the bottom in that case? Um, no. Except you are saving yourself from changing animations twice. So if it was at the top, oh, I and see. It changed. It definitely yeah. changed it first, and then it, it will definitely it. change it to the right. Yeah, yeah. Um, if it's at the bottom, it'll only change it to the right if the top two statements are false. Oh, okay, yeah. No, that makes perfect sense now. So, um, okay. It so might be a more efficient way to do it, but okay. this way it's only checking two bulls, and then it does, it'll for sure do something. Yeah, uh, that makes perfect so sense. You, so, in this case, you're protected from something being, like, not happening. So, no matter what, you're going to look right. So even in the worst case scenario, if X is true, you'll end up looking right. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's good just to code defensively sometimes as well. Yeah, true. Um, and considering that um, there could be a lot of units, this could really save uh, a fair bit of power, so to speak. Um, like processing power, resources. Yeah. Power, so. Which is what I want. I want an efficient game to be working for people. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to make yeah. them cause them lag and stuff. Um, so move x, uh, move x is going to be uh, minus one. Okay. Uh, and then move y, and then move yeah. Okay. Uh, and you could literally just copy that first lot and just change it all to left. Left. And okay. It'll so this work. is simply left. Okay. Um. I'm going to change the order of this because I'm pedantic as heck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, so it's basically, good to make it readable. I like to basically do left first, so instead of right first. Um, and then up, down. So, yeah. Uh, so we check, we check a minus one first. Uh, in the middle here we'll probably have a, um, uh, actually not in the middle. Still working on your utility game? Yes, Brenner, I am, definitely. Um, we are actually animating the, uh, well, we've got the animations, we're just coding the input, so we're coding the, um, the we've got the player moving, we're just making sure that the animation is going to change with, uh, in accordance with the movement um, we're doing here. Uh, so, I have DFB93 in the call with us. <laughs> One moment. Um, Hello. Which stands for what, by the way? Dale. Dale, really? Is that your name? Yeah, that's my name. <laughs> oh, okay, so Dale. So the rest of it's... Oh, okay, so it's just your uh, Middle name, so Francis, last name Bocart, yeah. Oh, then... okay, right. No worries. Other people like to call it uh, uh, Dale effing Bocart, or Dale <laughs> effing Bucket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Fair enough. No worries. And um, uh, Bucket's your 
name I can see on Discord, so that's uh, yeah. just a nickname, is it? Yeah, well, we got that. Um, my dad actually got named that in the Navy. Because oh. whenever you, when you're in the military, you get the just these nicknames. Of course. And then yeah. that, I went into the Navy, um, and they gave me the same nickname. Funnily enough, so yeah, I think right. somebody knew that my, the recruit Bucket Junior. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Bucket Junior. Yeah. Right. So the recruit um, officer, the the, the dude, the uh, commanding officer, actually knew my dad. <laughs> so yeah, right. he come along, and you're like, "You're Bucket's son," and I'm like, uh, "Yeah." <laughs> He's like, "Hey, Bucket." <laughs> Oh my I'm like, God. all right. Oh, I didn't even give you the junior title. That's interesting. No, just, no, he just a just a bucket, and that's it. <laughs> he, he 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 liked he liked my dad a lot, so he respected me and didn't make me a junior. He's just like, you're worthy of the title. I think. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Oh, sounds awesome. Alrighty, so if we're gonna do um, so we've got left, right, and then we're gonna do up, down. Um, so. Uh, we've got uh, for for move X for up and down that, that that must be zero to start with. So this is where it's going to change. So we've got um, if it's one, then it's up. Is that right? Yeah, one one is positive. So one in the Y is up. Negative one is down. So um, up. so what are we doing here? Are we doing our? Are we looking left or are we idling or are we? We're moving, so um, we've got idling up here, so idling's already done. Um, we're going to find out how to uh, idle in the in the intended direction soon. That's all going to be based on this. Um, but we're just moving, so we're, do, we're doing the moving animation. So we've got um, so the first one we've got um, this is left, um, and then we've got right. And then we have up. And the next one we, we're going to do is down. So, um, left, right, and uh, up. Well, then down. So, 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 so what are we doing? So we're looking at doing everything up. Um, so well, actually... we should already have that encompassed, though, shouldn't we? What do you mean? Um, so. If you're, for example, oh, I looking, see what you're saying. we're already able to look in those directions. Uh, this is true, actually. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> that's right. No, no, no. I, uh, um, that's fine. So, oh yeah. So up, left, down, left, left, up, right, down, right, right. Now this is up to you um, as a designer. Um, how often will your units be idling versus moving? Um, before we get to that, sorry, I think I am missing something. Yeah. Hold that question. Sorry. Um, holding. Yeah. Brain check. <laughs> I actually don't have my, so the up and down animations aren't included here. Okay. So, How do uh, I add that? so walk, um, so up, right, up, left. And then you could just go, um, if move x equals equals zero yeah yeah you you will actually have to uh do a zero won't you yeah so if move x is zero this is up yeah this is what i was gonna do but i think it is a bit different yeah yeah, yeah. no that's so, all right um technically you don't have to actually put the if uh x is zero because we know by this point if we get this far x will be zero uh no not necessarily because Oh, what do you mean? Sorry, can you explain. <laughs> uh, X X mo X will be zero because we've already checked. Um, we've checked if both are zero. We've checked if minus X is zero. We've checked if uh, X is positive. So X for sure will be zero because we've already checked all its other states. So we should just simply call it. Yeah, we could just say uh, move. So we'll, yeah, we need it. We all we need to check is whether it's um if y. We just go if y is positive, then you know that you're looking up. Gosh, okay. Uh, I understand. So it's, it's, but only, just, it's only y that we're checking. I feel like I'm going to confuse myself later if I have to come back to this for some reason. Um, yeah. Well, just add more notes then. That's. I could. 
But I don't think the um, I don't think this is. So yeah, you just so... say move y equals one. That's looking up. Uh, so just. Like honestly, if you can't read your own, like it is absolutely fine to put in as as you would do it. Like I wouldn't change things up that much. Because like you said, it is definitely mostly important to uh be able to read your own scripts. It's just that I think if I come back and I get confused with with the movement, if something's up with that. Yeah. Um, I wanna be able to yeah, like read it. I think that's pretty much the only the only issue I have with that. Um so I think with um Move Y equals equal. Now what am I doing here? What's up? Ah, uh, that'd be my that would be positive. One. Yeah. Yep. So positive. X must not be moving, um, but Y must be. So we simply just translate to walk up. Um, and then uh, we can just do. And then we can just return. And then we can go. Uh, we, do we do a return move? Or do we go down and then just repeat it with a... I think we can just do that. Or do I... Oh, hang on. I'll hop to else it, hey. Um, I'll see if... the other way around so if we are going down then we walk down That's so crazy yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so okay so um I think that's alright. Um, so if we have a look at this this um, this animation function here, we've got um, uh, if we're we're getting the which direction the player's moving, uh, we're checking if they are moving if they are not moving on both the Y and the X or the X and the Y are moving, we put them in an idle state. The only thing is with this, what we have to do is determine um, which direction they're facing, which we'll do in a minute, I guess. Um, but for the rest, we've got, um, so we're doing walking, so, walking, I'll put this in, yeah, um, so, uh, left, uh, if the X is not moving, oh, sorry, the, if the X is minus Y, minus 1, then we check the Y, what's, what's the Y doing, uh, and we set the X animation accordingly and we do the same thing again for the other direction um, when it comes to up and down we just simply uh, check make it make it emphatically obvious <laughs> I should say uh, that, that the that move X and what the move X and Y values actually are here um, you know before we set the animation um, and uh, same thing with um, moving down if this is false uh, if this does not run here, then it will simply just run that one. And after everything we, after we change the animation states and pretty much everything, uh, we return out of the um, of that, except for here for some reason. Um, so it's completely unnecessary, but it's um, what I would call defensive coding. Is I would put a default uh, state at the bottom as well. So like, uh, an, uh, 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 idling, looking down like I would put at the very bottom, just in case somehow it gets through all of those and decides that it's... all of them were false. <laughs> well, that's the thing with idling. There's actually idling for eight directions. So we need to implement... Um, we need to implement... Uh, so we have to track which direction the player's going in and what their last yeah. direction actually was. I think we can do that in here if we simply just store that value. Um, you could. In when, when when the animation changes, and then simply just uh, set it to um, change animation state to the value of whatever whatever the you know 
whatever that is. So I'm thinking we could just simply do this. Um, if we go up, um, let's go private. Uh, I suppose I'll have to call it a string. <laughs> See, this would be the handy part if you're using the inspector. At this point, you'd be able to go um, if you were last walking left. The exit condition would be back to idle left. Like, um, uh, that's why that's really, really handy. Sorry, what? The the inspector or the um, Unity's inbuilt animation controller. Right. It is really, really good at doing this stuff that you're doing now. So if you were walking left, the exit condition to walking left is uh, idling left. Right. Um... Whereas now we're going to have to like, I don't know, what are you going to do, set boom? or something? Uh, well, I don't think it's going to be that, that complicated. Um, it, we are just going to create another variable string here called last direction. And we're simply just going to um, set that last direction um, whenever the player actually um, uh, changes uh, like, yep. you know, whatever they, we, 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 yeah, whatever they change, like where they're walking a certain way. Um, we're just going to store that direction in that variable and then we're simply when it comes to here we'll just simply check what that variable is and set the animation to that idle state so if you if you move x and y are going to be zero we just set the so animation to the uh, a, variable name sorry sorry go ahead uh, i was just going to say there is one way you can do like this is fine but um if you were interested there's a thing called an inu um which would work just like this um but be cheaper on the system okay um, I so don't know about any use. You declare it up the top. Um, oh. And you would just give it uh, eight different states. You just say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the inum can only ever be one state at one time. And then, uh, otherwise, just do it the way you're doing it. I'm just letting you know about it. Oh, okay. Um, Use it the lo most logical way that you can think of. But um, You said it's going to be easier on the system if I do it that way, though. Uh, it will be, yeah. It just uses less... Uh, data, but okay. like, like it's probably going to be much. Um, well, again, I'm concerned if, like, I probably am going to have hundreds of units that are probably going to be <laughs> processing all of this. Um, it may or may not impact performance so much, but um, I'd like to just to be careful. Um, that's all. Um, so how do I set this up? <laughs> um, so... I will give you the Unity docs to it. I know you probably don't like the Unity docs, but... Oh, I only that... got frustrated because I wasn't working out what the hell I wanted to work out before, to be honest. Um... So, um, either you can open it up and we can talk through it, or I can just talk to it because I've got it open as well. Okay. Um, I'll learn how to read them, I guess. What's the link for this one? So, it just takes you straight to the API. Oh, sorry, you did it in the Twitch chat. What am I looking at? Okay. Uh, it went... Ah, oh, shit, I used the forum one, not a... The oh. actual... Don't worry, it is still good, though. It's a good example. Oh, is it? Okay. Um... Uh, okay, so we've got, um... So you're using... First thing you need to do is using, uh, unities.collections, or system.collections, sorry. System.collections, okay. Um... Yep. yep. Uh, oh, um... Why don't you just you're already it? using it. Oh wait, no, that's not yours. <laughs> I thought that was yours for a second. Which one? <laughs> you had the you had the forum open, and I just assumed. Oh, I am using so, yeah, of collections. Are well, I using collections? I am using there collections. That was no, okay. I'm just not referencing anything yet with it because it's, it's see it's darker. Um, yes. Yeah. Sorry. So all then right. all you got to do is declare a private enum and then call it something. Oh, okay. So all the possible different variations of that. Okay. Um. So, oh my god, I've got too many windows open here. Oh, there we are. <laughs> oh god. Um, so, private emu. Hang on, how do you do it? Emu? Enum. Enum, sorry, yeah. Damn it. Oh, it is an enum, okay. I, I still don't know. Um, I've heard of enums, but I haven't actually um, used I'm a them yet. Inu. This is the first time. <laughs> emu, he says. Enum. It is an enum, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're freaking me sounds out like, of here. <laughs> sounds like a bird now. Uh, make sure you give it a name as well. Oh, the actual enum. Oh, okay. So uh, it's simply just the enum name. Last enum. Yeah, okay. Uh, so we'll do... I'm going to put this on the other screen because it's freaking me out at the moment. Um, so we've got uh, enum. It is called... 
last direction, I suppose we'll just call it that. Um, yep. I'll get rid of that one. Um, and then, what else do we have? Um, I noticed that the uh, names are not exactly consistent with the camel casing in everything here. So, are they? movement input, yeah, like movement input, for example. Um, oh, okay, your your camel casing isn't consistent. I was going to say that... Um, my camel casing is not consistent. Yeah, yeah so I want to yeah. change that. Uh, to, I want to change movement input to movement input. So change with capital to a small, and I want to replace all of them. Uh, replace all yeah, of them. Uh, yeah, so you know how to do the... Yeah, I just replaced Control. them all. Yeah, I've just replaced them all. Um, so we shouldn't have any issues with that now. Um, but I'm going to have to fix override control. I'll do that later. <laughs> because I've copied somebody else's code that doesn't use yeah. camel casing for their um, C -sharp. I love camel casing. <laughs> I love camel casing, yeah. It's just something that I've always used with uh, Phaser. And, uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so in here, I just put all the possible values for this. Is that right? So all the idle animation uh -huh. names. Okay. So do I do this for... Um, do, I, do I refer to the string here since I've got them stored in this long list of... So, like, string idle down, etc. Um, let's have a look, because you could probably, yeah, you could probably do that, and then um, just cast it into a string. Okay. Um, okay. Am I not doing this right? Or... Let me have a look. Uh, uh, idle up. Yeah. And then comma. I'm compromising all these. That's right, isn't it? Yep. Idle right, um, idle down left, idle up left, idle uh, down right, idle up right, um, and that's it. But this is, it's complaining. What's it complaining about? Uh, you probably have to set it up. Like, um, it's saying that you've got them, but they're not set up. Oh, okay. So what I'll do is I'll just, because I'm doing it before it, um, before I'm setting it up. So we'll copy that and we'll put uh, these down here. Now I shouldn't complain. What? Uh, as in, like, you'll actually have to set the, um, the thing in my booby. Um, so you, you've made the the directory for it, but you'll actually have to set up the the use case for it. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, hang on, um, let me look at the... Um... If, if it's getting annoying, we'll just um, go back to your method. Oh, okay. Uh, not annoying yet. Oh, good. <laughs> um, so, what am I missing out on here? So, I've got... Uh, so, he's got main options extras. I've got just all the names of the animations. Is that wrong? Uh, what do we got here? Let's have a look. Um, where are we looking? Sorry. So I've got, uh, what I've got is the names of the animations uh, via the const strings. Um, he's got main options extras is for him. Um, I don't know what I'm doing wrong with this, Enum. Oh, no, no, no. Main options extras is exactly what you're doing. Like, um, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's just that it's saying that all of those options aren't being used. So, um, you're not actually initializing them anywhere, if you know what I mean. Right. Uh, uh, so, so, Enum actually isn't one. So, um, let me see, because this is... I need the actual docs. Where are have the I, docs for this I stuff? Actually, oh, I did. Oh, that's what it was. Um, Dale, I put this. I, I, I had a, I had a capital E. <laughs> oh, okay. You just. That, right. <laughs> oh my god. I, I'm thinking no. that there was something else wrong, but yeah, no. Yeah, it it's okay. Good. Now I've got all the animations stored into the enum. So that that's correct now, is it? Should be. Okay. If I put this at the top, is it going to complain because I haven't got. No, 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 it should be, it should be at the top. Because that's what, I wanted to put this at the top in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Because this is all just initialising up here, kind of thing. Um, 
But, um, alright, so we've, we've used that. Now, what's this? Uh... last direction I'll, I'll give it an I'll put an E there so E for E none so I, li I like the idea of doing that um, and then we've got okay so how do I implement this do I do um so with the I'm just reading um or I'm here this is good this one actually okay Link it to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Having a look at this. So about halfway down, it has a a nice little thing. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. So I've got a switch. Okay. Is that the so then what we would do? Yeah, the switch would be you would hand in what one of it is. So it's red, blue, yellow. That's what the switch would be. So then we would get that switch from your the the case from the. I'm trying to scroll down in your code. You would get that case, you would set that case from the movements. So you'd go uh, up left, and then you would set uh, your thing to up left, or whatever. So right below that, yep. So up yep. right, you would set um, your enum to up right. Oh, okay, so I just have to refer to the enum then. So last direction yep. dot... Um, so, yeah, last direction uh, equals... I think. Oh, equals, okay. Um, would be walk, would be idle, up, left. Uh, so, last direction, yeah, okay, yep, that's correct. Is that right? Yep, yep. Do I have to refer to the enum? Yeah, I do. No, okay. <laughs> that's right, there we go, yep, you've got it right. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm missing a semicolon at the end. Play the last direction. Oh, I have to go game object. No? Okay, what's it complaining about here? I want something before it. Have you got uh, e, e last direction? Is that what you've named it? E, e last direction. E last direction. E for enum, yeah. Okay. Um, so I thought check. maybe it would be okay if I did that, but it's it's not liking me doing that. I thought maybe I have to... Do I have to refer to the player or the game object? But oh, um, you have to use uh, string. So just put some things around idle up up left uh what do you call them um oh okay I turn it in, turn it into a string <laughs> it is. uh but it's used like a variable what? um i'm so confused that, that should be the way it works um i've stored the actual like maybe store them as strings they are sort of strings. They're sort of const strings. Um, maybe it's because I do have it. I am calling the enum. Uh, this is a wild guess. Oh my god. Probably going to be wrong here. No, it doesn't matter. No, no, no. It's, um, you had it right there. But if I put enum in, it just ah, everything. No, wrong. you don't, don't have to tell it an e, it's an enum. No, because uh, I already know it's an enum, right? Yeah. So how do I refer? How do I refer to this? So it should just be like that, but hmm. player dot e last direction is a type, but is used like a variable. Hmm. Because I've got it here. Am I supposed to have something after private? No. No, 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 no. Um, do I... Should, no, it should be fine. Huh. Public enemy type? No.
Uh huh. <laughs> you find something? No. Um, I just noticed that he that the enum in the uh, enums article uh, is mm -hmm. referring yeah. to. It's giving values to um, each of the items. It's not just referring to them. Mm, uh, well, I've used enums in the past as just like lists. Maybe you could use a hash list then instead. Hash list. We might have to redefine what Accent, they are again. So like, well, no, no. He's got item types. Yeah, it's item types. Uh, it's a type, but it's used like a variable. What the heck? I think just do it the way you planned on doing it, man. I don't think it's going to be that bad on performance. Alrighty. I have to remember what that was now. Uh, <laughs> oh no, that's right. I was going to do it as a um. I was going to do it as a variable. Yeah. I think it's just because I've got it set up like this, and it doesn't like. I'm not sure. Objects, maybe. I've I've, I've only got very limited. Um, understanding of enums, so... Yeah, fair enough. All as right. you can tell, enums. <laughs> that's fine, I think that's fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're gonna call it a string, because this is what this is gonna be. Alright. Uh, it should be... It should be this simple. Yes. Um, it should definitely be this simple. Uh, so we've got... So I'm gonna go... Uh, last direction. Hang on, last direction. So did I put a um? Did I put an S on the end of it? Oh, good heavens, I did too. Last direction is just one. Oh, it is not plural. Um, equals idle up left. Um, yeah, cool. This one I just change it to. Why does it do that? Oh my god. Like I have to go backwards just to use the indentation. Oh wait, I need. To, I can change that. Let me just quickly uh, settings uh, indentation indentation. I'll be back. No worries. So I suppose it's been pressing tab. Okay. Um. Hmm. Paste. What if I did paste? Enable multi-line paste warning. Format on paste controls whether the editor should automatically format the pasted content. A formatter must must be available on the formatter. Be able to format a range document. Let's try doing that. Uh, markdown operational paste links enabled. Auto indent. Uh, the, indent the editor will not insert indentation automatically. Um, the editor will keep the current lines indentation. Oh, that's it there. Okay, format on paste. I'm just gonna. I can't untick that because the only thing I. So keep. Um, that will keep the current lines in dictation. I said full. Yeah, so keep should do it. Uh, Alright, so just. God, this again. Uh, idle. Uh, down left. Down left. Okay, cool. So down left. Uh, this would be. It's just still doing it. What the hell? It shouldn't be this hard. Let's put it to none. See what happens. 
fire. Oh, it's still doing it. What the heck? Wow. Um. Things. Okay, um, full. Okay, uh, I don't know why. It may, is this something I need to change or some modified elsewhere? What's that mean? Can you hear me? Hello, yes, I can. Ah, okay, damn. I tried to mute. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm, um, I'm just gonna jump into another channel real quick. Yeah, um, already. can I mute? I can't mute here though, can I? No, you'll have to probably pop out of this channel. Okay. Uh, if you want to come back, you'll have to let me know directly. <laughs> alright, alright. I won't be too long. No worries. All good, though. Thanks, y'all. Okay. Um, uh, so... Why is the indentation not working here? What if we reset the setting? Modified elsewhere. What does that mean? What's the naming strategy? Okay. That's so weird. I don't know why. I never, it never used to paste it like that. Controls pasting when the line. Count of the paste and that's the cursor count. Each cursor paste. Full text. Wow. Okay, let's just go full text. See what happens. Nope. Nope. That ain't working. Format on paste. Let me try that. Nope. Not doing it for me. Well, what if I did copy? Maybe it's copying because I'm copying the lines or something. Um, copy relative to path separate the path separation character use. Uh, auto. Oh. Uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, copy on selection, controls whether the selected text in the terminal could be, or will be copied to the people, copy in and, uh, copy removing your line. Um. Do not duplicate styles, duplicate properties. Hmm. Alrighty, uh, <laughs> I was pretty certain it was a pasting thing. Modified elsewhere. I would like to know where. It's give, it's like it's giving me a link, but it's not showing me where. Maybe is I wonder if this is an extension. Ah, that'd be interesting. Oop. Oh, what the heck? What is that? Um Um, so, incremental naming, multicursor, paste, format on paste. Uh, I 
Paste actions enabled. Enable disable running edits from extensions on paste. Hmm. Don't know. But let's try it. Nope. How do I not paste the goddamn spaces? Does not so. I don't want insert tab. Oh, you know what? It might actually need. Uh, also modified elsewhere. I'd like to know where. Thank you. Like, like I really want to know. Auto indent. Indent. Controls whether the editor should highlight the active indent guide. Do not highlight the indent. Oh. Why is that? Okay. Um, indentation controls whether the editor should render indent guides. No. Controls the indentation in pixels. Eight. Controls tree indentation. Uh, render. Controls whether the tree should render indent guides also. Indent. Uh, yeah. Lines before the current in uh, Indent should be shown on hover. One style of the internet indent marker. Hmm. Interesting. Active cutter enable active indentation region indicator in the gutter area in addition to normal indentation guides. I don't think so. There's indentation guides. Guides. Dotted. Hmm. after there. Also modified elsewhere. I wish I could I wish I knew what that meant. So where is that? Uh is that text out of our formatting? I'm spending too long on this. I'm gonna give it a rest. Um, okay. Just have to put up with it for now. Okay, idle, up left, down left. Um, we want... Yeah. Copy this word. Copy that. Okay, so this is... Left. And that's it. Uh, down left, up left, yep. So, if moving, I'll uh, do the same thing here. Oh, what? Okay. Um, idle upright. I feel like I could do this easier. I wonder. Um, Hello. Hey, hello. Hi. Sorry, I'm, I didn't get your message. I'm like, oh, but I'm wondering if um, Dale's back. Oh, here he is. Um, <laughs> uh, did you send me something? Did I? I don't know. Oh, because I, I said <laughs> you might have to send me a message directly because yeah. Um, no, I didn't. I didn't but that's okay. I was ready to come back anyhow. <laughs> okay, all good. Uh, so pull me out of my immersion like that. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> oh good. Okay, so um uh so basically 
You know, I'm thinking, um, is there a way to like, oh no, there wouldn't be, never mind. This is the best way. I think this is the most efficient way we can do this at the moment because they are different Have animations. Have checked it works? <laughs> Sorry? Have you checked that it works? Haven't yet. Um, I'm just overthinking shit at the moment. <laughs> um, so this will be, yeah. So we're just finalizing the, the last lot of um, uh, business here. Uh, idle animations. I was trying to fix up the indentation with VS Code, but you don't use VS Code. Um, no, I just use Visual Studio with, yeah. Because I paste, Studio. every time I paste like something, it puts this space in there. I never actually knew that code was a, a different thing. I've seen people use it, and I've always thought it was just a different setup of Visual Studio, and I was just like, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, right. Um, it, you don't have to save in this, it does it automatically, everything you do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which, cool. which can be mostly a good thing and a little bit of a bad thing. <laughs> yes. Um, um, I'm pretty I'm pretty good with my saving and stuff. It's kind of just been in, embedded into my brain. Yes. But I have... But I can't um, tell you. <laughs> typically speaking, you can um, restore from source controls and things like that, which makes things pretty easy that way, but... Um, yeah. I don't have anything connected up for that at the moment. Um, so idle was right. So upright, upright. Ah, uh, right. sorry, one minute. The pacing's now working as I expected now, so that's good. It seems to have taken a while to kick in. So okay, up. Last thing there, up. Down. Alright. Welcome back. Again. See, now it's pasting properly. Bang. Yeah. It pastes it properly. Uh, so if I just... So if I copy this, I go, oh, I want to put this here. It actually indents it properly now. I had this, That's I had the, nice. I had the wrong setting before. It was giving me all these extra spaces. Um, <laughs> I actually had it like that for ages too, because I didn't know how to turn it off until I oh, spend the time to find out how to do it yeah it's worth it um yeah okay so that's now um that's now storing the last direction now if we um if we just double checking everything so we've got uh, up left up left down left down left uh left left and then up right up right uh down right down right 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 up up down down okay so when it comes to here, uh, when we set the animation um, to idle down, uh, what we need to do actually is we need to go um, direction animation, uh, and that's going to equal last direction. Um, I'm going to set it to that, and this is a um, string. Right? So now I can refer to that string here, direction animation. So, if I'm correct with this, when they, when the, when the, um, when the direction is set because of a walk, uh, it will set, it will store automatically the last direction, and then it will, um, and then when it comes to not moving anymore, it will simply go and check what the last direction was, and then set the animation to the correct idle animation. Yeah, that's the, that's the idea. <clears throat> I'm gonna make it a little bit longer because I just want to put idle animation in there. <laughs> I think I think the difference, um, the only difference between that and using uh, enums or, or a hash set would be um, that it uses like singular bits or or um, bytes to to reference each of those instead of a whole string. I think that's literally the only difference. Oh, okay. So it's not like it's a big deal. Okay. It'd be absolutely minuscule by the sense of things if it's if we're, if we're yeah. talking bits here, um, not megabytes or anything. Um, no. Yeah. But or, when, or even kilobytes, or code. even kilobits. Yeah, but if you're running code, um, like every frame, that's that that is a bit. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, if we find that there is a performance issue with this method, we we can always come back to it and, and adjust it. So, so just imagine every single um, calculation in the CPU is is like one bit. Um, mm, yes. So then a whole string can be. You can start to build up. That's all. Yeah. Um, Usually, then it will start to refer to addresses, but then 
but then it's not that bad because the string should just be held in an address with a um uh a, a directory or a what, what do you call it an address so oh you know what i just fine. realized something i'm such an idiot look at this well i, I don't need to um no, you don't actually have to store it. Yeah. You can just use last direction. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm That's saving. Right. I'm already. I'm already in the moment of saving performance right now. Uh, <laughs> this is. I even thought more... you were doing it. Um, like, just what? so it looked clearer to you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Fine. No. 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 I just don't know. Oh, what the heck, man? What am I doing? Uh, <laughs> You're learning. That's good. Yeah. No. Last direction. Yeah. Um. Hey, I might I? even um. I might even change the name. This is what I'll do. I'll change the name. So idle last direction. Um, uh, yeah, that's basically what I'll call it. Which means now there's to... one problem that I've I've seen. Yeah. Um, because you will be using the last direction. As soon as you start the game, you won't have a default last direction. Ah, that's so, a good point. So either either start the game and set it, or yeah. put your idol at the bottom we'll, of your list of yeah we'll um we'll, we'll definitely set that in the code here i think idle last direction is what that needs to change to just yeah just set it to, stuff for that down. Up. um why have i stuffed that up oh i have stuffed it up holy shit <laughs> i accidentally gave it too many now it should be right it's not complaining anywhere good Okay, that's good. So, right, for some reason, I stuffed up. Oh, because I also replaced this one. I'm such a noob. Yeah, okay. that's alright. <laughs> that's all good. Um, <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, how long do you reckon you'll be around for? Because I just got to take the kids' bed. Oh, um, I've been going for a bit. Oh, I will probably go for a little bit longer. Um, I want to get these animations sorted out at least before I pop off tonight. And I did start later this afternoon. I'd like to generally do, if I can, um, seven hours at the moment yeah. because I'm missing out on so many uh, hours of, an, of streaming and uh, development. Um, so we're up to five hours now. Um, we probably won't make it to seven, but we'll probably be something close. Um, it's just so yeah, exciting I'll, I'll... to get into the scripting part of this. <laughs> I know, it's, it's yeah. that's what I love as well, when you finally got scripting to do. Yeah. For some reason I enjoy it most, like I'm doing a lot of um, art at the moment. Yeah. Um, it's fun, but it's not making things happen on the scripting side. That's it's that's on the, the side. Yeah, yeah. So I you... love making something in script and then seeing it work, and it's just like, ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I've tried getting into the um to the art side of uh, development, but it's it is not my area. It really isn't. I'm terrible at doing yeah. everything about it. Um, sometimes, I mean, I think it's just because like. I feel like I'm wasting what I'm good at. Yep. You know? That I know the same. Yeah. Uh, like I'm But I'm as a it? single dev, it's it's honestly the best thing to do is do your own art. It's I know it sucks, but Yeah. Oh. I really like the idea of your game though, so I might <laughs> have to get more involved if you if you like to have more people involved. Oh, definitely. Um I'm, I'm already working on my own project. Uh, I've got some people helping me and we got projects, but I really like the idea of your game, and I'd love to see it accomplished. Yeah, no worries. Well, I really appreciate that. Uh, Dale. Excellent. Um, so there's a bit of there's a few there's a few people that have uh, that are on the are on that same page, and they have helped me out. Typically, um, not necessarily like in an official staff staff capacity, but just as like a community leader more so. That's that's what the community leaders are for yes. in the Discord. Um, so yeah, if we find that you're very consistent with that we'll probably whack you in there and oh, that, that right. means you can come in here without asking for permission <laughs> <laughs> you can just join the stream whenever you want that's all right so enjoy to live or his name's enjoying at the moment where he's he's changed his name as a joke um and oh, he, <laughs> he hasn't changed it back so enjoy to live uh, is enjoying um and that's um that's mo he's helping out with a lot of different things with code in the past particularly javascript because he's a web developer um, yeah, and cool. uh, Wim is that's Adam, and he actually has um, uh, a lot of 
Unity experience as well. Very but cool. He's in a different I might be able to use his <laughs> advice then too. Yeah, he's. Cool. Um, I mean, probably because I've been out of the out of the picture recently a little bit because of work. Um, yeah, though. Um, you know, they probably have uh, have other things on their plate, but yeah, definitely would appreciate more support in that capacity. Um, yeah, if you like Dale, yeah. Um, you could totally uh, jump by and look at what we're working on too, just if you're curious. Of course, yeah. it's a pretty similar um, uh, field that you, we're doing because we're both doing like simulation sort of games, mm. both doing like RTS -y sort of stuff, mm. uh, both pixel art, 2D, that sort of stuff. So yeah, a lot of similarities. Yeah, and they, um, we'll definitely uh, check that out. Okay. Can, can I um, post a GIF in um, in messages? I'm not sure. Yeah, you can. Um... Oh, in, in which one? Sorry. In in, in uh, Twitch messages. Oh, you can't. You can post links to them, but they they won't emulate in the chat. Ah, oh, that's a. That unless sucks. there are like an emoji or something, so they've got to be an emoji and usually or an emote. Uh, and they've got. Yeah, to be I might have to make them everything. into emotes because I, I really like them. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. But you can share if you've got anything. If you're sharing, wanting to share progress, you can do that in the Discord in the sharing game progress area. I think we've had an update from Tiny Tree today on that one. I haven't checked that out yet. <laughs> um, but we will. Uh, he's been doing rule tile sets, so he's doing like automatic generation of um, tile maps and stuff. So auto, like level auto generation. Um, yeah, I like auto generation, but <laughs> it, like I, I played with it myself. But with mm. my current game, it doesn't fit the theme. I don't think I, I like handcrafted things a lot more than I like auto generated stuff. Yeah, right. so uh, fair enough. I just um, find they bring personality that you just can't get from auto generated. If you're doing um, if you're doing like a campaign or something, then things have to be uh, yes. consistent. Yeah, like in terms of the design. Um, and the only difference would be how the player would play that particular level out or whatever. Um, then there's certain things like, you know, if, if I think when variety comes into play more than character, um. In terms of the, uh, in terms of the um, auto generation, yeah. Um, bucket of games, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, definitely keep that. So yeah, ne next gen is like my right hand man basically at the moment. He's really good at his little pixel art things. He doesn't like animation, so I try to learn that. But he's oh, so good okay. at pixel art. Yeah. Right. Nice. Um, cool. And Next Gen's got a huge um, community. He's, he's got a Discord with like 60,000 people or something. So. Oh, really? <laughs> so, um, That's the most I've ever heard of in a Discord. <laughs> so he's like, we'll, we'll finish this and we'll... Because he wants to make some games after we finish the one we're working on at the moment. We're going to do a, a, like a Backrooms. Have you heard of the Backrooms? Um... No, actually, I haven't. Like, real, real, real creepy. It's kind of a horror game. It's, it's taken off at the moment. Um, yeah, right. Have you heard of SCPs? Uh, no. Okay, so imagine... Do you know what a cryptid is, then? <laughs> like, Bigfoot and stuff like that. Uh, no, actually, either. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's think of something. Uh, Nessie. Everybody's heard of the, the Loch Ness Monster. Yes. Okay, so Loch Ness Monster, a made-up monster that lives in the lake, right? Mm. Mythological, that sort of thing. Uh, oh, cryptids. Okay, yeah. A little bit further than that. Um, they're just uh, more things like Yeti and stuff like that. Like you know, the, uh, Bigfoot. You've heard of Bigfoot, surely? Oh, Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, so we go even further than that. SCPs are like right. really dangerous, usually, versions of these and like extra fantasy, like extra out of the ordinary. Um, yeah, and right. then we go even further than that is called the back rooms. Uh, it's like a kind of an alternate d dimension that you can accidentally fall into, oh, okay. and it's uh, super scary and shit like that. But uh, Dan loves it, so I told him that I would help him make a game about it. He's already made all the assets and everything, so <laughs> he's a great storyteller, Dan. So if you need some story made, <laughs> oh right, yeah, definitely. Um... Do you have a backstory to your game? Uh. I'd have to, do, I have to write it yet, but yes, yeah, there is something that I'm thinking of, but it, uh, I haven't put it all together yet. Uh, yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to hear it because I, I do enjoy hearing people's stories. Yeah, uh, I think I, got... I like hearing them from the people more than I like reading them in game. So, I think, yeah. 
definitely want to hear it from you. Yeah, no, definitely. I'll uh, when when I have that ready, I'll certainly be sharing it to everybody. Um, uh, so I've got um I've got a note for I like yes, to credit people. Ever... Um, because... If you ever need my help to remember what it means, <laughs> just yeah. tell me. Yeah, of course. Um, I think this is pretty straightforward, though. What we've done, um, like it's just yeah, it was just a matter of getting it. used to the whole. Um, the biggest problem was this, I reckon, like the entire thing. This. Yeah, nothing. Um, um, yeah. It gets more complicated when you use things like heaps. Have you heard of a heap? No. A heap is like the ultimate form of. Uh, uh, optimization. Oh, okay. um, if you yeah, if you want to look it up. So if you're doing anything like your your own pathfinding, uh, what pathfinding do you use in your game? Any? Uh, there's there's gonna be some pathfinding. I'm gonna need to do that because of um you know people have done it before. I haven't actually done it before. <laughs> yeah, so that. Uh, uh, so yeah, yeah, I'll be able yeah. to help you with that. Only um, in a visual scripting sense, and that was um that that didn't have a lot of um uh, I didn't have yeah, a lot of control over it. Yeah, yeah. Unity doesn't have support unless you want to buy it um, for like a star pathfinding. So yeah, you have to script it yourself. And if you want it to be efficient to do a whole bunch of units, like two hundred units, you definitely need to use heap um, optimization. Right. Um, um. Otherwise, it's yeah, it will just fall are apart. Are there guides out there? I haven't looked it up yet, but are there guides yes, out there? Yes, there's really, really good one. If you want me just to link you like the best guide, uh, in my opinion, <laughs> for like pathfinding. Yes. Because, yeah. yeah. Unity and making it in Unity. Um, this guy, Sebastian Lee, or just Sebastian, um, he is, in my opinion, a coding god. You know what? I'm actually thinking as well. While we're, while we're talking, um, I've been thinking about the complexity of these scripts. Um, like I, I think I am gonna need to um, put different scripts in uh, for different mechanics rather than objects, if that makes sense. Only because, like, I, you know, when I was looking at After Realms, um, the uh, the player file. It's like excellent. So I'm filling your thing up with links. It, um, I should be putting it in your Discord or something. Oh, that's cool. You can do that if you want. Uh, there's a howling chat, by the way, or a stream chat. You can put it in. Uh, whichever one. Uh, oh, but they but yeah. have um, they actually have voice chat now. Uh, for <laughs> for for uh, voice calls. Um, awesome. Well, I'm I'm almost always on my voice chat in my channel. So if you ever just want to talk or anything i'm always around um awesome. usually from like the times like 12 p.m all the way around to like 3 a.m in the morning <laughs> that's like my that's my awake time oh okay yep <laughs> yeah fair enough oh this is perfect this welcome to this video on pathfinding he is a, yeah he so he's a little so this is one of his older videos so he's um He's not as good at making videos back then, but he gets so much better. You should watch all of his content. It, it, he's amazing. All right. Um, okay, so uh, if I was to use multiple scripts, so for this particular one, we've got um, movement. Um, if I was to... Um, there's no reason you need to. Um, I can teach mm. you a little handy thing. If you just go mm. down to above where you've got your movement sectioned off in your script, oh, uh, yeah. you, you can just oh, yeah. write a... Uh, where, uh, so, hashtag region. Oh, okay. Just um, above it. Oh, above it. Okay. Yep. Like that. And then give it a name, any name. Okay. And then, um, at the, uh, bottom, just go, um, hashtag, uh, what is it? End region. Oh, okay. So, all right. Let me so just... All the way at the bottom of the section, just hashtag, uh, end region. Right. Movement. Yeah. And then you can, you can just close that whole section off and it'll still work and everything it's just um oh okay. uh, you don't have to actually write movement there it'll just um it should oh, automatically like down here oh yeah yep. and then region boom movement it's a whole reason that you can just 
Oh, yeah. It, it neatens up your scripts, like, real good. Yeah, that might... Oh, yeah, that's cool. That makes things a lot easier. Is this specifically a C-sharp thing? Um... I think so. <laughs> right. I only do C-sharp. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough, fair enough. But it's super duper helpful. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll, I'll Sometimes just rename some so of messy. Like, yeah, animation management stuff can be changed to... Like, Alright, so I'll be back in like half hour. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. Good. If um, yeah, just uh, send me a message. Probably just in the chat if you don't mind. Uh, just to get my attention if you want to come back in. <laughs> no worries. See ya. See hey, ya, man. Or even better, stay in the call. That's fine. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, okay. So let's have a look. So I've got uh, region mo movement. Uh, we're gonna do. This is um. This is actually not. Not right. Uh, sorting this out a little bit more. Set up. Oops, M region. Cool, that's really neat. Um, and we can do variables. Uh, what I would like to do is bring this up one. Only because uh, that makes it more. There we are. Okay. Cool. This looks like it should work pretty well. We just need to test this now. Uh, I'm just going to open up all the regions for this actually for the moment. Um, yeah, alright, so. animation state okay not bad hmm all right uh, looking pretty good here actually for all, all that let's just make sure we can save it in update the scripts on that one see what making sure that the game works with all these changes Alright. Uh, oh, that didn't 
don't set anything yet. Alright. Testing, testing this, testing this. Okay. Oh, perfection. Perfection. How awesome is this? Let's just make sure as well. Something we need to make sure of. Uh, how fast the player is going, right? Um... It looks pretty normal to me, uh, but just to make sure. Oh, yes, okay, okay. Um, right, I need to add that delay in, that delay timer, because at the moment it's kind of a bit weird. Um, Yeah, I need to add that delay in. The delay timer on the diagonal, um... Uh, let's check. How do we add a timer in script? Um... Unity... Uh, C-sharp timer. Simple timing is the answer to this. Oh, okay. Uh, target time, time dot delta time. Right. Uh, target time. I said. It's great that last sensor is found. Okay, um, this should, this seems like it might be pretty easy to add in here. So what we're going to add in is a little, um, delay. So when the player uses the WASD keys, or the arrow keys, whichever one, uh, and they want to go diagonal, right? Um, the main thing here is that, um, the, oh, hang on, let me just... I just want to save this before I forget. Um, so the main thing here is that the um, the player will be able to continue to face the intended direction. So you don't have this feeling of slipping the fingers um, to face a different direction, like if you want to face. Um, so it's really hard to do at the moment because it's not there. But facing diagonally uh, idle is, um, I mean, it works most of the time. But like, you know, there is a there is a, a chance that your character will just face an unintended direction. For example, like that. He's supposed to be facing like diagonally uh, left, up left at this point, but he's not. He's he's facing um, he's facing left. Uh, so there's a problem there. So in in the existing one, there is a, a very short delay. It's like 200 or 300 milliseconds, um, and we're using that to um, uh, to basically make sure that, you know, if you, if the players stop moving, um, you know, if the direction's this, then, you know, just keep the player in this direction. Uh, we're not gonna, we're not gonna, like, you know, change direction to a not different idle animation there. So, um, I thought that might actually happen. So what is this? Is it, uh, milliseconds with the 60.0F? Oh no, it's seconds. Wow. 50 seconds on the, uh, what about milliseconds? Can we measure it in milliseconds? 
Uh, so Unity set up timer milliseconds. Milliseconds timer question. I just want to help Unity measures milliseconds. Oh, it is just without the point. Okay. And was oh wait a minute. Um. Oh yep yep. So without the point, right? Uh, this makes sense. Oh hang on, no, that was the question. <laughs> What's the answer? milliseconds is a simple application for the metric uh, milli because one well, you multiply that by yeah it is your value oh god what the hell um so confused here it's a got a, something else going on can't get a straight answer timer in milliseconds okay let's try this one Uh Um Fraction divided by Oh, hang on, this is a thread. Hang on a minute, let's have a look. Uh. A string format. Fraction. So it is time. Time multiplied by a thousand. But that's two. Uh, I'll just time in milliseconds. find milliseconds time dot time times a thousand right okay so if I did a simple timer I went to the simple timer option And instead of 0, 0.0, um, right, okay, that should be easy enough. Let's try that. Okay, um, Uh, 
Second raw is smaller than it. Um, let's just do another. So we've got public for target time. Okay. So what have we got in uh, phase? I think we called it delay timer, didn't we? Yeah. As a float. Um, delay, delay time. What's in the update function? Okay. So it's expected setup. Um. Um, we've got um, private void, um, calculate count of slay time, very good, whoop, equals zero. Yes, I know it's not red yet. It's okay, calm down. Um, now, target time equals time dot touch time. Wait a minute, that's not right. I'm ended. Um, okay, I'm doing this slightly wrong. So I've got, um, random delay time. I don't need to float it again, or whatever. Um, equals 60, no, 200 or something. It was 200. Yeah, um, 200F.
Okay. Um, target time. Doesn't exist. Ah. That's cool. Um. And delay time equals delta time. This is equals or minus, so it's going to inc decrement slightly. Okay, so if I'm display time is less than zero F, um, wow, the formatting's all over the place. What the heck? Um, is it because I keep changing shit? Let's have a look. Weird. Indent. If anim delay time is that, um, then we'll go we need a boolean. Um, B, and um, delay. Direction delay. Adam um, direction delay. Is anim direction delayed? It's a boolean. It's a question. Yes or no? Need to make it a yes or no question. True. Um, false. This is a bit weird. Um... So, okay, I, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna put this on here. So this is false, right? Um, if it's greater than zero, then we need to be setting it to true. Turn out of this of this check. We set there, don't we? Well, that should only happen once. So, um, yeah, that's right. It needs to be a uh, set, doesn't it? 200. 200F. 
We'll set it in the um, in the expected setup. So, uh, this runs every tick, so uh, basically the enum else bar, and then we need to reset it, don't we? So I need to reset this back to uh, 200F. Or something. I'm pretty sure... Um, Milliseconds. How do I make a delay in milliseconds? Ah. I am doing this wrong. Zero. One millisecond. Eh? Is that an answer? Whoa! How are we going? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm a bit focused here. Uh, one sec. I'll move you back in there, Dale. How you doing? Um, I'm just... You're muted, by the way. Um, that should be better. Yes. <laughs> cool. Um, I'm just trying to work out uh, how to do milliseconds in, in Unity. Um, uh, it's at 0 0.001 is one millisecond. Yeah, should be right. So... If I wanted 200 milliseconds, do I have to go 0 0.00 like that? No, that's two seconds. No, that's not right. Is it like that then? Well, 0. 200 200. milliseconds. 0 0.200. Yeah, but 200 milliseconds is two seconds, isn't it? There's a hunt. No, 60, 60 milliseconds. <laughs> What's in a fucking millisecond? Oh, okay. uh, th well, a thousand, <laughs> a thousand milliseconds is a, is one second. It is that, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, so then that'd, um, that'd be fun there, yeah. Don't need the zeros, though. Really? Oh. That'd be 0 0.2. Yeah. Okay. Um, I thought it was that simple, but I'm looking at it going, this can't be right. <laughs> um, what is Adam... Uh, the delay time ah, okay. is that a is that a wait for seconds or is that a it's milliseconds so basically um, yeah. yeah is it an integer like what is what is um animation uh, uh, the the 
variable and in delay, delay yeah, time. That will be an integer. Yep. Um, and fine. then you're gonna make like a a numerator or something. Um. So basically, the idea of this is um. I want. I need. I need to delay. So, when when someone moves, right? So here's the issue. Oh, this is probably going to complain actually because I haven't finished things. Um, so basically, when someone moves, and they're saying they're moving diagonally, right? So to move diagonally, you typically would need to have two keys down on the keyboard with both your fingers. So um, what happens is if you don't have a delay, so to, in order to initiate the diagonal uh, idling at the right time or as intended. Um, see that? So if you don't lift your fingers up exactly the same time off the keys, then you end up facing the unintended direction. Like that, see? Hmm. So what my delay does that I'm creating here is, um, it's going to flick a switch on, on. Uh, it's going to be on when it's, when it's running and it's going to be off when it's not running. Um, so effectively, um, it creates that little delay. So that if the delay is running and the boolean is true, then the animation um, will basically um, it just it will it will face the intended direction basically. Yep. Um, we'll we'll make it face the intended direction. So it's going to be a, there's going to be a few things we need extra things we need to check here. Um, just so the player has a, a bit more intended control over their character. Um, so. I've got this in um, I've got this in After Realms actually, <laughs> um, right now. So we've got to um, implement this. But usually there's a, there's a couple of different switches that I like to do for it. Um, so the idea at the moment is just trying to get the milliseconds down. I'm pretty sure um, this is typically uh, the standard timer if I'm correct. See with um, with uh, Phaser, I was, uh, we had a whole timer object you know we could put in. Um, so we just create the object. And then we put in the values and we can use a callback function. Um, in this particular case, I think we're just using delta time. Um, which should be close enough for what we want, really. Um, so it does get calculated every tick. Um, and hopefully, uh, so if it if the you know delay timer is um, greater than uh, zero, then we need to be setting the boolean to true, uh, delay the direction of animation, um, otherwise um, is if it's false then you know we basically just reset it and nothing else happens. Um, so see that because of, uh, with this um, all I want to do is check to see if the um, direction is delayed or not and then and then run if it's not delayed, um, then we do we, we do it differently. Uh, I just need yep. to check my my code in After Arms to remind me exactly how I does uh, put this together. Um, because we some kind of idea of how to doing it in a community here. Um, So I don't know if there's an easier way to do this. Uh, in Unity, that's the other thing. Um, except in the code, I guess. I don't want to make everything code. The, the, the problem with Phaser is that everything is code. Um, there are some things I want to keep. Yeah. Uh, anything that I can put off, except for the animator. <laughs> so the animator's the <laughs> exception. Um, I don't want to use the animator to be controlling animations basically because of how messy it can get especially with the amount of animations that i have um do you reckon it gets messy have, have you tried the unity animator no but i've seen it and i can see it can go into have animator you? hell oh. yeah. i've seen really people go into yeah animator hell with it i'm not keen on it I'm, I'm having that experience um oh i've i've literally had no problem i find it super duper intuitive like you just make a animation tree out of it and anything that doesn't fit in the animation tree just gets in any state and it's like easy mm. um when you put it like that you make it sound like a waste of my time <laughs> <laughs> um, but um 
<laughs> no, because you could literally have like any of all of these, like the way you've done it. You could just have them all just kind of like branching off in like a um an any state in like a nice neat circle around an any state or something, and just have them all like mm. callable at any time, sort of thing. But that's all right. Yeah, I think the way you've done it's fine. Yeah, I just um. I don't know, I just seem to be able to see it better in code somehow. Um, so, where am I with this delay thing? Okay, so I've got player direction management, I think it was. Yeah. So, if um, the delaying direction update is true, then we delay, we set a timer, um, and go from there. This is the timer. So. Um, basically, it runs a bill it, the billions running while the time is running, uh, and then at the end of the time we set it to false. Um, so how we manage that in the meantime? So for the direction, uh, how do we do this? The diagonal up. Um. Oh, okay. Actually, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, So, animation, management, okay. Oh, yeah, it's an additional if statement. Um, okay, so before we set the last direction, before we actually activate, um, okay, this is a bit different, that's all. <laughs> um, Basically, we're just checking to see if the boolean is 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 true or false. If it's false, then we set the um we set it. But otherwise, walk down. What is this doing? Because oh, it changes the direction. Oh, okay. Um. I think you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, no, I know what you mean. Yeah, <clears throat> just the ma matter of execution, I suppose. Yeah, it's, it's just because it's so it's set up so differently in Phaser, it's a bit crazy. Uh, I'm trying to put my get my head around this again. It's got basically a direction. Um, the gov the player's governed by a direction variable. We're not really doing that with with um with Unity. We're just doing things much much more different. Um, basically, uh. Um, I just need to understand, I think, how I activate it in Phaser. So how is this timer activated? I think it's when it stops, doesn't it? Um, oh, I'm so confused. <laughs> um, direction update delay. Okay, so that gets called. What causes that to be called? Um, if direct, if T direction update delay timer is on, I'll be right back. Sorry, like two seconds. Okay. Um. Oh, okay. This is a. Ooh, I don't know if I like the way I've set this up. Um. Okay, I think it's this one. Create directional update to delay timer. Oh, what? I get that. Well, what's what, what's calling this? Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. This is not what I wanted. Um. Alright, I am here, but I am going to be munching, so I'll be muted. Yeah, we're good. Munching it sounds yummy. 
Um. Okay, I've <laughs> I've got it right in the phaser code, but the trouble is, uh, just organising it. Unity. How do we do that? Um. Right, diagonal down. But only for the diagonals. Okay, so if the delay direction update is false, up. Oh my god. Ugh. Okay, so the direction update delay only happens when the player is moving diagonally. Um, and when the timer is running, it doesn't... It, it basically doesn't happen if, if, they, if they're just going up and down. So because effectively what's happening is that they're going from a diagonal direction to a uh, to a up down left or right direction, um, like a direct direction I guess. If that makes sense. Uh, very quickly. So if the if the player was going diagonal. Um, then we set the timer to stop them from changing the, to a to a straight direction. Um, very short delay, but we also need to check to see which direction they are going in, in the first place in order to activate the correct animation. Um, so, what I might be able to do is, if I have, um, pausing this. If I go, um, if I have this timer running, see that's, <laughs> I can't have this in the update function. Um, because you need it in Do you know how to make, um, do you know how to make enumerators? No. Like, um, so, uh, make, make, like, you're gonna start a new method. Right. Um, start with, instead of starting with private, uh, or public, start with I enumerator. Enumerator, there it is, yep. Um, and I don't think it needs anything else, I think just give it a name. Right. So is this the name of um, the timer? Sorry? Delay direction timer. Yep. And then um, it, it works like a method, except uh, it will require a return type of a of a delay of some sort. <clears throat> so you can just say yield return null, which will be uh, every frame. Or you can go yield delay, um, uh, wait for uh, seconds, um, and you can tell it how often to, to, to do something. Well, effectively I only want the timer to be activated, um, so not every tick. So at the moment I've got this in update function. So I do want this to be called, and then I want so to you run could... a timer inside it. Yep, so basically you could um, just go um, call, so the way you call this, uh, calling I enumerators is a little bit different. So um, I wouldn't do the calculation inside it because you only need to, uh, oh wait a second, so that's how this is working. Animation time is like that, uh, zero. 
true, false. I need to, I need uh, the boolean um, to track the delay, I think. So, what I would do is, in this instance, I would probably set the boolean true. Um, because this is only on di directionals, isn't it? On diagonals, yeah. So, if you're going diagonals, so anytime you're going diagonal, set it to true. <clears throat> and straight after that, um, call the coroutine. Uh, so you go start coroutine and then delay direction timer. And then inside delayed direction timer, uh, you would go uh, wait for seconds, two milliseconds, or, or sorry, 200 milliseconds. And then after that, you would say set to false. Oh, I'm confused. Uh, do I okay, so... So I'll walk you through it. Go um, yield. So say yield. Yield. Yeah. Uh, yield return. Uh, new wait for seconds. Now this will be best if we make the new wait for seconds outside. Declare it outside, but just put it here for now. Okay. And give it your zero point two. Okay. Uh, new will be a um, a de declaration, so it would be a separate. So new space. Wait for seconds. Oh yeah. And wait, wait for seconds is treated like a method. So put uh, zero point two in uh, brackets. Oh okay. Yeah. Uh, wait for seconds is a, a method, so yeah, it does use um, a capital, I do believe. Oh, it? okay, yep. If it's a, like a class. Yeah, yeah, yes, class, yep. Okay. And now that, so once that hits, that'll trigger, it'll wait for two seconds, or 200 milliseconds, and then after that, you can write whatever that you want it to do. So, turning, oh. the, turning the direction to false. So something will call <clears throat> the delay direction timer. It'll wait 200 milliseconds and it'll do what you say. Or vice versa, you can put like four loops in it or anything like that. So oh, you probably okay. don't need all that in there either. But you literally just need is animation direction. Uh, no, no, you just said animation direction timer is false. Is there? A, can you do this in a um, like a function? Um, or is it like a can, wait for seconds a separate function? So I have to go like. So yeah, fun um, functions won't accept uh, wait for seconds as a return type or anything. You so can. It doesn't do this. <clears throat> so how do I call anything from this timer? Call it. Yeah. Like... Just like a function, just inside it. But the way you call the timer itself, the delay direction timer, is with a start coroutine. So I can so run code in here? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I can... Works just like... Uh, you don't need the brackets, just just write code. It'll literally do anything, it'll just... Oh, okay, so the it's yield. like a... It's just, it's a, it, it gets to this line and then waits 200 milliseconds. Yep. And then it'll do whatever's after it. Right. Okay. So anytime it gets up to a, a yield, It'll it'll sit there. It'll yield while it while it's waiting, and then it'll do whatever is next. Okay, so, it's uh, so another another thing you could do is you could invoke a method that also works. You can invoke with a timer. Um, um. So yep, that'll that'll work fine. Was it complete? And now you oh, would yeah. go back to your direction. So where's where's a direction? Okay. Um, um, I don't need any of this then. <laughs> yeah, no. See, that's it's real simple. That's really cool. Um, I love enumerators, but don't get too used to them because they can they could be a rabbit hole that you just keep using them and really? I don't know. People have told me don't keep using them, and I'm like, oh, but I love them. <laughs> right, okay. Um, they do so much, so I don't know. I don't know if it's good or bad. I haven't run into performance issues before with them, but some people say that they're not a good habit to get into, but I love them. Um, right. um, now, all you would do is go to one of your directions. 
and you would set the uh, thing to true. What's it complaining oh. about? Oh, nothing. Oh, okay. uh, whereabouts? Yeah. Uh, it's complaining about. Oh, this. Okay. I'll just get rid of that. Okay. Uh, so one of our directions. Yeah. So down right. That's one we would activate this timer for. Because it's a diagonal. Uh huh. So I. How do I call this? Do I just go delay direction timer? Yep. Yeah. Ah, uh, no, no. You have to actually say start coroutine. Because oh. these. Uh, an, uh, an iron numerator is an interface for something called a coroutine. Uh, how do you do? How do you spell coroutine? Am I spelling it wrong? Uh, C O, the co, and then routine. <laughs> this is why I'm autocomplete. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a I'm a is bloody coder, wrong? not an English professor. Is this wrong? I mean, in terms of the function. <laughs> Is it with a capital S or not? Ugh. Uh, but... Yeah, I'm definitely spelling it that way. Uh, start coroutine is one word. Uh, capital C, I believe. Let me look at my own code. Hmm? Oh. Start... Oh, here it is. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, start coroutine. And then... And then in, in brackets, because it's, uh, it's a class. Oh, yep. And then, and then write your yeah, write your your I numerator in there. Oh, as if it was a method. Delay direction timer. Um, right. And then with, um with brackets as well. Sorry, I forgot to say that you need brackets. Uh, because it's like a method. You still need to call it with the brackets. Uh, I've got brackets on it. Oh, do you mean like parentheses brackets? Yeah. These ones. Uh, just the two at the end. Oh, what? So without that? Uh, so yeah, just like you're calling a method. Sorry. So so not not those curly brackets. So inside, straight after timer. Yeah. So you had it right. Oh, did I? Yep. What, am I? what am I missing? Just the two, the two brackets afterwards. So. Oh, like that. Open, open bracket, close bracket, straight afterwards. Yeah, yeah, I get it now. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I made that super duper complicated. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. No, I was just like, hang on, I'm doing this wrong. Um, so that routine, so then, that one. Bam! That'll but, that'll call that. So I need to also set. This is where I also set. So if I um if what if I if I do this right if I go like B is anim direction delayed right I can set that to true up there and then uh yep and then so that will be true it runs into this it waits two seconds and then it's uh, oh sorry two hundred milliseconds and then it puts it back to false correct so. In order to access this, we've got to put IE numerator in there. Is that right? That's how, yeah. That's how you do because uh, you're returning the weight for seconds, and the numerator is what handles that. Oh, okay. So this is like the um, the manager for this. That's correct. Right. So you can do another another way to do this would be to invoke a method by. Um, by calling it with the invoke function. Oh, okay. Um, and giving the invoke function the the wait for seconds. The nice thing about this though, is the wait for seconds um, is changeable and everything, like you just, I don't know, I just like it. <laughs> <laughs> you, so yeah. put it this way, uh, in enumerators, they're really good to learn because you can do for four loops and stuff like that inside yeah. them. Um, you can say uh, while true, and it'll just sit there doing it forever. Um, there's a bunch of really handy things with enumerators. Um, right. You'll um, definitely need them when you come into a few things in this game. Because if I, yeah, there's a lot of timers in this game. There's a lot of timers, delays, waits, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, 
So I guess I could probably use this for it if it works well. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. It does look so now, a bit strange. It's not like it's an object. See, with with phaser, if we go back to the phaser code. Um, look, this is a this is a timer object right here. See? So a, a timer object. Um, uh, we, we call the timer. We give it a name, and we, then we call the timer. Basically, we put this timer object into here, and then we have all the properties for that timer. So, like, what the delay actually is, uh, whether we loop it or not, what the callback scope, uh, uh, like the scope is, um, the context, uh, and then we have uh, whatever code we want to function when it's completed. Um, so, yeah, a little different way of doing things. <laughs> Um, going back to Unity code here. Um, so, okay, I'll have to check um, if I need anything else there. Uh, probably search. There's there's lots of people making stopwatches and stuff like that, or whatever it is, you know, tracking some type, sort of time in game, uh, either delays or whatever, for one reason or another. Um, so in this particular case, um, we did this on the diagonal here. Um, so we set the code routine for the uh, delayed direction timer. Um, and that's all we have to do for all of the, um, for all of these, I think. Um, the only thing is though, uh, we need to determine, we need to tell, um, the last direction. So, um, I'll also let you know uh, before we get too far is with enumerators. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to have enumerators that do things very quickly, like 0.2 of a uh, second, instead of having them create a new wait for seconds every single 0.2 of a second, right. um, de declare that uh, as a uh, instance or whatever at the prop uh, as a private wait, new wait for seconds, um, and then you can just make it a variable that's been set and it won't need to create it every single time. Oh, okay. Um, yes. Yeah. So, how do I do that? Just go private new. Yeah, just, just, yeah, just, um, just up the top, private wait for seconds, as if you're making a, a variable of some sort. You don't need to use the new f um, function because it's not inside a. Uh, you don't need the private in there. Uh, so, up the top, as if you were making a uh, declared interval, uh, in interval, in integer or something. Just say um, private wait for seconds, and then call it something. Oh. Private wait for seconds. Um, timer. I don't know. <laughs> yep, that's fine. And then that that'll do. Just give it um, uh, what are the colon or whatever, and then go into your start method, and then say timer equals new wait for seconds, and give it your uh, anim delay time. Oh, uh, well... You'll have to fix Anim to late time, because it's 200 float at the moment. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Unless you're using that already, are you? Are you using that? So this is specific else? to this particular time, is that what you're saying? Yes, so oh, this, okay. this just it just saves on memory instead of creating a shitload of timers. It's just doing it once and just reusing yeah. the same one. I get it. Um, I'll just... A new wait for seconds, um, and then... Oh, what do I do? So it's just... Oh yep, so it's zero point two. Um, it's zero point oh yeah, you could you could you could set it like that too if you wanted to. If you didn't want to have the option for setting it in the display uh, the interface. Um. Yeah. Uh, I don't think this is particularly something I was gonna change Play around with it. in yeah. the inspector. Yeah, like it, it's um if it was, it have to be something more like um more game mechanical this is simply yeah. trying to fix a bug effectively <laughs> it's not a bug yeah. technically but it's like it's like a quality of life yeah experience so just make sure you don't have this in um all of your um npcs because this is probably more expensive than anything else you've got 
No, no, no. This is mainly player control. This is pure player yes, control. As, yes. as long so as it's NPCs, only player control. Yeah, NPCs will. They're, they're going to be governed. Their directions and whatnot are governed differently. This is simply because the players um, may not may not uh, quite right at the same time uh, lift their fingers up on two keys. Yeah. Um, so the players now facing a direction they don't want it to face in. <laughs> you know. Um, they didn't expect it to face in because they think, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm actually, I'm lifting them up at the same time, but they're, not, they're technically not. But because they're like, you know, even like one tick difference um, with the releasing of the keys, then it faces a different direction. Um, it faces up or if you're going diagonally right, um, for example, upright, you could face up or you could face right, basically. Um, simply because one, one of those two keys are held down. Um, so, yeah, it's a, I'd say it's a more more trying to help the player not be annoyed <laughs> type of yeah. framework here. Um, so, Before I forget, yeah. um, uh, above or or wrap every start repeat routine um, before you like as you call it, hmm. instead of and calling it constantly, uh, wrap it in an if statement saying if false uh, if if your direction thingy is false because that means as long as the time is not running. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, so we'll go. Um, if, um, yeah, we'll, we'll pick this up. Uh, that's a good point. For performance. We don't want to run this if it's not. So, oh, I've stuffed up my. <laughs> I fixed one problem, but I've stuffed up another. Um, I've got this complication going on. I've got more. Oh, sorry. I didn't. I didn't mean the creating a new weight for seconds. I meant inside um your directional handles. Um. So when what? when you are going diagonal, um, at the moment what's going to happen is every single frame of going diagonal is going to be like start the co-routine. Um, oh, I'm not sure if how oh. handily uh, Unity handles uh, co-routines. If it's called a second time, will it restart the co-routine or does it make a second co-routine? I'm not sure. We can. So that's a good point. Sorry, I'm I'm on the wrong tree here. Uh... So that's fine there. This is so just say if it's false, um, don't do it because yeah, yeah, you don't don't need to. Um, if it's um, if it's false, then go ahead. Otherwise, it won't. Oh, what the hell? Uh, I'd say <laughs> if it's false, uh, don't do it because. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so if it's false, go ahead. If yeah, it's yeah. true, don't do it because yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Because if it's true, that means it's already running. That's right, it's uh, already running if it's true, yeah, that's right. Um so if it's not if it's not running then Yeah. Um that will resolve that effectively. Um I need to really fix my formatting. Oh my god. Um full, let's just go full, shall we? Now that that'll stop it from running constantly, but now I'm thinking, what happens? So it starts, it'll run the timer. The timer will run, and then what if the player picks up their fingers just as that time is ending? Well, that's it. Uh, it might need to start again. Uh, so we need to stop it, it. It should. It should be quick. It should be quick enough. Is there a way to protect it from ever doing anything funny? I'm just thinking. It could do something funny there. I agree. Um, basically, if the um, uh, maybe test it and see how it works, because it might be fine. Hmm. It should be fine. I think. I'm trying to think, like it's on. It's only going to run this on on a tick. If it's running, it won't it won't change the direction of the um of the player and the timer is Yeah, no, I'm thinking that should be fine. Yeah, we're not creating more than one timer here. See with phaser I destroyed the timer, so if the timer's running and it's being called, it will get destroyed. Okay, um I I, I figured it out. Just put just put the coroutine start before the direction change, change anima animation and um because that way, that way, um, it will check if it's false first, and if it's false, because we we know it, we want it to be true, and if it is false, we want it to be true, so it'll turn it true before it 
um, does the animation state, if you know what I mean. Oh, yep, yep, I follow you. Um, so then, so then it there will, we go, perfect. Yeah. So it will be true, so then idle animation equals, I don't actually try it down, yep. And then, uh, I'm just trying to, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure it works, but. Yeah, um, so down right. Okay, so now, if down right's functioning, so basically, um, uh, okay, so now we need a way of reading this. Uh, so, um, down right. Uh, so I've got a way of checking it for the other direction. So, uh, where's... Walk right, okay. So before we, um, okay, so here, uh, I can go if, uh, B is anim direction delayed, uh, if that's true, um, then, no, if that's false, that's got to be false. So this has to be false for this to run. Uh, this is a bit fucking weird. Hang on. <laughs> um, it's the animation, not so much the direction. I think. Yeah. What? What? You, you know what I meant by the thingy. Um. Sorry, no, no I'm, I'm, I think I'm on to something else here. So I've got um, so we've got yeah, yeah. So if the if the yeah, we change we, we change the the animation to walk down right. Now if we if we're doing that, we we need to set a delay for the uh for the direction. Um, if it's not running, and then um, for the last direction. Uh, we set the last direction to idle down right, and then if the player, if if the atom direct dir direction delayed is false, uh, this has to be false basically for it for them to, for them to go right. If it's true, then this just gets skipped. So effectively, we're not changing we're not changing we're not changing for them to face right. Um. If the direct if the direction needs a delay, because we don't want to change down, we don't want to change the last direction when this is still running. I still thinks it's going diagonal. If that makes sense, am yeah. I making any uh, sense? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it is that. Um, you gotta gotta live in your own head for a moment. Anyway, I'm being um, hailed by by my peeps. Oh, okay. So um, have some fun. Uh, if you want, jump by. Uh, we'll be in my. Uh, Discord chatting away. No worries. I'll um, I'll might pop over later. I might have to. I'm gonna have to probably end stream to have dinner soon. To be <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Um. You could man. But I'll test this one thing first, and then I'll probably start. Yeah. Off. I'll I'll keep watching. Yeah. Um, good luck. Thank you. Thanks for your help. Yeah, man. Yeah. See. this for every one of them uh, so we need to put this in there so same thing with stuff on the top eh? that might make sense um, uh, 
Um, turn in. Wow, this is so different. Um, so different to Phaser, man. So different to Phaser. Um, so, okay. Uh, just making sure I'm getting my head around this. I might need to leave some notes <laughs> or some comments on this just to make sure I can read it. My eyes are going everywhere at the moment. Uh, Alright, so that's all good. Uh, that's all good there. Yep. And that's all good there. Okay. Uh, so, what about this way? Oh, we need to... Yeah, here's what we needed. Why not compact it? Because there's too much spacing going on. Just a little bit. Oh, this is a bit different. Uh, quite a lot. Okay, hang on. I should be able to just add this block here. Um, and then I can. Pop this in here. I don't need to start co routine. Which is nice.
Hmm. Alrighty, so, um, if moved, like, if it's false, we can walk up. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to change um, walk up to be uh, a definition there for that. Like that's fine if there's to have it like this. Um, we do need to probably check it first, actually. Um, and not necessarily return there. So let's just check all these directions one more time. So we've got a uh, walk up left. Yep, okay, so we've got something like that going on. Um, if we're walking down left, the same sort of thing in terms of the uh, idle. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, if that's running, we return. Yeah, okay. Um, and then if we're going walking upright, same thing. Don't say that the uh, that the last animation was right. <laughs> we still walk left. Hmm. I'm gonna have to test that out and make sure it works properly. Um, so idle up, turn. Uh, same thing here. I think we already did this one though, just to make sure. I'm just gonna double check. If move walk down, idle direction. Okay. Uh, yeah, so walk down. This is fine, except... Don't we want to check? Yeah, okay. We want to check first. Idle. Down. Don't start co routine timer, that's not it. I want to. Yes. It's going to be false before we determine that. Um, walk down animation might still happen a little bit, but the, um, the idle, the last direction will be down. I think that's it. Oh god, I'm gonna have to leave notes for this uh, later on. <laughs> um, there's, there's a few different things going on there for that one. Alright. Save. And play. Just check this out. I'm gonna have to go soon though, <laughs> but um, 
yeah, this is uh, what here. Okay, yeah, there there is a very slight turn. Oh, that's still. What is the delay in phaser? Um. Oh, the direction timer delays fifty milliseconds. Okay, I'm gonna, to, <laughs> I'm gonna have to change that. Oh, it's also creating it here. What if we um? What if we, uh, two hundred F, um, I'm not even using that. Pretty sure that's, uh, yeah, and delay time. I think we can get rid of that because we're already making it. Oh, wait, no. So confused. Hang on a minute. Yeah, hang on. Let me, let me do that. I'm pretty sure that will work. Reference script on this behavior is missing. I'm confused. Let's clear that. Ah. Save that for now and we'll come back to just probably Okay, um, might have to just refactor this a little bit, but um, pretty clear otherwise. Um, okay, so let's go back to our project. Oh, where is it? Ah, oh, I was had it on my windows. Wasn't there? Ah, oh, here it is. Okay. Here we are. Uh, 
Um, implemented the above. Just mark this issue as um, credit. Where is it? Don't credit. I just okay. Alrighty. So um, for tonight. So we're gonna we're gonna with this one. Um. Oh, is this frozen? Looks like it might be. On Earth. That's a bit weird. Okay. Are you saving or what? Okay, all good. Um, so yeah. Uh, as for uh, this, we're going to. I'm gonna just fix up. So, um, if not tomorrow, um. Probably tomorrow if I'm streaming here uh, for a few hours uh, I'm gonna we're gonna fix up well not this sorry that's basil that's the old, the old one uh, we'll fix up the um, just just trying to get some probably uh, reduce the syntax a bit with uh, some of this add some additional notes um, like comments and stuff to explain what's going on um, we'll probably look at this I just want to make sure I'm not um, duplicating it here I think I can remove that if I'm, I'm not I'm not sure um, I'm a bit confused with that. So yeah, um, I'll come back to this. Uh, it's mostly pretty good, actually. We don't have any issues with it. Um, I, I might put the walking state. I might put that into um. I, I might put that into here. Yeah, I'm not sure yet, and we'll, we'll test that and see how it works. Um, and uh, yeah. But apart from that, pretty good. Uh, today I want to thank uh, Victory 2017 Quadra 9 for following, Cogutus uh, 18 for following, thank you, and for your support as well, awesome, Tutu uh, Jag for following, BFB93 for following, and all, for all your help too, that's fantastic, I really appreciate that, uh, Crushed Game for following, Majid N for following, Jitspo for the raid earlier today, Naria Sway for following, Earlier and uh, Sophia Lou uh, for, and Leah T codes also following earlier as well. So I really appreciate that, um, guys. Really appreciate the support. So for today, um, we're gonna wrap up with a raid. So stand by for that, um, and I'll see you all tomorrow for a few hours. Alrighty. Thanks for watching and for chilling. Have a lovely night. Stay tuned for the ride.